you're back on robot voice on the stream. No oh, kidding, you guys. I'm really sorry about that. All right, let's get the flaps up. Let's get this thing turned off. And let's get maintenance out there quickly for whatever damage we did. Robot cleared again. How does that happen, Royston, you know? All right, you guys. And uh, what we're going to do is get the, all of the, uh, the maintenance crew out here and make them happen. So uh, over to you, Ace, while we do some shutdown stuff here. All right. There to the right. Bringing down the mixture. Thanks. Which I do not have a good angle at doing. The engines should be stopping. You're going to have to do the same thing I'm doing, Howard. Yep. Yeah, the sound of a spit nearby. Royston spit sounds great. Royston's not in a spit. That. Huh? Spit's on your left. That's what I'm hearing. Okay. Somebody's in the spit. Yeah. You can tell by the distinctive sound, right? Okay. Things are being shut down. Power's being shut off. Avionics are off. We're going through what I'll call a condensed checklist, you guys. So. Um, shut down on mine and I'm still showing that the engines are running. You're still showing the engines running, okay. So I don't know, your controls is doing a little fun stuff to us, I oh, think, here right at the maybe, end. Maybe, uh, here, I'll give you control there. You have control now. Oh, it's going man, backwards. Now, okay. uh, now, yeah, that got weird. Okay, I'll take control. I got it. It's not perfect, guys. <laughs> yeah, we need to work and then, you know, we, we got a little bit of trouble, but we'll hand it over from here. Let me just um, go back in here, take a look at our tablet. What we want to do is... Minty's saying it's a known bug. It can happen with any plane. Oh, really? All right. Well, what we're doing, you guys, we're just getting the maintenance crew out here real quick so that Fabio has a working plane that's working fine. And <laughs> we're opening up some doors. We got some maintenance crew coming. And we'll probably jump out of the plane and just see. Here comes all the equipment. Yeah, we got to get that... Uh, got to get that window out too. Or sorry, we got to get the uh, stairs out too so the pilots can leave. <laughs> yep, you want to uh, take your screen up to full screen and probably yep. get mine off of there and then do a sure. little tour of the scenery. Yep. You know, we're just getting all the gear out here. Rated off the Fabio. There we go. All right, so you guys, we've got the baby down. We've got all the maintenance crew there. They're just getting it, getting everything fixed. And wrapped up. We're just going to jump outside the plane. I just wanted to give uh, you guys an idea. You guys must have jumped positions when you uh, when you switched. Oh yeah. Controls, because when I stopped, I was parked just just ahead, just slightly ahead it of was your going nose. The <laughs> plane took off in reverse. Yeah, it <laughs> Even was going though backwards. the engines were completely yeah, off we're the plan. So welcome. Hey, Dutch Sim just subscribed. Dutch Sim, thanks Good for the subscription. Dutch. Eleven months. Roberts Eleven. International Airport, everybody, welcome. Somebody's parked in here backwards. Okay, that's cool. Hey, you want to you want to just slide the screen off of there? And, uh, yeah, we're gonna do that. Right now, let's just slide that out of there. With the double click. Super duper! So, you guys, this is the airport area here that we're on. I'm just doing a quick once over so you can see the area. And, um, and then we'll just move it off from there. When you look up at the area around us, the, this airport payware does come with the ortho scenery. So it's been really accurate. I'm not here to sell it, you guys. I haven't investigated in any super detail, but you can see that this kind of detail here 
Hey, yo, flyers. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I'm being a bit quiet. So it's the quiet Fabio this morning. I got an apartment full of sleeping people. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome back to the channel. As we pick up a relay flight for today. So you can hear uh, Forder in the background here. Uh, Forder is the last pilot. Hi, Kitty. Forder, yeah, we can stream, Luxionica. We have a special flight today. A special flight today. So, you're listening to Forder, right? Let me show you guys what's happening on his channel. There we go. Good morning, guys. Good afternoon. Good evening. Um, here and by the way, thank you, you very much for that subscription, dude. That's amazing. That's amazing. That's awesome. Hey, I was right. Hey, flying doctor. Well, we well, have we have a land. flight today. Then. We have a seven-hour flight across the Atlantic been, uh, on the DC-6 again. Again. Can you believe it? Can you believe it? Oh man, I love it. I love it. Take it and raid over to Fabio. You ready for us, Fabio? You probably have been ready for a while saying, what took you? What took you? <laughs> <laughs> and we'll give you the extra time that we picked up as Somebody... Ace did the uh, move, you know, fly it like you stole it. That's, that's what Ace did. You guys, I just wanted to show you Howard's attempt at trying to do ILS came right past it. Turned over here and said, got to recover it. Hold on, guys. Turn back in and just Let's get this raid and then I'll, exploded, I'll explain everything. Exploded. Naughty gnome. Hey, Robin buddy. In, but I knew that Thank you very much, dude. Thank you very end, much so for the gift itself. Fabio's, Fabio's live, Howard. So. He's live. Yeah. All right. Super We're actually pretty much dead on time. We got about two minutes early. <laughs> two minutes early? We did that? We did that? Yeah. Cool. All right. Let me just move this over to where I can do a raid screen here. I wasn't ready for that either. Huh. And all this time I, in the air, I had, you know. to I had to switch Spitfires to Mark Boom, 1. Boom, Gia, Julian. With you. you couldn't do it in the Mark 1. You had to go to the Mark 9. That's it's a, going pretty well, man. Thank you. How are you? 500 horse. Cobra, I'll explain in a little bit. More? Let me get this yeah. raid going, and then I'll explain it all. All right, I'm moving over to my creator dashboard, and I'll move over to raid a channel, and then I'll go pick up. Albino, I don't post Fabio's channel when think so. Live on our I don't know what join FS so, uh, is, to be honest. Sorry, man. It's supposed to, anyway. Not today, Tapixi. Not today. Oh, nice flying with you too, today, we're flying a different DC6. Oh, so, you guys, we're going to say goodbye. We're going to roll <laughs> some nice. credits as we head over to Fabio's channel. So, uh, let me roll the credits right now just so you guys know who we are. And those of you who are new to our channel, thanks for tuning in. She we, can we be, really Julian. Thank you, both Ace <laughs> Fabio and I. Fabio, ASMR, nice. Flying together <laughs> through this whole thing through the nighttime. Nah, sorry, and flying doctor. I forgot to turn those off, by the way. I should do that. We'll see you guys again on Central America area. And, uh, We're going to we talk about the route here soon. And I hope it was fun for you guys. Too. Hey, Bonus, how are you, man? Ride. Moin, Ben. So moin, moin. I'm just going to head over to the credit screen while I set up the raid, and it'll automatically raid over to Fabio. And Fabio, All take right, care here of the we baby. Go. We know you will. <laughs> Thanks, Forder. I appreciate that, buddy. I appreciate that. Hey, Sydney. How's it going, man? How's Cape Town today? Hmm? How's Cape Town doing today? Yeah, Kitty is... She needs some loving this morning. She definitely needs some loving this morning. All right, so we're about to get a raid from Forder, guys. Good morning, everybody. Good afternoon. Good evening. Um, and we're going to keep a flight going. You see here, bringing the DC-6 home. <laughs> I'm kidding. Hey, Matt, how are you, man? So that's what's happening, is we're flying. A bunch of streamers are getting together to fly a relay flight. Uh, in real time from Namibia to Texas, taking the DC-6 back, the last built DC-6, back to the United States. Yeah, cannot. Cato. All right, so um, it's our turn to fly. So we're getting a raid from Forder right now. Um, and then I'll be able to, let me say hi to all the uh, the people coming in. And then I'll, I'll show the overall route. I'll explain what this is. Hey, Flight 320, what's going on, man? How are you? Great dog. Thank you very much for that, sir. I appreciate that. 
That's right, Mort. Sell nav all the way, buddy. All the way. Can't wait. Can't wait. Can't wait. All right. I think we're almost there. Well, Mort, I volunteered for this leg. Because I wanted to do this leg. You know what I mean? I wanted to do this sell nav, right? You know what? I, I think I'm already talking a normal volume. Hopefully I won't wake up anybody. Ooh, Luxionica. Hey, old Grumpy Gamer is here, man. How's it going? Doing all right. Doing all right. Thank you. And then, guys, look. You see B-Mint here in chat? B-Mint's going to pick the plane up in Brazil later today when we deliver it to her. And she's going to keep it going. Yes. How cool is that? How cool is that, right? Hey, Air Oyak. Hey. How's it going, Air man? Oh, How's it going? oh Inception. Oh, How's it going? Inception. Echo. Oh, Inception. Echo. <laughs> hey, Raiders. Hello, everybody. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Hi, Forder. How are you, sir? Hey, Ace. Good job bringing the DC-6 in, boys. You did a great job. Hello, Raiders. Hey, MDH is here. Maddie, nice. Oh, Kazmiri, how's it going? Hello, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. All right, so the Raiders have arrived. We already had a few people here um, from the community. So let's get... Uh, where do we go here? Let's get some... First of all, let's get some vibes going, right? Let's see here. Let's see here. Let's see here. What are we... What are we doing? Huh? Let's see. How about, uh... Oh, I know. Oh, I know. Yes! Dutch Sim, good morning, sir. How are you? Well, good afternoon. <laughs> Valier, I hear you, right? That's right. If you're arriving from Forder's stream, the weather is not so good, not so good uh, on my stream. I'm using live weather, Ford was using different weather to show you guys how pretty the arrival was. Um, we're gonna use live weather and see if that's gonna be a challenge for us today because today we're taking this baby across the pond once again. We've done it once, we've done it once and we've done it actually almost the same route, almost the same route arriving from Brazil. So here, Today, um, we're going to fly, it's not from Senegal, it's from Liberia instead, from Monrovia, the capital of Liberia, and we're going to fly to Fortaleza in Brazil and not Recife, where we left, right? So, if you follow my stream, you've seen this before, um, we are flying a DC-6 in SAS colors from Argentina all the way back to Finland. Uh, it's a flight that SAS used to do in 1950 with the DC-6. Um, and uh, we, we've, well, I think we're on leg six, leg six or seven. And one of the legs was crossing the ocean, coming back from Brazil. Um, so we've done this once, right? And we used celestial navigation. But today we have to do it going back, right? And then, as I said, b mans going to pick the plane up. So... Hi, everybody. What's going on? Why am I streaming on a Saturday? What is this? What is this? Um, yeah, I know. Skip. Yep. <laughs> Tip Pixie. You always say that, dude. You always say that. I have a feeling you have a love-hate relationship with Helsinki. <laughs> yeah, I think so, Tip Pixie. Uh, leg six. We were grounded for it. That's right, Luxiatica. That's right. Zurich to Frankfurt, right? That's right. That's right. All right, so... What's going on? What's going on? Well, what's going on is we uh, we started a community effort uh, to support, to try and support a real effort. It ended up that this community effort didn't get linked up with that real effort, uh, but that's okay, right? The real effort is there's a gentleman in San Antonio, Texas, that uh, is quite interested in purchasing this this exact DC six. What do I mean by this DC six? Well, this DC-6 here, guys, is the last DC-6 to be built. Um, and it's the DC-6 
that uh, PMDG modeled their DC-6 on. They had access to this DC-6 in Namibia, where the aircraft is today. Um, and so that's how they were able to make it uh, for first P3D and then uh, for Microsoft Flight Sim, right? So this plane is currently sitting in Namibia. This gentleman in San Antonio um, wants to purchase it. And I mean, when I say he wants to purchase, he's in pretty advanced stages. He already has secured four, uh, not new, but refurbished engines for her. Uh, I mean, he's, he's done a lot of work to make this happen. Yep, that's right. That's right, Julian. That's correct. Um, so, uh, the community decided, hey, you know, we could, we could try and help this gentleman. Maybe we can raise some money to try and help him bring the DC-6 home. Um, as I said, it ended up not linking up, so we're not connected to him. It's not, we're not raising money for, for that effort. But we decided to go ahead and do the flight anyways. And, uh, props to two cats. Uh, two cats, are you, are you here, baby? I don't know if you're here. Um... Two Cats, uh, I, I'm sure other people helped, a lot of people helped really, but Two Cats is the brain behind this, this effort. Here he is. Hello, sir. Um, and Two Cats has done a great job organizing really the whole community to be able to do this as a relay effort, right? So, um, lots of, lots of streamers are going to be doing this. Uh, some have already done their part, some are coming, and now is our time, right? So. We, uh, let me see, two cats, what's the easiest way you think for me to show, um, the overall trip? Because I have a, uh, a flight sim, flight plan, but I don't want to go back to that screen to show it. And I don't think I did this in little nav map. Oh, you know what? I may have it in Sky Vector. Remember early on I was showing you some stuff in Sky Vector? Let me see if I have it. Yep, I do. Awesome. All right, guys, so <laughs> this is amazing. This is amazing. Let me get rid of the weather here and then I'll show you this. Go down. How's it going, man? How are you? All right, here we go. Ooh, what a flight. All right, check this out. Origin? Destination. Ace. All right, sir. Sounds good, man. These guys have been up for a while. By the way, uh, Forder picked up another leg. He did his leg plus someone else's leg. Stayed up all night doing this. Guys, awesome effort. Congratulations. Go get some sleep. We'll see you guys next time. I got it from here. Thanks. There we go. Total distance, 9,963 nautical miles. Just shy of 41 hours of flight time. Right? Not bad. Not bad. Actually, no. Sorry, Ocus. Sorry, Ocus. Let me fix that right now. And I mean right now. Because we are in North Europe. Um, and that was so that we could see the arrival here. Um, and so we're going to keep it uh, on North Europe. Two cats, correct? We want to keep it on North Europe. <laughs> She's used to it, the pixie. She's used to it. All right. One second here. Yeah, because okay, so of course. Of course. All right. So, let me save this. Let's try that again. Okay, so can you try that bot command? Aspen, hello, sir. Greetings from the quarantine hotel in Norway. Uh, big change from the Texas heat. Hey, Aspen, how's it going, buddy? How are you? Welcome back to Norway. So, I hope it's a fun hotel to keep you entertained. Can you leave the room or do you have to be... How does that work? Yes, Kieran. Yes, of course. That's a great idea. That is a great idea, sir. All right. I'm going to do a bit.ly. Because it's an insanely long one. If you've used Sky Vector, you know. All right, here we go, guys. There it is. Kieran, there it is. And for anybody else that wants uh, this Sky Vector flight plan right here. 
I just posted the link in chat. All right, so this is our leg right here, boys and girls. And I say this because we gotta we gotta get going. So I'm gonna fire up the plane. We're gonna take off, and uh, then we're gonna start talking celestial navigation because that's how we're gonna find. Well, I mean, we're gonna find South America, right? I'm gonna I'm gonna kick in 251 degrees of heading, and we're gonna find South America at some point. Maybe up here, maybe down here, but we're gonna find South America. That's not the problem today. The problem today is finding the city that we want to be at because we have no means of navigation outside of celestial navigation when we're halfway across the ocean right and of course to simulate things being a little more authentic i know i know the aircraft's going to be brought to the united states in 2021 or whatever year that ends up happening but i'm not going to look up forecast winds now we are crossing um actually Yes, we are. We are crossing the equator. Um, and that means that this area doesn't really have super strong winds at... Uh, we're going to fly at 14,000 feet today. So, um, we're going to find South America. That's not the problem, right? But we need to get going on celestial navigation so that we actually tighten up our navigation and find Fortaleza, where we're going to uh, arrive today, of course. Um, as we... Oh, sorry. Hold on a second. That's not Fortaleza. That's Natal. I did this flight plan, not two cats. So two cats, I may have done this wrong. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Yep, no, we're going to Natal. My bad. <laughs> hey, don't tell the passengers. Don't tell the passengers. But I just realized that uh, our navigation here is... Uh, hmm. Not exactly correct, as in, I went to Fortaleza, we need to go to Natal. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Destination changed. All right, I guess it's a little bit shorter flight. <laughs> All right, let me get rid of this guy, too. Mm -hmm. There we go. All right, cool. Shoney Gaming is here. Oh, Never, Shoney. Never. They're uh, they're not mistakes. They're happy little accidents. No, Colonel Jakes. The plan is still the same. The plan is we're gonna go. We're gonna go to Natal. We just didn't know. <laughs> no kidding, Luxionica. No kidding. <laughs> you painter, you exactly, exactly. <laughs> like my kids. Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, guys, I had the sim sound uh, all the way down because uh, some of you guys had joined me already and you guys were running your engines. Um, sounds like sounds like it's a bit better now. But if you are next to me, um, uh, if you could just keep your engine in idle, that'd be awesome. All right, let's get this uh, show on the road, shall we? I think we shall. I think we shall. <laughs> yeah, right, Johnny? Right? It's like, hey, uh... Uh, is this Brazil? <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, let's get going. We'll tell the uh, the ground crew to start closing up shop. And let's take our seat. All right. Okay. Time to do this. Time to do this. Oh, Kitty. Oh, my God. See, Kitty figured out I'm about to fly a plane. She's like, yeah, I'm out of here. Out of here. <laughs> Hello from Scotland. Hey, Fresh Gamer. How are you, man? Ooh. On Xbox, it's possible to get live traffic uh, reports. What exactly do you mean, Fresh Gamer, when you say live traffic reports? Because it could mean a different, a few different things. So I'm going to ask you that and see, see where we go from there. All right, guys. So the first thing we need to do here is we need to figure out how much fuel we're going to need for this, right? And for that, we're going to use Simbrief. Okay. So... And it's just for fuel estimation. I don't need a route. I'm doing the navigation on my own, right? So, we are leaving Monrovia and arriving at Natal. And we're going to use the DC-6. Now, the important thing here is this is the DC-6. We're not flying that. We're flying the DC-6B, which is bigger and burns more fuel. So, we're going to come over to the fuel factor here. We're going to offset this to P-27. 
That's 27% more fuel than the DC-6. That should be approximately correct for the DC-6 Bravo. Right? Kingsman, sorry, buddy. I gotta turn that off. The route today is just direct. All right. Yeah, sorry, guys. I didn't have time. It's, uh, it's early here. I didn't have time to update the bot. Uh, and most of my mods are sleeping. <laughs> All right. So let's go. Uh, today's route is a direct line between Monrovia and Natal, Brazil. So Monrovia, Liberia. And Natal, Brazil. Using Celestial Navigation. No waypoints. Well, I can't say no waypoints, but no fixes, no intersections, no waypoints. All right. Hey, Tyler, how's it going, man? He was definitely going to Fortaleza since I'm looking for. <laughs> Jumbo, good morning, man. How are you? Oh, a map of all traffic on my flight route. Okay, so fresh. Um, I don't think we have that yet. Like, we don't even have that on the PC. Um... Guys, I, I don't play this on the Xbox. I haven't haven't had the chance to do that. Sheed is here. Sheed, Sheed what's going on, dude? What's going on, buddy? Guys, Sheed. Hands down, best controller on VATSIM. That's it. I mean, he paid me to say this, but he might be. I don't know. Hey, Sheed, what's going on, buddy? Yeah, so Fresh, I don't think we have that, man. I mean, let's see what chat says here. Guys, so on the Xbox, can we have traffic as far as, like, AI traffic? Um, you know what I mean? Remember how the sim came out and he was going to have, like, flights that match the real world? Is that even happening? Because I've never tried that, to be honest. To be honest. Hey, Dazza, what's going on, man? Shardan, what's going on? Yeah, Sheet is amazing. Guys, you have to check Sheet out. Uh, does my bot do that? I think it does. I think it does. Yep, there we go. There we go. You gotta check him out, guys. Sanzami, what's going on, man? It's on the back burner. Yeah, that's what I thought, Shoney, but I wasn't sure. Wasn't sure. Alright, guys, so, all we're trying to get from this, look, about seven hour flight, right? Um, <laughs> eh, eh. Yeah. <laughs> that's more like it. That's more like it. I like his Cephi as an alternate. I think that's great. So, let's figure out how much fuel we're going to need for this. Oh, in altitude, I'm going to tell it I want to fly at 14,000 today. Uh, passengers, it is a full flight. So, full. Uh, cargo, let's see. Let's load up maybe two and a half thousand pounds. I'm, I'm using pounds. Okay. Hey, Dugal, how's it going, man? Dugal. Steaming. Steaming cup of coffee. Cheers, everybody. Grab your delicious drink. And let's have a cheer. Before we launch. In this weather. Across the ocean. Oh, Kitty's back. I guess we are going to uh, to Natal. She's going to Natal after all. She's she's pardoning me. Thank you, Kitty. Ask you. You may have, buddy. You may have. Look, guys. The airport today that we're leaving at is GLRB, which, by the way, which, by the way, has beautiful scenery. Uh, this is a payware scenery, and we're going to be giving out a copy of it today. We're going to be giving out a copy. Look at all you guys. Nice. Nice. Oh, my God. All right. Check this out, though. Uh, it's a small it's a small little airport. It's nothing huge. But it is the capital of Liberia, right? And look at this. Roberts International Airport. Hey, 777. How's it going, buddy? Here you are in the DC-6 again. About to leave for home. Safe flight. Okay, buddy. Hey, enjoy. Enjoy. I hope you enjoyed some sushi. I don't know if you like sushi or not. Because I think you were in... Was it Osaka? Was it Osaka? I forget. Oh, yeah. Ask you. Wrong one. So, guys, uh, let me uh, let me open up the weather here, just so you can see the airport that we're going to be giving away. 
right? Let Unreal Weather load up. There we go. Eh, actually, this works. So here we go. This is... Monrovia International Airport. Uh, it's a nice little scenery. It's a nice little scenery. There's a... Tower over there. Uh, main terminal over here. There is some... I think this is General Aviation Hangar over here. Nice. Nice little air, uh, apron here. I like it. And we don't have a whole lot of stuff for Africa. Not as much as we have for other continents, right? So, look at this. It's pretty nice. So, we're going to be giving away a copy of this scenery uh, to a lucky viewer later today. Liberian flag. All right. Tell you what. It's hard to get lost at this airport taxiing around, isn't it? It's not bad. It's not bad. Okay, let's go back to live weather. Oh, love Larger it. Life. Just Larger life. For nine months. Cheers, hey, buddy. Hello, Thank you. Fabio. Hello, guys in back. Cheers, buddy. Exactly, Shoney. Me too. Thank you very much, Larger. Welcome back, buddy. Welcome back. All right, so let's see how much fuel Simbrief thinks we need. All right, 22.9. 22.9. Um, that's pretty similar, I think, to what we had when we flew over from Brazil. So uh, I'm going to accept that. I'm going to put 23. Uh, there is some contingency fuel here. There's 5% contingency, right? Um, plus a final reserve of 45 minutes, as always. And, of course, we have fuel for the alternate, too. So we should have enough fuel to get there. 22, so let's go 23. Alright, here we go. 23, 72. I'm good with that. So we are going to have some fuel in the alternates, which means, remember, we take off on the main tanks, and then when we get to cruise, we're going to switch from main tanks to alternate tanks, right? Burn those down to nothing, then go back to main tanks. Hey guys, if you're joining, um, try to keep your engines down low so we don't get a lot of noise, please. Okay, um, we have to put full complement of passengers, and we're going to put... There we go, about 23. Let me see, is that what Simbrief ended up doing? Yeah, tw 2400. 2400 on Simbrief, so 23 is good here. All right, so that gives us a takeoff weight, look at this, of 99,000 pounds. Uh, pretty close to max gross weight. Pretty close. So she's not going to climb very well out of here. Not going to climb very well. Now, navigation-wise, guys, well, listen. Like I said, right? You kick in a heading of 266, you're going to find Brazil eventually. That's not a problem. The problem is going to be finding Natal. So we're going to have to create some waypoints here. Uh... Theirs are going to be the waypoints that we use for Celestial Navigation. But first, let's get her going. Let's get her in the air. Uh, and then it's going to be a bit of a hurry job to get the first shot done. But I should have enough time for that. Should. All right. Lots of aircraft. Frame rate's low. That's okay. We'll be in the air in no time. I am down. Just resubscribed for three okay. months. Good morning. Whoa. IAD bound. What's going on, buddy? Good morning, indeed. How are you, sir? How are you? Okay, so we got brakes on. I'm going to get rid of this guy here. Um, let's get the seat going, too, for the flight engineer. Okay. I'm going to get my cabin set up for about 70 degrees. That's good. Okay. Thanks. Okay, let's go have a look at our circuit breakers. Because we're taking this aircraft over from Forder. Down, down on the water heater, and down, down on 24 volts. Okay, that is acceptable. Okay, all up there. And so, uh, Forder told us he's had no issues with the aircraft, but, but, uh, we check anyways, right? Okay. One, two, three, four, and one, two. Okay, we're good. All circuit breakers checked. Let's go back here. All right, I'm going to start my flow from the top here. So, I'm going to energize the aircraft. And we're going to go to GPU. There we go. All right, so starting from the top, 
my emergency property ice is off. We have water off. We have circuit breakers for the, uh, these are all the uh, fuel pumps for the mains and auxiliary or alternate tanks. So those need to be on and then off on the oil dilution, off on the fuel pumps. Let's go. We power the aircraft, so let's turn on the nav lights, right? Uh, no smoking seatbelt signs come on. Let's go inverter upper for number one and lower number two and engine instruments. Check our volt, uh, voltage regulator overheat warning and that's working. That's great. Generators are off. Off, off, off on the mags. Everything here is off. Okay, that looks good. Let's take a look at our fluids here. All right, so anti-icing is full. Oil is almost full. Uh, I think it's actually full. Almost full, almost full. Um, auxiliary oil is full, hydraulic is full, and we have enough water for the takeoff. We can get more water in uh, Natal. It is 99,000 pound takeoff, so it is going to be a wet takeoff. We're going to use that water alcohol injection in the engines. Get those babies up to 2,500 horsepower each. Yeah, each. Without the water, 1,900 horsepower. With the water, 2,500 horsepower. Water alcohol, 2,500 horsepower. Okay, very good. Uh, let's see Just here. So fuel, Ewald. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate that sub. Let's go, huh? Bon dia, Crusader. Uh, fresh. Um, stick around, buddy. Stick around. It, it's a learning curve. It's a learning curve. But if you ask specific stuff, we can try and help you too. All right. Oh, Alicante to Glasgow. Nice, dude. All right, so we have about 3,000, 6,000 pounds in the alternates. And remember, I am expecting about 23,000 pounds. So now in the mains, what am I expecting? Well, about 17,000 if I have 6,000 up here, right? Let's see if that's what we got. So we got, let's see, 4,100 or so, right? Another 4,100, so 82. 82, and then we have 43. I'm going to be conservative and call it 43 and 43, so 86. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, so 86 and 82, uh, 16, 8, so I'm slightly shy of that 23, but remember I was conservative here and conserv- no, not conservative there. So yeah, it's close. I think I do have enough fuel though, or, or the fuel I'm expecting. Let's open up our cow flaps, get them ready for engine start, right? Landing lights uh, can be extended. Superchargers are off. We're going to turn on our radios here. Go back to neutral since they've already extended. Get our ADF going. And then COM2, NAV2. We're good here. All right. I'm facing east and that looks about east. So that's a good thing. Let's go back to here. So now I'm checking all of these fire handles here. Those are all pushed in. That's a good thing. Let's open up fuel tanks to main. All four. Off on crossfeed. Um, I got to change my controls here to my DC6. Just remember that. There we go. And DC6. Apply and save. All right. Let's get that prop all the way forward. There we go. Engines forward a little bit. And then we have our prop sinker here. It's on number three. I'm going to use number two today. There we go. Okay, reverser is off. Oh, forgot to check trim here. Trim is pretty much zero, isn't it? Yeah. Is it? Hmm. Might be a little right. There we go. That's more like it. Okay. Down here I have off on all the mixtures, off on the autopilot, off on mixture lock, off on carb heat. My aileron trim is zero. Okay. My hydraulics are on. Gears down, flaps up. Very good. And back here we have the auxiliary pump for hydraulics set to brake system. Got it. Oh, and on, on these oil um, gauges. Those are, those control the power to the oil pressure gauges. Or sorry, oil pressure gauge warnings. These uh, these orange lights here, right? Or should? Yep, there we go. So at least if if one of the engines has low oil pressure and low uh, fuel pressure, 
uh, then that light comes on. So if right now with the engines off, any of these being on is going to turn those lights on. Okay, very good. Uh, we don't need this guy anymore. I need to close up, get ready to go. By the way, I can see that my doors are open up here, right? So let's close up and then we'll set our pressurization. Close up the cargo holds too. When the stairs close, we can close the front or the cabin exit. There we go. Close her up. Gets a little quieter in here too. All right, nice. Let's put this baby away. I still need the GPU. Okay, let me turn this guy on standby. And I think that's it. I think I'm ready for engine start. Okay, we're going to crank number three first. Um, so, let's uh, make sure... Oh, sorry, pressurization, yeah. I said that and then didn't do it. Alright, let's put our flight needle to 14,000. Yeah, pay. That would be that would be great, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. All right, that's about fourteen thousand. We're expecting the cabin then to be at just shy of four thousand. All right, uh, we got cooling turbine turned off. I have engine instruments on the voltmeter, or sorry, AC and DC set to bus, so that's correct too. Okay, that's good. Oh, that's what I was gonna do, right? Is come over here, have a look outside, just make sure. Everything looks clear out there. Okay, good to go. Let's do this. So we're gonna do number three first. There we go. Let's go low pump number three and crank it. Three. There she goes. Six. At nine, Five. we prime magnetos. 12. Twelve, we boost. Oops. Oh, I clicked the boost too late. Nope, abort. Yeah, that was just a misclick. Just a misclick. If you don't boost in time, she's not going to start. So let's try that again. Hey, Chrome is here. What's going on, buddy? Six. Yes, it is pressurized. We just set Five. the pressurization. Twelve. Twelve boost. There she caught. Let's open up fuel to that engine. There we go. We got oil pressure. That's the first thing we check, so that's good. And we want the RPM to come up to a thousand. Okay. That's looking pretty good so far. Good CHT too. All right, that's a good start. That's a good start. Let's do uh, let's do engine number four now. So selector to four, pump to four. I'd left the pump on because I think it's warm enough that we need that pump. Yep. All right, let's crank it. Oh, hold on. Fuel pressure? Yeah. Fuel pressure on four. Crank it. Three. There Six. she goes. Five. Twelve. She caught. There we go. Oil pressure? Yes. Very good. RPM. It's about 700 coming up. Our Zach, right back at you, buddy. Right back at you, man. Great to see you on a Saturday, too. Hey, Sposs. I know, right? It is Saturday. <laughs> yeah, guys, today is a special effort. Um, as a matter of fact, once the mods get here, I'm going to have him set up a bot command, or maybe I'll have time, I don't know. Explaining what this is. Alright, that engine is looking good. We're going to keep that pump on and move on to engine number two. So now I'm going to get over here to the left. like to sit a little higher. Okay, let's go with number two. So we're going to go pump. Check that fuel pressure. We got it. Crank it. Three. Six. <laughs> Ice bird. Five. Prime. Mags. Twelve. Boost. She caught. Fuel. Oil pressure is there. Watch that RPM. Engines 3 and 4 RPM is pretty decent right now. 
You want to be between 1,000 and 1,200, really, at idle like this. All right, 777, take care, buddy. I never saw if it was Osaka or not. I'm sorry, I didn't have time. Have a great flight home, buddy. Oh, Rado. Hey, welcome, buddy. How's it going? Hey, Pate. Murph said that you know which screw detaches the wing, so which one is it? I can't show you that, Pate. Then you're going to run back there and do it halfway through the flight. I, I'm sorry. Sorry, it's a, it's a sensitive thing. All right, last engine is engine number one, guys. Pump it. Let's check that fuel pressure. It's good. We're going to crank it. Three. There she goes. Six. Five. Prime, mags, Twelve. boost. I hear it. Oil pressure. There. Nice. Yay! What's Yank going on, Yank? Just resubscribed for three <laughs> months. Three months of knowledge and happiness. The oh. flight 45. Let's go. Thank you, buddy. Thank you. Thank you. Just catching up on chat, guys. Catching up on chat. Whoa. And oh my god, Shoni. Oh my god, dude. Thank you very much. Five tier one subs. Let's go, man. Let's go. Wow. Thank you, Shoni. Guys, I was going to say. Um, I'll remind people throughout the flight. Because we have people coming and going, right? But uh, this is my full-time job. So I do appreciate people that support the channel so, so much. Uh, I also appreciate that not everybody can do it. So... There's no pressure at all, right? Um, I appreciate you being here. That's really what I what I what I'm looking for is for people to be here. If you donate, man, that's just the cherry on top, right? But I want to remind people that September uh, is a good month to donate if you're considering supporting the channel. Uh, the whole month of September gives you 20% off on gifting subscriptions, uh, which is pretty amazing, right? So if you want to take advantage of that, you got the whole month to think about it. Thank you very much, guys. Appreciate that. And Shoni. Awesome stuff, man. <laughs> That's awesome, dude. Thank you. Oh, Sposs. Jeez, man. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Let's keep going here, guys. The engines are warming. Warming. I think they're already... Yeah, they're pretty warm already. What are we doing here with the oil temperature? Nah, no, not yet. Left engine. Look, it just became acceptable temperature here. You see how, how you know, it takes a few minutes, right? For these engines to fully warm up. Um... Okay, so in the meantime, yeah, let's plan our taxi here. Let's plan what we're doing. We don't have GPS, uh, so we're not going to have the luxury of having our position on a chart. But we can certainly look at a chart, right? And we can look around. We know where we are at the ramp. Shouldn't be that much of a problem. Famous last words. Famous last words. Spas, you're a legend, sir. Thank you. Oh, yeah, Steve. Very much so, sir. We have to. We have seven hours of flight ahead of us. German, what's going on, man? Yeah, Krami. Looks great, doesn't it? Oh, my God. It's already a level four? Jeez. New spawns. Look at that. Oh, Grumpy, you just got one, dude. That's amazing. That's amazing. All right. Okay. How we doing? Very well. Okay, let's look at a chart, guys. Chart for this very airport. Old grumpy gamer just resubscribed for three months. New spawns gifted a tier one sub to old grumpy gamer. They have given eighteen hey, new subs in the channel. Let's see here. Oh my, Shoni, what are you doing, dude? I think Shoni's button is stuck, guys. Shoni, you've just done this. Oh my god, Sly Gary, thank you very much for that too, man. I appreciate that very, very much. Shoney, let's go for the full 10. Thank you, man. I appreciate that, Shoney. Oh, Steve, it is a great part, isn't it? Guys, we need to figure out the weather, I mean the wind, so we know which way we're going to take off here. Um, unfortunately, we do not have... We do not have METAR for this airport. Believe it or not. Um... Even 72 but here's what we can do. For three months. Show me gaming gifted a tier one sub to Demon 72. Here's what we can do. 
here is what we can do. Landberg Legacy. Holy moly, man. Thank you very much. Have a good flight, mate. You deserve each and every one of those subs. Thank you for sharing your knowledge. Thanks, Lindberg. I so appreciate you saying that, dude. Thank you, thank you. Allison Johnson, oh my god. Let's go, guys. Dutch sit with 100 bits. Jeez. Ah, you guys floor me. You guys floor me. Alright, so this kind of sucks because there's no Mitar super close to us, right? Oh, Mitars are the little reports Just here. You can tell that months. closest one is there. That's not great. But here's what we can do. This doesn't always work because these clouds are at altitude. They're not necessarily ground level. But we can animate this weather and see, look, at least at this altitude. Hey, Alison Johnson, thank you so much. Thank you for sharing your knowledge. It looks like the wind's coming from the west, right? So at ground level, we could easily be that way. Okay, let's see. Can we see some sort of windsock? Wait, 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 wait. Wind's coming from the coast, MDH. It normally does in places like this. It normally does. Uh, I definitely don't see a windsock here. Whew. Hey, Rob, MCR. By the way, Rob, let's go, man. Let's go. Sorry I missed uh, your subscription live there. That's awesome, dude. Thanks for being here, Ellison Johnson. How's it going? So if... If indeed it, the wind's coming from the coast, we gotta take off on 2 2. Which is what we're close to, anyways, because we're close to the terminal there. Right? Okay, let's make it 2 2. Oh my god, guys, we're at 93% of a level 5 high trade. I just realized that with 2 minutes and 20 seconds to go. Come on, we can close out a level 5. Let's do this. Let's do this. Look for cows, they have their butts in the wind. So, DS, you know, I know, I know you're probably joking, but. I have heard that many times, and I wonder if there's some truth to that. Okay, guys, so that's Alpha right there. Let's go. All right, I'm going to start my clock here. Or I should say my stopwatch. My stopwatch. Oh, my God. Jaeger with five tier one subs. Holy moly. Jesus, guys. Jaeger, thank you very, very, very much, sir. Okay, lights are on. No, let's go. Lights on. Oh, we gotta turn our beacon on. <sighs> so many generous people. BKing, it's incredible, isn't it? Oh my god, you got it. Reckless, where'd you find that? I couldn't find that online anywhere. Oh, wait. Reckless. That is not from today. Look at the date. That is from some day that's the second day of the month at 2300 Zulu. That's not Go current, but... Yeah, that's not current. <laughs> Welsh. Oh my god. Oh, Kazmiri with a tier 1 sub. Holy moly, guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Jeez. Alright. Okay, so... Um, hold on, I'm gonna reset my, my clock because I didn't move. Okay, that ear rings is moving. Let's go. For two months. Second month okay, so I'm gonna move. So flaps 20. Breaks off. Let's get moving. She's heavy, so you need a little power to get moving here. Kaharia with 200 bits. Thank you very much, man. Second month, Okazmiri. That's amazing. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Light instruments, power failure. Yeah, I'm like looking at this light. I just realized. Remember, we were connected to the GPU. Okay, so when you taxi out, what PMDG did is they automatically disconnect the GPU for you. But if they automatically disconnect the GPU and this switch is selected for GPU, then part of your aircraft doesn't have electrical power. Part of it does, but part doesn't. So all we need to do is switch it back to plain battery and all of our instruments get power back over again. Doesn't really hurt the aircraft, by the way. Um, just so you know. Yeah, B, doesn't it? Everything jiggles in this plane, man. I have to get out of the uh, harmonic here. There we go. There we go. I'm gonna go all the way, guys. Because I'm heavy today. Oh, yeah, I gotta t turn on our water. Water injection. Dude, Luxionica, I just turned it on before I started moving. Guys, look at that. We completed a level 5. Let's go. Thank you so, so much. You guys are truly amazing. 
truly amazing. Go back to idle or 1200. I'm going to keep it at 1200 actually. Right before the harmonic. So that we have a little thrust for, for taxi here. Alright guys, we're not on vet sim. This is, uh, you know, more of a community group flight. So we're not doing vet sim right now. Plus, there's almost never controllers on in Africa any, anyways. So I'm going to go straight on to this, this takeoff here. So all we need to do for now is set a heading of 266 after takeoff. And obviously start our clock. Right? That's going to be the most important thing. And then we can figure out navigation after that. And by the way, you know, you may be thinking like, wait, dude, so you're taking off and you don't even know, like, what you're going to do navigation-wise? Well, no, I do. It's just that even if I had, even if I had the entire Celestial Navigation already pre prepared, which I could have, I would still just fly a heading of 266 after takeoff anyways. Because until I get my first fix, there's no corrections to be made. I don't even know what the wind is. See what I mean? So, it's literally takeoff, turn to 266, which is going to be that way, and that's it. Okay. Gas, carriage, mixture, and the pumps are on. Yes, very good. Okay, we're ready for takeoff, guys. We are ready. Let's do this. Go west, as a group once said. That's right, MDH. Oh, Flying Doctor is on runway 04. Okay, we're going to take off together, Flying Doctor. We're going to do a check every hour, Shoney. A shot. We, we call it a shot. Every hour. Okay, let's go. So, uh, before we do this, sorry, before we do this, I want to do... I, I screwed up my last DC-6 takeoff in a major way. So, I wanted to review that with you guys. Just make sure we know what we're doing here. All right, so, I'm going to zoom in. Whoop. Sorry. <laughs> I'm going to zoom in a little bit here so we can see a little bit, little bit more. All right. So this is us right here. Okay. Forget that. That's coming back to land. So for takeoff, we're going to set our takeoff power. Let go of the brakes and then she starts accelerating down the runway. Great. But then there's a sequence of events that we have to make, that we have to do. Um, and so that's what this is for, right? The correct sequence of events at the right time. All right, so take off power, take off power, take off power. That's all we're going to do. Take off power, just keep going down the runway. We're going to rotate at our correct V speed. And good thing I'm looking at this because I forgot to check what our V speed is going to be today. You have a little plaque up here that can do that for you. So for takeoff, we're taking off at sea level, right? And we are at 100,000 pounds. 100,000 pounds here. 103 is our V1. Okay, I'm going to write that down. V1, 103. V2, for 100,000 pounds, 112. So if I lose an engine, this is going to be the speed that I aim to fly at. 112 on the climb out. And that's going to be important because I'm heavy today. So I need to fly a precise profile should I lose an engine. Just uh, so I get the performance, right? Hey, Oro, how's it going, man? I'll do a shot every two hours too, Fabio, but it'll be a liquor in a glass Sydney. Sounds good. Sounds good. All right. And most important of this always, if we have to come back, like we lose an engine, well, we're not going to keep going, right? We're going to come back and land. If that happens, we are going to be overweight. We're going to be overweight. And so what this dump here says is, hey, at 100,000 pounds, if you have to come back, you need to dump fuel for four minutes and 44 seconds. In our case, let's just dump for five minutes, right? Uh, and yeah, we can dump fuel in the DC-6 here in the sim. Otherwise, we're above the maximum landing weight. That's why we have to dump fuel. You're like, wait, what are you talking about? Well, if we take off right now at 100,000 pounds, we're overweight for landing. We can take off at this weight, but we can't land at this weight. That's very common for planes, that the maximum landing weight is lower than the maximum takeoff weight. Quite a bit lower, right? So... We have to think about this too. So it's going to be a five minute dump should we have to come back. And our stall speed is 99 knots. 
VS-99. Okay. Very good. Let's go back here. And continue this. Okay, so we're going to rotate at, uh, let's see here, 103. That's my V1, but I rotate right after uh, my V1. We call for gear up right away. Then, minimum 75 feet, you call for flaps up. So it's gear up, flaps up. I'm going to go through sort of the, the steps first, then we talk about them a little bit. Rotate. Gear up. Flaps up, but flaps up simultaneously says, hey, you need to get to V2 plus 15, right? Our V2 is 112 plus 15, 127, uh, which is between 125 and 135. So 127 is the speed we're aiming for on this sort of, Im the first speed we're aiming for. I'm not explaining this very well, I feel like the... <laughs> So the first speed we aim for right after rotation is going to be 127, right? That's the initial climb out speed. Then, once the flaps are up, we go 140 knots and Mito power. Okay? So, rotate, gear up, flaps up, speed 127. Once the flaps move up, I'm aiming for 140 and Mito power when the flaps come up. So it's quick, and there's lots of things to do. Then you keep 140 knots to 500 feet. At 500 feet, uh, auto feather off, ADI. I don't know what ADI is. Um, oh, nice, Shoney. Thank Whoa, what happened to Allison? I'm fighting off headache. Oh, but good nonetheless. Ah, uh, sorry you have a headache. Okay. I don't know what ADI and auto feather off. Auto feather off, sure. ADI. I mean, maybe it's the injection. But an injection... Well, anyways. Yeah, yeah, be king. But that's what I mean. That's not what it means here, because you're not turning that off. You know what I mean? Um, anyways, it's 140 knots to 500 feet, and then you turn auto feather off. Then, at 500 feet, we're going to set climb power which is 40 inches and 24. By the way, Mito power. Oh, you know what? Let's look up Mito power for today. There is a chart for that. Uh, and then we go to 165, and that's our climb speed. I know I just confused a lot of people. I get it. I didn't do a very good job explaining this, but it can be confusing. You need to do this several times, and when you're in flight training, you do this several times until it's like sort of, you know, natural for you to do all the motions. Yeah, new spawns. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, let's find a Mito power for today. Uh, I'm gonna go back to this. Take off speeds, landing speeds. No, there's conversion stuff here. Cruise stuff. Mito. There we go. All right. Sea level. Pressure altitude today, right? Standard temperature, it's warmer than this, but doesn't really matter. But what matters here is the manifold pressure at the carb temperature. So when we go full power, right? We're gonna see what the carb temperature is gonna be. And based on that carb temperature from plus 30 to minus 30, we're gonna set a certain Mito power over here, right? Now the carb can drop anywhere from 10 to 20 degrees Celsius from outside air temperature because it's a Venturi and the pressure, or the temperature drops in a Venturi, right? Um, so, uh, outside right now, outside temperature right now, it's about 23 degrees or so. And so when I go full power, I'm expecting the carb temperature here is gonna drop uh, to about zero or so, right? So in anticipation of that, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to aim to do 47.2 for my Mito power today. That's a manifold pressure. Mito, 47.2. Okay. And then climb power is going to be 40 and 2400. And by the way, you also go 2600 when you go Mito. Yeah, there's lots to do on this takeoff. Lots to do. 
Interesting, I could also set a BMEP. 196, maybe that's better. Instead of going for the manifold pressure, because then I don't have to look at the carb temperature. You know? So let's do that. I'll go to 2600 RPM and 196 BMEP. And I'm going to keep this until... Uh, remember, 500 feet. Right. And then at 500 feet, I'm going to go climb power 165. Okay, so let's do this again. Rotate. Gear up. Flaps up. V2 plus 15, 127. Right? And Mito power. Ooh, okay. When the flaps come up, 140 to 500 feet. And at 500 feet, climb speed and climb power. Okay, Steve, thank you. Awesome, thank you. Oh yeah, so I forgot that, so... Rotate, gear up, flaps up, 127 on the speed, Mito power. When flaps are up, 140 to 500 feet. At 500 feet, auto feather off, water injection off, climb speed, climb power. Oof, lots of stuff, huh? <laughs> MDH. Well, I enjoy doing this MDH. I enjoy doing things like following procedures, having the challenge, you know? Okay. Let's see how much of that I can remember. So I'm going to take my parking brake off. Get my clock ready. Okay. Holding her on the brakes. Let's go to 30 inches and check the engines. Make sure they look healthy. We've got good water pressure, good cylinder head temperatures, good um, and water injection pressure, right? Carb temperature is actually warmer than I thought, but that's okay because we're going to be MEP. Got good oil temperature, good oil pressure, good fuel pressure. RPMs look good. Fuel flow looks good. I think we have four good engines. All right, so let's go to 59 and a half inches here. Water injection is going to come on soon. There it is. So we're now injecting water into those engines. There's 59 and a half. Breaks off. Start the clock. All right, guys. Brazil bound. Let's do this. That's awesome. That DC6 let go of the brakes just before me. Just before me. All right, airspeed is alive. Engines are looking good. Whoa, runway center line. Remember, uh, 103 is our V1 today. Man, she takes a while, huh? There's V1, rotate. We're off, gear up. Flaps up. 127 on the speed. When the flaps are up, we're pitched to 140. And I didn't do my... Uh... Okay, pitching to 140. Oh, don't let her... Jesus, don't let her descend. There's 140. Sorry, I screwed that up. And I didn't do auto feather, but water injection can come off. I'm climbing to 500 feet at 140. Water injection. Coming off. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> and that's why you have a compound crew for this aircraft. And, oh, and I never went Mito Power. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Guys, 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 what's happening today? The usual Fabio stuff is happening today. Bringing the engine back to 24. And we're going to start our turn. And pitching for 165. This was... The worst DC-6 departure. Worse than the previous one. Worse than the previous one. Ah, oh, so behind the aircraft, guys. So behind the aircraft. I don't know what's happening. I don't know what's happening. All right, a heading off 266 is what I need. 
Little past that. There we go. Let's go gyro pilot on because I obviously need it. Climbing out at 165 now. Heading is a little bit off. A little bit off. We need to go to the left a little bit. For a 266. How's the speed? Speed is a little low too, so let's go three clicks forward and start our little turn to 266. Oof. Thanks, Allison. What a horrendous takeoff, guys. What a horrendous takeoff. I think I passed the heading just a tad there. Speed is a little low. There we go. Did I get 24? Exactly. No, it's a little less here. There's 24. And now we're going to keep 40 all the way to 14,000. Speed is doing better. Yeah, our heading is a little... It's 264 right now. So I need 2 degrees to the right. Speed is a little bit better now. Heading is almost there. There should be it. Yeah, that will do it. Whew. Okay, wow. Man, second time I screw up this takeoff. Second time. The one thing threw me off big time. And that was the fact that she's a lot heavier than I normally fly her. And trim-wise, she wasn't ready for the climb. And I twice I saw myself descending, which you never do on a takeoff, right? And it's because she was nose heavy and I wasn't holding it back as much. And she was descending because I was paying attention to other stuff. There was too much happening. <laughs> Cold Nebo. The sweat is real, Shoni. Man, what a horrible show I just gave people. <laughs> hey, no, it's a good show. It's a, a how not to do things. It's a how not to do things. Man. Man, man, man. Yeah, exactly, Daiki. I did it on purpose. Speed's a little high now. Watch that 40. Okay, that's still good. Man, I hope I didn't cook the engines, because I kept uh, takeoff power for way too long. Way too long. How are we doing here at the heading? Pretty good. Pretty good. Still in rain? Uh, San Antonio, Mike. San Antonio. <laughs> Vinyl. Yeah, and two cats. You know what's funny? Um, and I actually, I find this in almost everything I learn. If I go back four weeks, five weeks, something like that, I was doing a much better job on takeoff on the DC-6 than I did today, right? And so my learning curve goes up, then I get good at some stuff, then I get worse at it for some reason. And my whole life has been like this. I get worse at it... For at it for some reason and then I get better at it again it's it's odd so I'm in that stage apparently where I'm getting worse at the DC-6 oh my god really Jeppesen are they like on a ferry flight or are they doing the display today speed's low And we're climbing way less than I uh, than I thought to. I planned 750 feet per minute on the climb, but she's too heavy. North England tour flight today. That's awesome. So, like, when they're flying around, where you're, like, when they go by you, are they going to be doing like maneuvers, or are they just flying by? And if it's even just a flyby, they probably have the smoke on, right? Yeah, Steve. Maybe. Maybe that's that. Information flyby, okay. I do the same thing, says Rado. I think it has to do with confidence. You get a little comfortable and start making mistakes. Maybe that's it. Just gotta be saying it's miles better than the first one. Nice, Colonel Jakes, nice. Well, listen, if you're just taking off, this plane is super easy. There's no problem there. And you retract the gear and do the power. The problem is doing things at the right time in the right sequence. That's, well, my problem. My problem is that. So look, I am actually getting 750. It's not too bad. It's not too bad. 
All right, now we gotta start thinking about. We gotta start thinking about uh, navigation, right? That's interesting. I think I know. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. I think this initial heading is a little off. Yes. Yes, it is. Okay. So I need to be on a 255. Whoa, speed's very low because power is low too. Because I'm climbing and I'm one inch below what I need to be. There we go. Coming up on 255. Oh, no, I already passed it. No, I actually think I got it. Devil's in the details. Yeah, hey, Fab, is it possible to show the plane from the outside for my mom? Yeah, Kahari, of course. Hey, Kahari's mom, hello. There we go. And those, mom, are other people that are flying with me. Oh, my God, there's a lot of people flying with me. We're in the clouds, so not much to see right now. All right, Shoni. Hey, dude, thank you very much for your generosity, man, and for your presence. Unbelievable stuff. Thank you, man. Okay, sounds good. Have a great day, dude. Have a great day. All right, now speed is way too high. <laughs> I am not doing a good job at all of flying this plane. Hey, look, we're about to come out on top. Nice. Nice. Ah, cold. Apparently not for long. Apparently not for long. Okay. Oh, well. I took too long to go outside. Of course, Kaharia. Yes. Now, is it Kaharia or Kaharia? I don't know where the emphasis is. Rock Frog. Dude. What's going on? Rock is here, guys. Everybody start behaving. Hey, Rock. Hello, sir. How are you? Thank you very much, dude. Smash with brain during takeoff. Yep. I felt as though it started getting heavier once I let go of the brakes. Interesting. Interesting. Passing 5,000. And so now I'm going to go to standard altimeter setting. And it looks like it is already 299 or 2. Speed is a tad low. Let's go three clicks forward. Keep that power coming up to 40. Whoops. There we go. We will, Julian. Uh, not much higher. I, I passed through a hole not that long ago. Um, so I'm expecting seven, 8,000 be the tops today. So we should be fine. At least early on, we should be above those clouds. <laughs> Dalmatian. <laughs> hey, buddy. Good morning. Thank you, Scob. I am. Ooh, while Eileen is asleep. So, Scob, you said something about her mom coming over the other day. I didn't really understand what that was. Is she coming up to visit? Is that what it is? And yeah, take advantage of the fact she's asleep, right? <laughs> That's how it goes. I think all my kids are asleep here, too. Uh, a Valier, that's funny, dude. That's funny. <laughs> yeah, Crumb, I'm working my coffee here, too. Hmm. Look at this, we're breaking out. There are some higher clouds. So, oh, and some heavy stuff, too. Wow, how, how am I doing this? I don't understand. It's uh, it's changing. Like, I leave the speed at 165. It stays at 165 for a while. Then I come back, and it's completely different. 
That's the first time I I experienced that with the DC-6, which is interesting. Okay. No, it's off. We turned it off. I did forget to turn auto feather on for takeoff, so good thing we didn't have an engine failure. Because that needs to come off at 500 feet also. Hey, Principal J, what's going on? Oh, is it really the United States Air Force birthday today? So I'm expecting air shows. Oh, somebody did say that. That the clouds since the update yesterday are adding drag, and they are. Look at this. Oh my god, what's happening, Asobo? That's what it is. Look, and now out of the cloud. Yes. Well, cow flaps, I totally forgot, but cold. We're not icy, buddy. We're not icing at all. No, it's the clouds. It's the clouds. It is the clouds. So if you don't know... Okay, I'm, I can't say this for sure, but I think this experience here is confirming it. The hotfix that came out yesterday apparently introduced a bug that had already happened before yeah rock yes cold i heard somebody reporting this yesterday and i was like wait what and they said it's back and i said what do you mean they go it's happened before they fixed it now it's back and i'm definitely definitely experiencing that right now definitely there's something going on with drag in clouds because as soon as you go through clouds your speed goes down yeah, CPOAO has that problem too. Yes, Colonel Jakes, yeah. We're having issues. It's a bug. It's definitely a bug. Yeah, well, sh always, right? That team, man, so capable, and yet... Ah. Uh. Maddie has the issue too. Yep, exactly, exactly, Maddie. Ah, uh, what a bummer, huh? I mean, we're gonna be above the clouds soon, I think, so it's probably not gonna be much of an issue that we have to deal with going forward. But what a bummer. Yeah, cold. Sounds like it. So outside of the cloud, my vertical speed goes down. And then inside the cloud, it goes up. I mean, it's going up now because I did that, but... Look, as soon as I hit the cloud, look at my vertical speed. As soon as I hit the cloud. So maybe that's that's not adding drag. Maybe that's just what's happening is it's throwing the plane up for some reason and then you lose speed because of that. Look, outside the cloud, vertical speed goes down. Nice, Welsh, okay. Right, so maybe it doesn't add drag. It's maybe to do with updrafts and downdrafts. Yeah, Sasan. Hey, Sasan is here. What's going on, man? So Sasan, yeah, the basically the DC6 has auto mixture. So the mixture has been changing as we climb, but there's two settings for it. Auto rich, which I am at right now, and then there's auto lean. Once we get to cruise, we're going to go to auto lean, but the whole climb is done in auto rich. Convective clouds would possibly do that. They would, cold. They would, but not to this degree. Like, we already had that before the updates. Going through clouds before the update, like convective or cumulus clouds, would result in some pretty good updrafts and downdrafts. But realistic ones. These, as a pilot, these are not realistic whatsoever. They changed something that didn't work. Ah, Sasset, okay. Sounds good, man. Yeah, Julian, exactly. TBM flat for Mizu to rent on last evening that there is much more turbulence along with up and down drafts. Interesting, interesting principle. <sighs> Man, I'm not showing any icing at all. But for that speed, I should be climbing better than that. I should be climbing better than that.
Maybe, maybe she just needed to get away from the clouds a little bit. Because now it's getting more like the performance I expect. Just came back from the flight in the water. Oh, really? Oh, dude. Okay, okay. My anti-icing is off, yes. My anti-icing is off. Oh, cows. Sorry, forgot. Forgot to uh, adjust the cows for the climb. Yeah, basically, when you fly into a cloud in real life, there is no uh, big change like there is in here. I mean, don't get me wrong, guys. Once in a while, you hit a cloud that, like, as soon as you go in, boom, the turbulence starts. But more often than not, it doesn't. And when you go in, there's no change. It's still the same air that you're flying through. So your speed doesn't change. Your vertical speed doesn't really change. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, we're only getting 500 or so feet per minute here. All right, Ninja, let's have a look, man. In real life pictures. Oh, dude. All right, let me blow these up. Hold on. So, what did you think? Oh, it's a 400 also. Amazing experience, he says. Where were you going? Was this just for fun? It was amazing. Oh, no, no, no. I see. In fact, it's set to... Well, I mean, I didn't change it. So it should be on. Because I always have it on. But I... Maybe the update changed it? I hope not. That's amazing that all you guys are flying. Flying with. Oh, my God. Look how many DC6s, guys. DC6, 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 DC6. DC6. <laughs> this is incredible. Just a sightseeing flight for 20 minutes in collaboration with a local classic car race going on. Oh, man. Okay, so let's show those pictures. All right, guys. So Ninja today went flying in this. Oh, dude. Dude. Now that is really cool, man. That is really cool. Yeah, it's the 400, because look at the avionics. It looks brand new. It looks super nice. Look at that. The best seat. Yeah, you had like the first seat on the right here, right? Oh, man. Look at that. That's so cool. That's so cool. Yeah, I know, right, Luxionica? Oh, oh, yeah. That is amazing. That is amazing. Nice, nice. Pretty decent day, too. You could get, like, whatever, 2,000 feet or so. Did you guys actually go through clouds or it was just VFR? Whoa, what are all the, uh, the tan roofs? Look how different, how different they are from everything else. Heading 255, Sasson. Just VFR, yeah. I know, Lalilo, it must be so cool. I've never landed on water in a plane before. Either, even as a passenger. Ah, it's University Park, okay. Sorry, Ninja, wh where is this? What city is this? Thanks, Colonel. I'll have a look. In uh, in MSFS picks, Colonel. Yes, it is. Yeah. Oh, nice picture of the departure there, Colonel. Ah, uh, Arus, Arus, is that how you pronounce it? In Denmark. Okay. Look at that great picture, dude. Great picture. Look at our Garmin stuff right there. 
Interesting, he's got a timer. Oh, because it's a 20 minute flight, you said, right? So he's got a timer so he knows like when he needs to start heading back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, why is he using the timer? Ah, uh, makes sense. They are smart. Yeah, they want to make money. Hey, Woolies is here. What's going on, Woolies? Good to see you, man. Ah, Loli Lot guessed it was Denmark or Holland. Nice. How uncomfortable would you think it is to fly an otter with the throttle on the roof? <laughs> it is up there, yes. It is up there, and it is different, for sure. It is definitely different. Uh, you know. Look, I think actually on this picture here, we see it. Yep, right there. And then, right there. He's using it. And it's not just the throttle. Look, it's throttle, prop, and your mixture. They're all on the roof. <laughs> oh, and a turbo goose for a water landing. And oh my god, that's amazing, Sendero. You know what, Mr. 90? I did. Hey, Mr. 90. Hi. I got it on like as we were climbing, I think. <laughs> hey, Mo is here. What's going on, Mo? Good to see you, man. Sore arm, yeah, right? It's the whole time. Like, rawr, rawr. It's a turboprop. It's this guy right here. It's a turboprop. Why is there no airline name? Nordic seaplanes. And that's the only symbol they have on the aircraft? Wow. Hey, Peter. Hi. How are you, man? Fourteen, Tyler. Fourteen. And we're almost there. We're almost there. We're at 11.5. I'm still at 165. Looks like I'm going to be in clouds. That could be a bit of a problem. Oh, lightning. Ugh. Well... We'll see if we're going to have uh, no clouds for our first shot. Okay, we're about to enter clouds. Look what happens. Look what happens. Let's see if it does anything. Guys, this time... Oh, oh, look at this. Look at the vertical speed. Look at the vertical speed. Every time. Every time. Coming back down. Coming back down. Okay, Sasson. Oh, and I'm out of the cloud. Okay, well, we're definitely going to be in clouds here for a bit. So let's see if anything changes again. 12 for 14. A little bit more there. There we go. No, Principal J. Apparently, the hotfix yesterday changed something with the clouds. We've been talking about this. Yeah, it could be convective updraft, but clouds also have downdrafts, and... Every time you're getting updrafts when you get into a cloud. It's... That's obviously not realistic, right? My dad loved the trip as well. He's afraid uh, of heights. Wow, that's great, Ninja. That's great, dude, that he liked it. And that he was with you. Oh, wow. That's so cool. I'm so glad you got that experience, dude. What you recommend as a good first payway aircraft? Love flying the standard, including planes like the 152, 172 Baron, but looking at my first venture to something new. So Woolies, um, well, I have something in mind already, but let me ask you, considering you were talking about Cessna 152, 172, we're probably talking, hey, FSPB is here. Oh my God, yes, buddy, how are you? How's it going? Have you still, have you still been working out every, every day, every morning? I think it was in the morning you worked out, right? Maybe it was afternoon for you. Um, so, I was going to say the arrow. I was going to say the arrow. The Just Flight Arrow. Woolies is amazing. Is amazing. Um, but I was going to ask if you wanted, like, a bigger aircraft. Right? Uh, you know, because there's... You know, airliners, jets, there's fighters. There's all kinds of stuff. But considering you said 152, 172, I'm going to say the Just Flight Arrow. No, just GA. Okay, then definitely, definitely the Just Flight Arrow. Let me um, give you a link. Now, I would look at the Turbo Arrow myself. Both the Arrow and Turbo Arrow are amazing. Yeah, exactly, Woolies. Exactly. 
only because the turbo can can do a few extra things you know what i mean because of the turbo you can go to higher altitudes you can go to higher airfields so it's more capable hold on fspb evenings yeah oh you're getting a new pc nice nice that's amazing dude congratulations red arrows had two formations one following the other it was awesome to see they were some distance away so not a great picture but i've put it on discord okay let's go see thanks thanks jefferson that's awesome dude whoa F fspb that's a great computer man that is great Yes, thanks, Lolly Law. Good, good point. And by the way, Woolies, by the way, look over here real quick. Just so you know, just so you know, um, they do have a bundle because there is. they have the arrow, right? They have the turbo arrow, and then they have the bundle of the arrow and the turbo arrow. If you want to buy both, they give you a discount, right? Um... And they also, if you're not into the Arrow, you know, Arrow has retractable landing gear. Um, hold on a second. Altitude. Retractable landing gear and uh, constant speed propeller. If you want something simpler, then look at the Warrior. Also just flight. And it's basically an Arrow with fixed gear and fixed pitch propeller. But I like the Turbo Arrow better. Okay. Starting my round off here for 14,000. I shop up in. Remember me, please. <laughs> See you, dude. Take care, man. Take care. All right, there's our altitude. Let's level off here. Okay. Um, and now we need a cruise power setting, right? So it's going to be throttle, mixture, prop in that order. We're going to adjust the throttle, then the mixture, then the prop. But for that, we need to look over here and get a cruise chart. And at 14,000 today, I think I'm going to use the, uh, the 1100. 1100 at 14,000. Let's see. Let's see what we get. 14,000. Oops. Get that fill out of there. There we go. All right, so it's going to be 142 BMEP and 2190 on the RPM. So first I'm going to bring 142 back here, right? There's 150, 142 is about here. But now I'm going to go to Auto Lean. And look what happens to my BMEP when that happens. Whoa, no! I just killed the, I killed the fuel to that engine for a second, so she died for a second. But she was still windmilling, of course, right? So I just put the fuel back on and she's back on. Yeah, unfortunately you saw it already. So look, my BMEP drops, right? when I go to auto lean like this. So now I'm no longer at 142, but when I bring my RPM back, that's gonna go up. So let's see, I need 2190 on the RPM. I'm bringing it back and look, it's bringing that back up. There's 2250. And I need 2190, almost there. Oh, I think it's gonna be exactly 142. How lucky. There we go. I need to adjust a little bit. So now I have 2190. Or at least I think I do. No, uh, no, a little bit less. There. There, 2190. And look at this. It is pretty much set at 142. Three and four are a little high. Bring it back. Not bad. Now, my fuel flow should be 526 pounds per hour. Let's see if that's what I'm getting. 526. Yeah, I mean, it's close, right? Look, I got 520, 540. 540 on both of these. It's close enough. It's close enough. That's good. All right. So we've settled 
we've settled in our cruise. But that took us a lot longer. Yeah, a lot longer than we expected because of that. Well, we were not climbing as well as we thought we were going to be. What's that, little doll? Oh. <laughs> Hold on, that's sad. Hey, Nesab, here's some auto tune for you, baby. All right, all right, all right. So, this is going to be a challenge for shooting the sun. Rock frog. Our, um, there, our shooting window is right there. And by the way, this is where you would have the sextant attached to. Hey, look at that. Valier is up there. So, right now, in clouds, yeah, it's not possible to shoot the sun, right? We're going to have to wait until we're outside of clouds. But we need to prepare the shot nonetheless. Because we're going to hope. Right? We're going to hope. That it's going to work. So we need to start talking about celestial navigation. Man, I'm this close to just using GPS. I gotta be honest. I gotta be honest, I'm this close to just using GPS. I'm feeling lazy. I'm not feeling like celestial navigation today. I'm gonna do it, because I think you guys want to see it. Oh, you know what I hadn't looked at? This. Look at this. Namibian Civil Aviation. I think that's... Or something... Else. No, no, not civil. It's Namibian... Oh, I forgot what the NCA stands for. Yeah, Loli Law wants to see it, of course. Yep. Yeah, Maddie, we're gonna do it. We're gonna do it. Look, now we're outside of clouds. Now, now we can do the shot. Yeah. Where are you, son? You're out there somewhere. <gasps> oh, God. Alright, so. How do we do celestial navigation, then? Well, we need a few tables and we need an app. Yeah, there's a mod for the sim called CellNav. It's on flightsim.to, as a matter of fact. Rock, I think we have that here, right? No? I thought we had that on the bot. Oh, 12 o'clock, okay. Yeah, I saw the shadow and I knew it was up, but I couldn't find exactly where. Oh, there it is. There it is. Now, you see the clouds going by, right? Look at that. Look at that. Hey, Turbo Life. Thank you very much for that Prime sub, man. I appreciate that. Yeah, gamer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. So, I'm actually gonna... Hold on. That's it. Nice. Okay. Haha. <laughs> nice. No flight plan, Vinyl. Because it's Celestial Navigation today. Hi, Vinyl. So all we're doing is we have a heading that we're holding. And then we're going to do Celestial Navigation. Alright. So. Let me get the app going. For Celestial Navigation. Cell Nav. Disconnected, and I'm going to show you what it looks like. Oh, nice. It's very simple. There it is. There it is. So you have a drop down here. You guys can't see it, but look, I can select different stars. See? Elnath, Formaholt, or Regal, or I can select, of course, the sun, right? Which we're going to use today. Or I can select one of the planets. Or I can select the moon. The moon is not up in the sky during the day right now. So we can't use this. Otherwise, we could use it during the day. So we're going to use the sun. We have an index error of minus five minutes. That's a refraction error from the cupola or cupola that we have 
to look through, right? There's a slight refraction error there. And so it's telling us that's going to be the correction which we're going to have to use. Ah, I'm behind you about 10 minutes. Oh, nice, Vino. Okay. Very good, man. Are you flying the DC-6 too? One does not simply math. I just did a full start of the A320 after not flying it for months. Good job, Luxionica. Nice job, dude. Coppola, yeah. Cool. As a matter of fact, look. There it is. Look at those clouds going by. I think that looks amazing. Doesn't that look cool? I mean, it looks cool, but it's going to get in the way for sure if it gets thicker than this. Yeah. Yeah, Lolilo, you do. You do. All right, guys. So, we're currently... Let me see here how many... We're currently 40 minutes into this flight, right? Um, normally, I do a shot every hour, so I do a, a shot an hour into the flight, which is going to be 22 minutes from now. Um... But I'm wondering if I'm going to extend that. I don't know that I can get it ready in 20 minutes. Maybe I can. Yeah, let's do it. All right, so I'm going to calculate a shot for the first hour. So for that, the first thing I need to do... First thing I need to do is put a waypoint in here. Hold on, do I have cell nav in here? No, but I have FCR. Okay, cool. Got it. So that was my top of climb. That really wasn't that because our climb was unusual, right? But nonetheless, I think that one hour into the flight, we're going to be... Uh, it was going to be about 252 miles, which is right about there. Right? Um, so this is my assumed position after one hour. And we're going to do a shot, and we're going to see if I am indeed close to that. But then I have to have further waypoints down here. We can do those later, right? But I'm going to put a waypoint every hour... So we're going to have about six waypoints on the way there. And those are going to be the waypoints where we do the shots and then compare that location to something. Okay, so let's do this. So, first things first, we have a form that we're going to fill out. Fill and sign, yes. Navigator, it's me today. Today is... Uh, 18, September 21. Fixed time. So that's what I have to figure out here. It's going to be an hour after I took a 40. There it is. Okay, so fixed time is at 10, 12, 13, 10. Ah, but that's the thing. Can I? Yeah, I could do that. That's fine, because I'm going to be using. Yeah, that's fine. Oh my god, it looks very simple. <laughs> uh, pick the best alcohol. <laughs> That's funny, dude. Mm. So, Joe, depends on how the airline worked. Some airlines... Some airlines would have a dedicated navigator. They would have a, a captain, a first officer, a flight engineer, the guy that sits in the middle here, and takes care of the engines, and a navigator. Some other airlines, one of the three, uh, captain, first officer, or the flight engineer would also be the navigator, so it depends. But he was never the captain. <laughs> yeah, cool, exactly, exactly. All right, so uh, let's see here. We're gonna be this first one. Looks like it's closest to 14 west and four north. So that's what I'm gonna do here. Uh, so it's 14 west. And for longitude... Oh, sorry. Yeah, never mind. I put it in the wrong one. You're right. And 4 north. So this is 4 north. And then 14 west. Oh my god. Don't know how I got that right. That wrong. Okay. Uh, my ground speed is expected to be... Uh, actually, hold on. Two forty. Two forty. 
And true air speed, also 240 for now. We don't have any wind, right? By the way, it's a... I mean, we're going to be flying for seven hours, right? How about we do one of these? Lower the engine sound a little bit. Increase the music volume a little bit. I think that'll be a bit better. Hey, Spitfire, how are you, man? And an astrophysicist. <laughs> 240. Okay, cool. So body is the sun. The sun. And now uh, we need a GHA for the sun. Basically, guys, all this is is we need to know the position over the Earth. Like where on the surface of the Earth is the sun exactly over right now. And I'm going to cheat. I'm going to cheat. Uh, I'm going to use a great website that has an almanac. So if I put in today's date, today is the 218th. Time is going to be 12. No, it's 1310. Remember the shot is at 1310. And I calculate, boom, it gives me the sun's GHA. And it looks like I'm going to have to round up. So it's going to be 19 degrees and zero minutes. That's awesome. That's unusual. Okay, so let's come over here. And we're going to put here... Uh, zero, one, eight. Or sorry, I should just put 18. Two, four, eight. Is that right? Yes, okay. Uh, oh no, it's 19. And zero minutes. Okay. Unusual. And now we need to fill out the rest here, and I only have 15 minutes. Well, I can do the shot and then do the calculation, so it's not a problem. I'm doing really well, Spitfire. Thank you for asking, buddy. That's why we all wore Swiss watches. Exactly. Exactly. Okay, and by the way, how did I learn to do this? Well... I follow this tutorial. This tutorial right here comes with the app. What app? Guys, get with the program. <laughs> Come on. The Selenav app, which you can get at uh, flightsim.to. Rock, can you have a look at the bot? I think we have a link to that. And I thought the command was Selenav, but maybe it isn't. Please. So, reading this will teach you how to do all, of, all the stuff that I'm doing. Alright? So, right now, look, we got the GAJ for the sun. We put it in there right um okay plus so the final gaj for us is going to be 19 0. 19 0. all right whoops then our longitude right assumed longitude is 14 west so we're just going to put that here Uh, actually, I'm going to do West 14, 248. That's better. That's better. Huh. Uh huh. Okay. So West means negative. Negative 14 and zero minutes. Okay. That means, oh, and the declination I'm going to get from the website here. So it's 0139. So declination is north 01, whoops, degrees 39, because I'm rounding, rounding down minutes. And now I don't need this website anymore. Okay. Uh, so LAJ, what you're going to do here is the LAJ, right, is going to be this. So, you can read through here. I'm not doing a good job explaining this, am I? Hold on one second. Well, I think Rock is on it. I don't know if he's here now, though. Let me see, let me see. Okay, hold on. Page two, maybe. More convenient than GPS, yeah, for sure, right? For sure. Hmm. 
Odd. Give me one second. Cell nav at, at. So let me see if this worked. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's what I thought, but I didn't find it. Just wait until the poles flip. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, that's so true. So where did it go? Oh good, I can order it. There it is. Alright, try it now guys. Exclamation mark cell nav. Yeah, sorry, it took, took me too long, but maybe other people can benefit from that. There it is, guys. There it is. Okay. Okay. So, uh... Hold on a second. That's not right. That's not right at all. Okay, I'll fix it. Ten... Will be... So, twenty. Okay, okay. So, the shot... The shot's not going to be at 1310. The shot's going to be at 1250. Shot's going to be at 1250. Therefore, we need to fix this. 1250. Calculate. Okay, there we go. So now, let's see. Instead of 19. Um, ooh, this time I have to round down, so it's 1359, not 14. Ah, that sucks. 13. 59. 59. Minus 14, so I have to do 14, 59. There we go. And that means the LAJ, now I can... Uh, subtract these, right? So, back to this. So, now what we do is... Let's see. Where does it talk about it? Here? Or here? Yeah, here we go. Okay. It's 51 minus that. Yeah, right. So, it's basically the GHA minus our latitude here. I don't use positive degrees to correct for minus 50. Those minus 50 equals to... Okay, right. So, this minus this is going to be minus 1. But minus 1, really, is 359 degrees. That's our LHA for today, I believe. Maddie, yeah, are you in the clouds? Okay, so once you get your LHA, yep. Oh, it also means that uh, I have to change. So this waypoint here. Waypoint 1 is just my estimated time at an hour, right? Which is going to be in 8 minutes here. So I got to start the shot soon. But... Um... Ah, man. I think I didn't sleep enough. I'm getting slow in my train of thought. Getting slow in my train of thought. No clear skies, no ice. Maddie, what altitude are you at? 
I'm gonna have to move this to... Or, sorry, not this. I'm gonna have to create a waypoint here that's at uh, North 4 and 1459 West because that's gonna be my assumed position. Right? You see what I'm saying? So let's create user waypoint, add user waypoint here. It's going to be 400, zero, zero, 1459, 0. There we go. And we're going to make this a waypoint. And OK. All right. So that's actually my assumed position that I'm using for the calculation. And we're going to do the offset from this position here. OK. Cool. So I got my LHA, right? Coming up on the shot here. We got seven minutes to go. Okay, calculated that. So now we need the left section, right? So for the left section here, this part here, uh, we need to figure out, let's see. Right, I think he talks about it here. Yeah, true azimuth. Okay, so now we're going to use publication 249. Got it. To get the true azimuth. True direction from your assumed position to the sun. Find this value. You consult yet another book. Yep. Okay. But it doesn't talk about how to get it, right? Does it? Sassen. That's awesome. Hey, Rabble. What's going on, man? Hello. Flight's going really well so far, but we haven't done any of the celestial navigation. We're about to do it now, so we'll see. Hey, Sauer, how's it going? Nights, I did not. Thank you, I totally forgot about that. Let's do that now. I'm gonna keep the pumps on. Low for the mains. Pumps go low. For the alternates. And we're gonna do one engine at a time to make sure we're not gonna lose any. Good. Give it a few seconds. Okay. Engine number four. Okay. Engine number two. And engine number three. And now I'm gonna set a different timer up because I'm gonna I'm consuming about 550 pounds an hour, right? And I have 1,500 pounds of these tanks, so it's gonna take about three hours. So I'm gonna set a timer for two and a half hours to come back and look at this. Actually, two hours and 40. Let's do two hours and 40. Got it. Shot is coming up. Hey, sounds good, Steve. Take care, buddy. Thanks for being here. Have a good uh, grocery shop, a good trip to the grocery store. Sion Hat Platenkanen. What's going on, man? Good to see you. Declination of storm is compared with geographic latitude projected onto the celestial sphere. Uh, and our angle is likewise compared to the longitude. Yeah. Yep. Declination is basically... Well, I'm not going to get into that. Martel, what's going on, man? So basically, if you project the longitude on the sky, you get the hour angle. Uh, yeah, and the latitude is the declination. There you go. Right. Right. So, as a matter of fact, look, I think... I think this uh, document has a good depiction of it. Yeah. Well, do they have one just for the sun? Here we go. Here we go. Right, so look. This point here is the point on the Earth where the sun, if you were to stand on that point and look straight up 90 degrees, boom, the sun is above you. Anywhere else on the Earth, the sun wouldn't be above you, right? That's what we call the sun GHA. And he has a longitude that's called the GHA, the Greenwich Hour Angle. It's a longitude for it. And the latitude, and we call that the declination. So, yes. Rod Dobson, what's going on, buddy? Ah, yes, a little surprise. <laughs> hey, Rod Dobson, how are you, bud? All right, guys, we got to get ready for the shot here. Uh, the shot takes two minutes, so if we want to do the shot at exactly 1250 Zulu, which we do, then we're going to have to start it 
at 12.49 and the shuttle will land at 12.51 because you got to average it. So, so, what we're going to do is look at our little awesome little clock here. There we go. And get ready for that 12.50 shot. That's awesome. Local time and Zulu time are the same around here. <laughs> Been a great week, man. So tired, long week, but very satisfying. All right. Take the life goal off the list. What's the life goal, dude? What'd you do? Hey, Super Typhoon. What's going on, man? Oh, Rodopsin. I'm curious now, man. I'm curious now. All right. Coming up to the shot, I still have a couple of minutes, so I'm going to go figure out this ZN here. All right. Let's look at... Uh, this is publication 249 that we're going to look at. And it does have some tables. It, and by the way, they explain a lot of stuff early on, which is really nice. Right? Not the easiest thing to, to get, to, to, to get, but it is really nice. Okay, correction for... Okay. Correction. GHA for the sun, and this is for any time of the year. There is a sun almanac, but you can also do it with this. Right? Okay, correction. Then there's refraction, Coriolis, which we're going to have to do. Okay. All right, here we go. 30 seconds before we start the shot. Let me get it up here. There we go. Sun is set. Yes. All right, here we go. Fifteen seconds, and then Rodops, and I'll read your. Uh, I'll read your answer. Okay, here we go. All right, and now you hear the sound. We're gonna hear it for two minutes, and that's gonna be our reading. In the meantime, let me see what Rodops and checked off. The point above you is called the Zenith. Yes, thanks, Goblin. Thanks. I got back to work, uh, which this week involved filming someone who was in Star Wars and worked with Kubrick. I think I can die now. No way, dude. No way, dude. Wow, man. That's pretty awesome. Were they cool? Were they nice? And uh, are we talking behind the scenes? Are we talking actors? All right, so let's start looking. Our declination for the sun today is very small. 0139 is our declination, right? Um, notice we only have uh, full degrees here, so we have to interpolate, right? But uh, we need to find the right latitude chart first. So our assumed latitude is 4 north, so let's find 4 north. 4, okay. Now, the other thing you need to figure out is if you're in the same name as latitude, or if you're in the contrary name to latitude, that means where you are. Are you... So the sun is on the north side of the hemisphere. Are you north or south? Well, for now, we're north still. Right? And the sun is on the north. So, there it is. 86 degrees, 35 minutes. So we got a reading. And now that's the reading we got to plug in and then go to little nav map and figure out if we can find where we are, where we think we are. Okay, so I'm in the same name as latitude. Latitude is four. Now I have to find the declination, right? And my LHA here. Okay, latitude three, latitude four. Okay, so uh, my LHA is 359. Oops. 
that doesn't exist here. Because, look, LAJ greater than 180 and LAJ less than 180. So do I use one? Hold on a second. Look, when they talk about LAJ here, right? Oh, it's actually... Here we go. Here we go. Yeah, Crumb. I think it was. One less. Here we go. In this table, we search for the full degree LAJ, which we calculated previously as 310. In their case, it was 310. In ours, it's 359. However, the tables only give values for full degrees. Right. Our declination is... Right, but how do you look up a an LAJ that high? Oh, LAJ on the right side. Look at that. Oh, why Why am I showing the chart like that? I should show it like this. Guys, check this out. LAJ on the right here. So, I was right. 359 is the same as 1. Okay, cool. So, the line... Let's comment on this. The line that we need to look at, then... Is this. Let's do thickness 1. Right there. That's the line. Okay. I'm going to zoom in a little bit and we're going to be on the upper right. So I'm going to have to do some movement here in OBS. But that's okay. Oh no, it worked. Okay, perfect. So. We are between uh, our... Sorry, declination is between 1 and 2. It's 139, which... Really, we can say it's 140 for this purpose. Why? Because in interpolating between 1 and 2, if you think about it, 1 degree and 40 seconds, 40 seconds is two-thirds of the way to 60. Right? Think about it this way. 1 degree, these are the results. 2 degrees, these are the results. If you had 1 degree and 30 seconds, or sorry, 30 minutes, I keep saying seconds, 30 minutes, 1 degree and 30 minutes is exactly in between 1 degree and 2 degrees. Right? Because... 30 minutes is half of an hour, and one hour in in latitude longitude is a degree. See what I'm saying? Godan, don't be afraid, dude. Don't be afraid. It all makes sense. So one degree and 40 seconds is like 1.75 degrees. So I'm three. Sorry, 1.66 degrees. Right? So I'm two thirds of the way between one and two. So my result has to be two-thirds interpolated between these two. Does that make sense? So, I have a HC, I have D, and I have Z. And I'm going to interpolate it in my head. I'm getting flashbacks. Hey, yeah, Muse. It's a, uh, doing really well. First of all, welcome in, Muse. Hi, sorry. I was in the middle of a thought. Hi, Muse. Welcome in. Great to see you. Flight's going really well. It's super exciting. And yeah, man. Yes. <laughs> Rod Dobson. So look, at 1 degree, my HC would be 86 degrees 50 minutes. At 2 degrees, it would be 87 degrees 46 minutes. So now I have to find the two-thirds way between this and that, right? You can tell it's almost, almost one full degree, right? 8650 to 8750 would be one degree. If it was a full degree, two-thirds of the way would be 40, 40 minutes. Because it's not exactly that, I'm going to do 39 minutes, kind of adapting here on the fly. So it's 39 minutes more than this. So it's 87, 29. Okay, my HC is 87 degrees, 29 minutes. All right, my D then is going to be from 56 to 49. I'm dropping 7 here. Two-thirds of 7 is about 2, right? So I'm going to say it's 54. D is 54. Z is going to be from 162 to 153. That's 9. That's easy. Two-thirds of that is 6. Right? So it's going to be 156. Oh, hold on a second. I did the D wrong. It's not 54. It's 51. Because it's 2, but it's closer to 2. 
then one. Got it. All right. Got an HC, got a D, got a Z. Once you have those, right, we can start putting it in here. Okay? So, let's see what they say here. Find the LHA. Hey, Cobra! Thank you very much, dude. Giving out a tier 1 sub to Lucas. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. Thank you. I appreciate that. Crumb. That is what I'm looking for right now. That's what I'm looking for right now. So, check this out. Uh, okay, they're looking at... You know, they found the value. They're interpolating here. They're talking about that. The value for Z is azimuth and is the direction from the AP to the body measured. Potentially, this value requires a correction. See the green box on the top left of the same page in publication 249. It indicates that a north, at north latitude of the AP, which is us, if LAJ is greater than 180, which ours is, then ZN equals Z. In our case, then true azimuth is the same as the azimuth Z or 073. So, you look up here and you say north latitudes LAJ greater than 180, ours is ZN equals Z. So our Z really is 156. See what I mean? All right, so ZN, oh, but that's Z. ZN then is different, isn't it? Oh no, that's what we just figured out, Jesus. 156, okay, cool, got that. Now, uh, what else do we do here? So after that, so let's see. HC. Oh, they haven't interpolated. Okay, so they got an HC here, which they're going to put in HA. So we're going to put our HC in HA. 8729. Eighty-seven degrees, twenty-nine minutes, right? Hey, flying doctor. Oh, sounds good, man. Sounds good. All right, Sion, sounds good. Figured this all out in the first place. They must have had headaches, huge ones. <laughs> Deep, I don't know. Are you talking about ATC? And are you seeing them live right now? Because if you're talking about Shen Control, I just looked in Volanta. And yes, look, Dublin, which is right here, has approach, right? But Dublin is inside Shannon. So yes. All right. What else, guys? Well, we got a fill this out, right? So, we've got our HC in there. Great. Um, and grid ZN. Okay. Wait a second. Right. So, they got that. ZN minus TR. I don't remember that part. ZN minus TR. Can you confirm the math for Z? Timalays, you mean can I explain how I got it? And in the meantime, uh, here we go. ZN minus TR. Uh, the TR we already entered top right. Ah, right. Is our track. Okay. Okay. So ZN 156 minus our track, our track today, and this has to be in true, right? Was 245. I didn't I didn't put that in here. 245 and because we don't have any wind correction, 245 also on Oh, I see you guys don't see the whole thing, huh? What? Oh, because I'm doing this and not this. There we go. Is that better? 245 and the altitude is 14,000 fly level 140. I think it should be 159. Okay. No, redo. Okay. Let's have a look. So, when we go into the tables here. Okay. 
And you think it should be... 159, got it. So, at one minute, four, or sorry, one degree, 40 minutes, we are closer to two than we are one, right? One degree, 30 minutes would be exactly in the middle. One degree, 40 minutes is closer to two. So it has to be closer to 153 than 162, right? Right in between, what do we have here? We have 162 minus 153, that's nine, right? So four and a half. So right in between would be 157 and a half. So it has to be less than 157 and a half because it has to be closer to 153. So if it's two thirds of the way, that's two thirds of 96. We'd have to move six less than 162, which is 156. Timolais, let's stop here. Make sure that it made sense for you. Ah, uh, Martel, I love it, man. I love it. Hey, Joe Wertz, was scheduled to be on... Oh, on a DC-3 today, but pilots got sick. No. Uh, plan B. Okay, well, I'm happy... I'm happy to be able to do a little bit of that for you. Oh, man. Oh, man. By the way, no icing, right? No, I always look at the spinner. The spinner usually picks up icing pretty quickly. Uh, Joe, that sucks. Yeah, are you going to reschedule? Uh, cancel. Pending weather, might reschedule. Okay, they don't fly during winter. Yeah. Okay, Joe, that's amazing, Joe. Oh, dude. What an experience that's going to be, huh? Yeah, fingers crossed. Okay. Team Alaze. Okay, I went two-thirds from 153. Right, so we got it. Okay, good. Good. Thanks, Team Alaze. Appreciate that. Always good to check. Now we need to do ZN minus TR, right? Our TR is up here. Track. True. Sorry, true is 245. Um, and then that means... Okay, so ZN minus TR is 076. Okay, minus 163. Add 360 degrees, right? Because you can't have a negative heading. And it will give you 197. This is another place where it's easy to make mistakes. Double check. Okay, got it. So let's do it. ZN minus TR 156 minus 245. 156 minus 245 minus 89. So we're going to add 360 to that. It's going to be like 271. Yeah, 271. ZN minus TR 271. Got it. Was planning on uh, posting to Discord, so yeah, photos incoming. That's awesome, dude. Yeah, can't wait to see that. Joe, whereabouts, if you don't mind sharing, where are you going to fly that? I don't think you use ZN minus CR for a simple sunshot. I think you use ZN for your nav map plot. I think so, Crumb. I think so, but I'm filling out because they did, so I'm not really sure if I'm going to use that or not. Next, we need to make two corrections related to motion of body and motion of the observer. Right. This is only required if shot time is not identical to the fixed time, thanks to the assumed four minutes interval. Um... Okay. So we can skip these corrections for this shot, right? For this shot, we can. Uh, cells for a minute of okay, are also associated with the same correction, so we don't need... Next is Coriolis. We do need Coriolis. And Coriolis, if I go back to full page here, is going to be one of these tables at the beginning of the book. Whoops. Right here. Coriolis correction. One less. I'm just trying to make it. Yeah, I know it's cropping the top there, but you guys can still see it, I think, right? So, let me show you the whole table. There it is. You guys can see that. All right, so depending on the latitude, our latitude is definitely low, right? Between 0 and 10. And our ground speed is 250. So, we're closer to 0 than we are 10 right now. So, our Coriolis correction is 0. Basically, this close to the equator, you don't have to worry about Coriolis. The higher latitudes you go, the more Coriolis effect you have. And, of course, the faster you fly, the more Coriolis, too. Makes sense, right? Ah, in Finland. Nice. Hey, who operates that DC-3? Whose DC-3 is it? I'd love to know that. So, Coriolis correction. Zero. Uh, which that goes... I forget where that goes. Ah, got it. Coriolis right here. Zero. Nautical miles, so we don't have to worry about that. Okay. 
Right. Back on the left, the subsequent cells for Wandering Just Chase are also skipped. Okay. Wandering Ground School Chase. Okay. So we've done all this. We skipped that. We have to do Refraction. Refraction. Refraction is minus five minutes according to our app. Right? Remember the little app here? Yeah, that minus five is the index error there. That's what we need for Refraction. Minus five minutes. Okay. So let's see. Mm-hmm. Ah, no, 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 no. Dome personal. That's the one that I need to find. Refraction, I have a table. Got it. Got it. So this minus five, really, isn't here, it's here. Minus five minutes, got it. Refraction, we're gonna use a table right here. Okay, so, height above sea level in thousands of feet. We're at 14, so pretty close to 15, right? Um, then we have RO, and by the way, um, No, I don't remember. Here we go. In our case, 15,000. Okay. And with the sun at 42 degrees, it should be very small. We use table 6 and find a value of 1 because our 42 degrees is between 22 and 55 and enter that on our form. Right, but what's the R0 here? I forget what this is. Uh, now operated by DC Association Finland, former Aero, now Finn Airplane. Huh. Crump, thanks, man. I I didn't see your message in time. I figured it out, but thanks for saying that. Oh, I see. I got gotcha. you. I mean, the factory you're looking for is refraction, so that's really our old times F, so you need a little F here, right? But that's okay. All right, so... Um, hold on, I'm still not understanding this table. It's between 22 and 55. Ah, got it. The sextant altitude here. That's why he narrowed down. So his altitude is 15, but then the sextant altitude is what he entered here between 22 and 55. Okay, so I think in that case, same for us, right? 15,000 feet. We're not between 22, though. We're here. I'm confused. Is this altitude my... In degrees. Yeah, okay, so it is, like, close to the equator here, right? So it would be down here. So I would be like my between four and three right now. Where exactly am I? Hold on. For this first waypoint. Between four and five. Between four and five. Expected sun angle. Wait, so what is... So what I enter here is what the sun declination is? Is that what you're talking about, Crumb? I'm super confused now. This F15 just resubscribed for four months. Jesus! What you're doing for the aviation community. Thanks, buddy. As always, enjoy watching your streams. Have a great weekend. Thanks, Jesus. Appreciate that. Ah, so this is HC then. I gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With the sun at 42. Okay, okay. Man, they don't explain that very well here, or I'm just a little dense. Got it. So we're up here. I got it. This makes perfect sense. Okay, I just connected the dots. Oh my god, how did I not... I just connected the dots. Guys. Cool. Think about this. Man, I just had a... I just had an Eureka moment. This is amazing. Think about this. Why are we correcting for refraction? Who is causing refraction? Haha, <laughs> Crumb. Thanks, buddy. Hmm. Thank you, Joe. 
The atmosphere, exactly. Exactly. So let's make sure this makes sense. How much atmosphere am I going through when I look straight up versus when the sun is almost setting on the horizon or rising? So when I'm looking at a sunrise sunset, am I going through more atmosphere or less than when I'm looking straight up? Think about it. Way more, way more, right? Way more when you're looking at a sunset or a sunrise. So when the sun angle is low, you have a lot more refraction from the atmosphere than when the sun is above you, right? Guys, Eureka, when the sun is 90 degrees above you, there is no refraction correction. Don't have to worry about it. The lower the sun gets, which means lower in this table. Look, these, these numbers right here, the 90, 51, 22, that's how many degrees above the horizon the sun is. At 90 degrees, there is no correction. When you get close to the horizon, you have crazy corrections, right? Because now you have a lot of distortion, a lot of distortion. Oh, that's fantastic. I just understood a table that I'd never understood before. Yeah, sorry, exactly. Right, Cold Nebo. So, at noon, at 90 degrees, the sun will be, well, only on the equator the sun is 90 degrees up at noon. You know what I'm talking about. But close to noon, or close to 90 degrees, yeah, you have no refraction. Every day is a learning day. I love it, Storm. Exactly, Rodops, and I, ah, oh, I, ah, oh, man, I love these moments. I love these moments. Let's see, Subsonic. Oh, there you are, buddy, with the TBM. Nice. By the way, lots of weather today, huh? Lots of weather under us. Uh, we haven't done this in a while, right? Let's check everything. Let's check how we're doing. So, cylinder head temperatures are good. Carb heat, uh, or sorry, carb air, fine. Oil temperature is good. Oil pressure is good. Fuel pressure is good. How are we doing here? 142 is where we're aiming for. We're still there on the BMEP. That's about just over 33 inches. We got 2190 RPM. Temperature outside is about zero. It's about freezing. And we still have about 520, 540 pounds per hour on our engines. We're still doing a heading of 255 because we haven't corrected yet. After this shot, we'll have a correction. Or after this calculation. Ah, Sanjay! Hey, I struggle with this too, man. I hope you see that this is not easy for me. I hope you see that too. Right? Just follow the part shot at Zurich. It was a lot of fun. That's awesome, Lixionica. Happy for you, man. Nice, Subsonic. Yeah, me too. Look, I still got some coffee here. Ah, man. Hey, how do we discover coffee? Because, I mean, you gotta brew it, right? It's kind of the same to me. as like, who ate the first... Like, how hungry was the first person to eat a lobster? Because, I mean, think about it. You look at a lobster, you know, lobster nowadays, oh, very expensive, it's fancy, uh, yeah. Back in the day, it looks like a freaking alien coming out of the ocean, right? It's like, who looks at that and goes, oh, I, I wonder if that's tasty. Meaning, you gotta be, yeah, ninja, but I think you have to be so hungry to look at a spider alien looking bug, sea bug, and be like, I, I want to eat that. <laughs> awesome, Sonic, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about, guys? And don't get me wrong, lobster tastes amazing, but how? You don't know that until you try. And I don't know about you guys, I don't look at a spider spider and be like, wow, I, want, I wonder what that tastes That looks tasty. I wonder what that tastes like. I don't do that. So that person was probably really hungry, right? And so I wonder about coffee, too. It's like, how did we discover coffee? How did somebody go, wait a second, I'm going to take this little fruit, this bean from this tree, and then I'm going to dry it in the sun a bunch. Then I'm going to roast it with some fire that we just discovered. And then I'm going to grind it. And after I grind it, I'm going to run boiling water through it. And then I get a good beverage out of it. It's like, dude, how? How? How do we get there? Fur day, is that true? Pates, absolute. That's what I'm saying. Can you imagine how hungry that person was, right? That they looked at a lobster like that's what I'm eating. Is it a is it a, is it an animal? Yeah, then I'm eating it. <laughs> Boredom. 
Yeah, Ewald, I think it was by accident. Like beer, like most things. But but there's so many steps in the process of making coffee that it's it's very unlikely that all of them happen by mistake, by accident, right? Think about it. Was fed to prisoners and used as fertilizer. Holy moly. They transported milk in a cow stomach. Right. Became cheese. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Isn't that insane, Dieter? Because we need the... Uh, what's the name of the, the liquid that you use to make cheese that comes from cows? Did you know this? Guys, I, uh, this, I love this stream because we get to talk about so much different stuff. And I know I have to finish the calculation. I know. Rennet. That's it. Did you know... Okay, raise your hand if you didn't know. Do you know that to make cheese, we have to use a liquid that comes from the stomach of a cow? Who did not know that? Raise your hand. Number one. Number one in chat, if you don't know that. Because I gotta be honest, I only learned that about a year ago. Only about a year ago. Right? Without cows, there is no cheese. And you're like, yeah, they make milk. No. They make the milk, then you need the rennet, which by the way, you can go buy on Amazon, but you need that liquid to make, to transform the milk into cheese. Like what? Yeah, cold nibble, exactly. <laughs> Pete. I just find that fascinating. Wait a second, my plane is turning. Why is my plane turning? What's happening? What? Why? My heading isn't changing. Yes, it is. Oh my god. Oh my god. My card just failed. My card just failed. Okay, hold on. Get this guy out. No, engines are fine. No, I had a I had a failure, I think. I think I had a failure of an inverter, perhaps, but I think it's actually a failure of my card right here. This card, the directional gyro is not working. Holy crap. Okay, hold on. Let's use my magnetic compass and get back on heading. First things first, back on heading. Oh my god, Mort, can you imagine? Can you imagine? I don't know if Rob is watching or not, but he... If any PMDG person is watching this right now, they're like, ha, 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 ha. Or like uh, Nelson, right? No, not Nelson. What's the guy from Simpsons? He goes, <laughs> as if it wasn't hard enough. Exactly, Storm. But this sucks because what this means is no more autopilot. No more autopilot, guys, would be less than ideal. Less than ideal. Oh, crap. First of all, let's get back on heading. We need to finish our position calculation, and then... But I want to look at circuit breakers. Maybe, hey, listen, maybe we're fine. Maybe it was just a circuit breaker. Maybe it was just a circuit breaker. Right. Let's go look. Okay, from the top. Okay. These are supposed to be down. These are supposed to be down. Up. One, two, three, four. Oh, boy. Well, that's not good news. That is not good news. Um, so... <laughs> Howie, what? Yes, I know, right? Okay, so we got a bit of a problem here. Bit of a problem. Crap. Crap. Milk is fine. Cheese is the gross thing. Have to head out. All right, Muse. Take care, buddy. Thanks for stopping by, by the way. All right. Sounds good. I hope you are back. Sounds good. Take care. All right. We're back on heading. Uh, it looks like she's turning left a little bit, so I'm going to do a tiny bit of aileron trim to the right. And see if that helps. And that was already too much. Hold on. There we go. Ooh. Let's try this much. 
That's close enough. Holy crap. Who can figure this one out? Well, Storm. If it's not a circuit breaker... Now, here's what I can do. I actually... No, I have not lost autopilot. Here's what I can do. I can correct this guy. No, no, I can't. I can't use autopilot. He's gonna drift. No. Well, no, I can. I can. I'm gonna use it in... Yeah, it's no longer slaved. I think I think I got this. I think I got this. 251 or 252. Oh, it's not moving. Oh, crap. Okay, no autopilot. Damn it, it's broken. It's definitely broken. One more click on the aileron. Back to the heading. Hold on, cold. I'm gonna get the checklist out. Good, good. By the way, good call. Saying we should get the checklist out. There's 255. All right. Let's see if there's a checklist for it. Emergency procedures. There we go. All right. <laughs> Citizen, what's going on, man? Oh, boy. Oh, yeah, knights. No, for sure. It's definitely the plane. Hold on. She's turning right. Okay. Okay. So, uh, general propeller, feathering, feathering. Okay. Planning gear, nose wheel gear, planning hydraulic air brake, malfunction in it. Oh, I just remember one thing I have to do. It's nothing to do with this, but I do have to put the right side, right instruments and engine instruments need to go to, once you get to cruise, they need to go to the upper uh, inverter. Okay. Yeah, I don't think we're going to have something for this, but let's see. Ooh, ask you. You gotta do the, uh, you gotta refuel in the air using this guy right here, buddy. Sorry. Sorry. Alright. Ah, she's turning again. I can't get the aileron trim to be enough. It's either too much or too little. What's the heading? Back to 255. No, the card's not spinning, Crumb. It's stuck. And here's how I know it's stuck, Krum. I'm going to show you how I know. Look. When I take it out of uh, Slaved into Directional Gyro, then it should be by itself and I should be able to turn it, right? And look at this. It's not turning at all. Nah, it's a failure, man. No, no, it's not. No, there's an electrical failure. Look at this. I have an electrical failure. I have an electrical failure. Okay. Okay. First things first. <gasps> I just realized what happened. I just realized what happened. Indeed. 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 Hey, see you later. What's going on? Nope. Like an idiot. I didn't use a checklist, right? Right. Hey. All four generators are making good power. Right? Right. Yeah. So it'd be nice if we turned them on and let them power the aircraft, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it? Um. All right. All right.
Could have been worse, yes. And it's the first time I make this mistake. So the battery ran out. The battery lasted. Man, the battery lasted an insane amount of time. Because it just stopped, right? The battery lasted like an hour and a half, guys. That's insane. By the way, it's almost time for the second shot. I'm not going to do a second shot at an hour. We're just going to do what we can. Yeah, Joe, exactly. Exactly. All right, so let's get back on a heading of 255 now. Okay. Jesus. Jesus. Interesting, right? How I identified that problem by first seeing that the card... Hey, the card isn't working. What's going on? And then eventually we got to... Oh, I forgot to turn on the generators. And that led to... Oh, I'm a freaking idiot. Which, you know, par for the course, right? <laughs> MS Air. Nice, nice. Thank you. So pardon that I am new here. Oh, Klaxius. Never mind. Don't, not a problem. Why are we flying the DC-6 from Africa to Texas? Great question, Claxius. Great question. The reason for that is because I uh, I talked about this at the beginning. I'm not, I'm not saying like, oh, you should have been here at the beginning. No, no, no. I talked about this at the beginning. So pardon me for explaining again for the people that have been here, right? Um, the last DC-6 to be built currently is in Namibia, right? It's where it ended its life. It's not flying anymore. It's sitting there. And there's a gentleman in Texas that has been making moves to purchase that DC-6 and bring it back to the United States. Originally, the community started an effort to try and help this gentleman in San Antonio, Texas, and we decided to do a flight in the sim flying the DC-6 from Namibia to San Antonio, Texas and uh, to raise money for, for the effort. It turns out that we ended up not being linked with the gentleman in Texas, but we were already rolling on this, so we decided to continue the effort and just have a fun flight from Namibia to Texas. It's also a relay flight. So a bunch of streamers are doing this, uh, not just me. I just happen to have leg, I think it's leg six, uh, but I'm going to show you what the timetable looks like, uh, and it looks like this. So, the flight actually started yesterday, whoops, too much, <laughs> started yesterday, two-tone Murphy fluid from its current place in Namibia, and we're bringing it up, I'll show you the, I'll show you the, um, actually, let me show you the flight plan right now. Look at that. So that's the plan, Plaxias, is we're going to fly it from Windhoek, uh, no, Walvis Bay in Namibia, up Africa, right, all the way to Monrovia, where I took off from. So Forder learned to fly another Twitch streamer. So it's a bunch of Twitch streamers doing this. Flew the aircraft into Monrovia. I picked it up from him early this morning, and I'm flying it to Natal, where, where Bement, another Twitch streamer, is going to take the aircraft. And then I was showing you then all the, uh, the streamers. So um, here's us. Doing the flight to Natal, then it's B-Mint, then flight, flight with Joel. Uh, and then tomorrow, Captain Arash. But by the way, this is real time, so it doesn't stop, right? These are just when the date changes. Captain Arash takes over, Colonel Fork, Allison Johnson, Forder again, 757 Spy, B-Mint, Two-Tone, and then Two Cats brings it home for the last leg of this incredible, incredible flight to San Antonio. Claxis, I hope that explains it. Well, that does explain it, but I hope it answers your questions. Let me know if you have any other questions. Yeah, it is a cool project, isn't it? Mmm. Vet owned restaurant. Ah, in an hour to celebrate. Nice, Howie. I'll have to catch up on the stream later. Sounds good, buddy. I'll be here. Interesting stream to miss, but I'll watch the VOD. Okay. Have a celestial day. Nice. Enjoy your lunch, Howie. That's going to be awesome. Jealous of your beard. Had to remove mine to comply with PPE requirements. Personal protection equipment requirements. Treating COVID patients. Chroma. It's Chromagnon. I get it. But Chroma. Um, buddy. Thanks for what you're doing. Yeah, and it sucks that you can't have a beard right now. But hey. Safety first, right? Has this changed your viewpoint on using checklists in the DC-6? Not a bit, Mort. Not a bit. It does push me to study more and practice more. 
And of course, normal operations are with a checklist. Like in the real world, I never fly without a checklist. The reason I do that here, I want to make it clear. The reason I do that here is to push myself to learn the aircraft so well that these things are second nature to me. You know what I mean? That's why I say this, this hasn't pushed me closer. This actually pushes me to not use the checklist more and continue to learn the aircraft so I can fly her without the checklist. When you can fly her without the checklist, then you're going to still use the checklist, right? But then your understanding of the aircraft, not comparable with always using the checklist. Eaton and Plowman's lunch. I've had a trucker's lunch, so what would a pilot's lunch be? Ha <laughs> ha, Well, it has to be different than the other pilot. That's one rule that we have in the cockpit. Pilots have to eat different food so that if one of the whatever, you know, because it's usually like in an airline, it's like, well, do you want the fish or the chicken or the beef or the pasta? It's one of those four. Well, if the pasta is bad and it's going to make people sick, we don't want all pilots to eat the pasta and get sick, right? So we have to eat something different. Yeah, exactly, Cold. Exactly. Kaharia, uh, I brought my mom... Uh, home and she was whoa he showed the plane oh tell him I was so happy my mom is 78 that's awesome Kaharia so glad so oh what a cool what a cool thing this is right <laughs> all right should we finish the navigation then now that we got the plane back on course all right so Yeah, Sion, I love it. I love it. All right. So, guys, we were filling out this form to finish up our discovery of where we are, right? So, let's see. Uh, we've done that. So, our refraction was zero because we're so... The sun is basically straight up. All right. Cool. Got that. Got that. That completes the mid-left sa side. Okay. Uh, does it, though? Because they had more stuff, didn't they? Ah, miss... Ah, okay. This total then goes into this total adjustment. Got it, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Okay, so my total then is going to be minus five minutes, which is then going to go into total adjustments here. Minus five minutes and minus five minutes. Oops. Got it. And that is the total adjustment that's going to go over here into minus five minutes got it all right yeah you will exactly hey, hey nico is here hey nico how's it going buddy good morning to you sir uh nico doing celestial navigation dude we are flying the dc6 on this leg right here between uh monrovia liberia and natal brazil it's a seven hour flight and we have to do celestial navigation because we don't have a GPS, right? And this is a stream, it's a community effort, Nico. We're doing a, a bunch of different streamers are taking the DC-6, the last DC-6 built, the one that PMDG modeled this DC-6 on, right? Which by the way, is this guy right here with the Namibian colors. So this plane is sitting in Namibia right now. We're bringing it back home, back to the United States. And I got a bunch of people flying with me, which is always awesome. But I'm doing this leg right here. And because I'm doing this leg, I'm working on Celestial Navigation. So there we go. Yeah, Kona. Good lesson learned. <clears throat> Alright, so. What else? What's next? Alright, so mid-right section. So we got the total adjustment. We got the HA, right? The HC is what we measured. Oh, no, sorry. The HO is what we measured. The HC is the HA plus the adjustment or minus the adjustment. So let's do that. So HC is going to be 87 degrees, 24 minutes, right? And then the HO is what we observed. And that's from the app. And that was 86.35. 86. 86 86 degrees 35 minutes okay now we're almost there now what we do right right 
Now I have to do it's HO minus HC, I think it is. Let me see. It's in here somewhere. Okay, right. Is it after that he talks about that? I think it is. Yeah, it is. Okay. Okay, got it. All right. There we go. Don't need time offset corrections. Okay, cool. So. Here we go. Here we go. Yes, so it's HC, or sorry, HO minus HC, and if it's negative, it's away, if it's positive, it's two. I think that's what it is. Krom, are you here, buddy? Does that make sense? HO minus HC? HO minus HC, if it's negative, it's away. Okay, so it is definitely going to be negative, right, because HC is bigger. But by how much? Well, how many minutes do you have? Yeah, okay. Thank you, Krom. So, okay, thank you. So, oh, Celestial Navigator is here. Hey, buddy, how's it going? Ah, dude, it's only my second trip, and I'm really like, oh, man, I'm, ru I'm rusty. I'm rusty. Okay, so 86.35 to get to 87.24. You need 25 minutes to get to 87, and then 24 minutes, right? So 49 minutes, yeah? So it's away, 49 minutes. So zero degrees, 40, did I say 49 minutes? Which is 49 miles. So now, we take the ZN. We go to Little Nav Map. We draw from there. And we're going to find our estimated position. All right. Let's do this. Let's do this. Okay. So our estimated position was here. Sorry. Assumed position was here. Right? Uh, 4 degrees north. And it was 14 west, 59. 14 degrees, 59 minutes west. From here, we're going to go on a 156 away so this way for 49 miles oh so i think i'm further than i expected to be by a lot let's see let's see 156 for 49 measure distance uh 156 away 36 or sorry 180 from that is 236 so 236 49 236 49 Whoops. There we go. And now from here, from here, we're going to draw. I'm Russian. What do you mean, Dalmatian? I don't get that. Okay. So now, looking at this real quick. So we got our assumed position. We drew this, right? Towards, okay. Oh. No, we don't have to do this. Okay, there we go. We were away from the sun, right? Ours is away from the sun. Now we're going to draw a 90 degree, a, a line of position. And we're somewhere on this line. So what we're going to do here is this. Here, I'm going to draw a line. right from here and it's gonna be 90 degrees so it has to be 326 there we go and i need uh let's see here i gotta look at my options and see what kind of range rings i have currently 24 which is correct it's about 10 yeah so that's good so what i'm gonna do now is i'm gonna draw on my waypoint one here that I expected to be at, right? I'm going to draw a range ring. There we go. And now I need a measured distance from here to there at 90 degrees. It's actually going to be on this side then. All right, right about there. That right there is my assumed position. Okay, I'm going to create a waypoint here. Assumed position at 12.50 Zulu. And we're going to make it 
a different uh, symbol here. What symbol do I want? I'm going to put a, one of these. All right. All right. I'm not sure you were here. Uh, yeah, my Fabio lost his electronics. Yeah, I forgot to turn the generators on and drain the battery. Could be off position by a waste. Crumb. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> what? What? This shows that I'm pretty close to the route. But I'm going a lot faster than I thought I was. Okay. Okay. Now, I'm going to put my next waypoint, which is going to be 247, 252, 490... 9. 499 is going to be around about there. Okay, let me zoom in here. 499. Okay, it's about here. This is going to be the estimated position. Oh, but I can't do an hour. I have to do two hours because I already passed that. Right? Hmm. No, I could still do it. I have like six minutes to go. Okay, I'm going to do it. So it's going to be the estimated position at 1350. Oh, sorry. I should have added to the flight plan. That's what I meant to do. My bad. There we go. There we go. 246, because that's another hour of flight. And so now, what I need to do is... I need to get a, a heading correction. Oops. Sorry. To here, which would be... Looks like 262 magnetic. Now, I've been flying already for an hour. So I actually expect I'm going to be... I expect I'm going to be... Whoops, hold on. I expect I'm going to be here. Or, even worse, here. Probably here. Let me see if this is right. I'm going to create a, a user waypoint here just to see if indeed I happen to be where I thought. So, this is a guess. Estimated position, no heading correction at 1350 Zulu. All right, cool. And if I am here, then I need a big heading correction, right? So again, I'm not going to do a heading correction now. I'm just going to do the shot and see where I ended up. And you see what I did. Basically, I just extended... Right, if we are indeed here, if we are indeed here, we had been flying. Actually, I did something wrong. It's not there. If we are indeed there. What? Oh, sorry. And if we were here, then look, if I kept flying on the same heading, then I'd actually be over here. So that's where I think I might be. Does that make sense, guys? Hey, Iowa. How's it going, man? Once per two hours. Later, once per hour. Yeah, and finally every four minutes for a landfall to make a small island. Nice. Nice. I did shoot before I lost power, yes. So after I lost power, I wandered a little bit, but not that much. I, ca I caught it pretty fast. I caught it pretty fast. So actually, this one, I'm going to remove. This one, I don't need. Okay, cool. So I think I might be here. We'll see. If that's the case, I have to get ready for the shot. Shot's going to be a 50. Harry Brand, thank you very much for the follow. Alpha 1, Steven Sego, MP Stacks, and A320 PFD. Thanks all for the follows, guys. Great stuff. 1 in 60 rule. Yeah, Harry, I'm not even using it here. You could. You could. But I'm going to use it after... After I make my next shot. My sextant is right here. We don't actually have a sextant in the sim that like you look at the sun. There's no way to do that just yet. No no way for people to create that just yet. So maybe in the future. But for now, we have an app that takes the shot for you. So in this app, you select the star. You can see I have the sun here. You can select a, a planet like Mars or Venus. You can select the moon. Or you can select any of the stars. 
But I'm gonna shoot the sun. So there we go. And we need to start the shot at 49 because it takes two minutes. Airspeed is a little low, I agree. Weird, right? Slightly low here, should be 142. Let's fix that. But that's not gonna fix our airspeed very much. Whoa. No carb icing, and there shouldn't be because I'm not in great visible moisture here. But yeah, definitely slow in the airspeed. I don't know why. Hmm. Oh! Maybe because we climbed a little bit. But no, because we're leveled now, so that wouldn't have done it. That wouldn't have done it. I'm going to close the cows a little bit more. But again, that's not going to be enough drag to fix that. Yeah, Stefan. There is definitely something happening with clouds and uh, drag and lift right now. After the hotfix from yesterday, so it could just be that. Let's see, Crom. I had some really strong winds on my way to London. Uh, it blew me off course quite a way, but each sunshot kept pointing me in the right direction. That's awesome. That's awesome. So your heading uh, would be from the last CS shot, right? Not your origin. Well, the heading correction would. Ori. Anyone flying with you have modern avionics might be a stronger headwind. Yeah, it could be. Could be. No, no, no. Sorry, not because of the speed. The airspeed indicator never shows wind, guys. Forget that. Right? Your ground speed shows wind. Ninja, I agree. I agree. Oh, good morning. Hello. Oh my god, shot. Oh, I'm a few seconds off. Damn, 12 seconds off. Ugh. All right, we're doing the shot. And in the meantime, I'm going to get a refill um, and hit the bathroom. So I'll be right back. <laughs> Ewald, it's an amazing aircraft, dude. Amazing aircraft. It's so much fun, and you can do so much with it, you know? Reload flight, I know, Mr. 90, I know. Look at all you guys. Nice! Beautiful day to be flying, isn't it? Also, hold on a second. If I don't have that guy on and I asked for it to descend, why didn't he keep descending? Weird. Well, Ori, not quite. Not quite. Yeah, Galaxis, it's an amazing aircraft. The real thing and this one. Ori, <laughs> just a little. Just a little. There is a DC-3 in the making. Yes. Oh, you flew those in the Air Force. Which Air Force, Harry? US? Or... Probably not US, right? I don't know. Maybe you did fly in the US Air Force. You totally could have. Ah, uh, yes. Yes, Mr. Jess. It can be... Look, okay, let me put it this way. Let me put it this way. The best way to describe celestial navigation. Okay? Best way to describe celestial navigation for me... Thanks for the 100 bits, by the way. Here's the shot coming up. Best way to describe celestial navigation for me is that there are a lot of steps. But it's not complicated. It sounds complicated when you hear about it, when you see people doing it. It looks complicated. What you're actually doing is very simple and I'm gonna show you in one picture how easy it is to understand celestial navigation getting your position requires some effort requires those steps many steps right okay locking the altitude in but let me show you how easy it is to understand celestial navigation 
You know how celestial navigation is done? Right there. There's a better picture here. Isn't there? Maybe that was the picture. Oh, Jesus, that was the picture. There. Let me do this. Okay. So right there. Hey, Dreadnought. How are you, buddy? South African. Oh, that's awesome. Got your wings in 87, flew the piston and turbine. Lucky you, Harry. Oh my god, man. Still the Basler conversion? You guys had the Basler conversion down there? Oh, you're so lucky, dude. That's amazing. Alright, so Mr. Jess. What's Celestial Navigation, guys? How does this even work? It's actually very straightforward. Imagine this, look. If you know where the sun is, okay, that point right there. Let's let's start with that. You know where the sun is. Okay. For you to find out where you are, all you need to do is measure like how high is the sun in the sky? Because think about it, this aircraft here, right? Obviously, he's not under the sun, so the sun is some angle above the horizon but not above him. And the closer he gets, Actually, hold on a second. Electron Volt, are you still here? I just had an idea. Yes, okay, cool. I'm gonna show your YouTube video on it. That was you, wasn't it? Doing Celestial Nev? Because you have a picture in there showing light bulbs that I think is brilliant to explain. Okay, brilliant to explain Celestial Navigation. It's very helpful. Very best analogy, best analogy I've seen. Congratulations. All right, I'm going to lower the sim sound a bit so we can hear this, okay? All right. Now, how does it work? A sextant basically measures an angle, an angle between the horizontal plane and a body in the sky, in this case the sun. That's all it does, it measures an angle, in this case 53 degrees and a bit, um, how high the sun is up. Schaefer, got it. What are the differences? I don't know the Schaefer. Picture yourself standing near a light bulb. Here we go. And if you measure the angle to the light bulb and you know where it is directly, overhead, you can figure out that you're in a circle around it. Let that sink in, guys. Think about this. Right? Using some basic trigonometry, if you know this angle right here, this angle right here, you know you are somewhere on this circle a certain distance. Right? Because if you know this angle, you can figure out this distance right here. Yeah? Does that make sense? So, by measuring the angle to the sun... Ah, the sun, yes. I know that I'm on a circle somewhere, because anywhere in the circle the angle to the sun is the same, correct? <laughs> yeah, Vinyl, that's true. That's true. Ah, Mr. Pilot, there's always math when you're flying, man. Always. Ah, Angry One Horn. Hello, Angry One Horn. No, man. Good morning. It's a great time to say good morning. How are you, sir? How are you? Hmm. Guys. Is this not making sense to anybody? If it isn't, don't be shy. Raise your hand. Say, hey, I, wanna, I want more explanations here. I don't get this. Let's talk about it. So, measuring the angle to the sun or any other star can tell you how far you are from the point underneath that star does everybody agree with this that's right Ori that's right but we got tables to help us so we don't actually do any of the trigonometry ourselves that's already been done and bumped out into tables 
That's why you see me looking up so many tables. Is so I avoid doing the math by using the tables. Oh, I got you, Angry One Horn. Sorry, man. I I, I always have my hands full in the stream. <laughs> yes, yes, Ewald. Right. It's all triangulation. Celestial navigation is all triangulation. Okay, good. So do you agree then that if we can determine, if we know where this point is in the room here, right? Because, you know, this light bulb could be installed over here, over there. So you have to know where is the light bulb over. And let's say that, you know, there's a water fountain right here. And you say, okay, so the light bulb is over the water fountain. And I measured my angle to the light bulb and I got a distance from that point underneath the light bulb. So I know my distance from the water fountain. That's really what you're saying, right? But your distance from the water fountain is the same anywhere around this circle. So you don't know where you are. You just know that you're on a circle somewhere around the circle because anywhere around the circle, the angle to the light is the same. Therefore, the distance to the water fountain is the same. Everybody with me? Raise your hand if you did not understand that. One in chat. If you didn't understand that and you want me to explain it a different way. Bom dia. About two. Actually, let me see. Hold on. One, two. But what is the length, length of the hypotenuse? All right. Uh, so it sounds like everybody got this, right? Hey, Braiders, what's going on? I haven't done trigonometry in almost 30 years. I still remember how to get the hypotenuse. Unbelievable that you still remember that. Unbelievable. Props to your teacher and to you. That's incredible. Right, Mad. Great question. How do you do it in real life? In real life, you use a sextant. This tool right here that this gentleman is holding... And this tool allows you to look at the sun and at the horizon at the same time using basically mirrors, right? So you spot the sun, you spot the horizon, and the tool allows you to measure that angle. Okay. In the sim, we use an app. This app right here. See that app right there? Um, in this app, you choose what star you want to shoot. In this case, I have the sun. I could choose a different star, Aldebaran, for example, right? or Gekrix, or the sun, okay? So we're gonna shoot the sun. And then, I say take shot now, and it measures that for me. So that's how we do it in the sim, okay? All right, cool. So, now guys, imagine the light bulb is the sun, and you're gonna measure your angle, you know, just, it's, it's that simple. How far above the horizon is the sun? That's all you need to do. How far above the horizon? It's this many degrees. Okay. Now, if I have a table that tells me where on earth the sun is, and not only I have a table, I have a website. I have a website where you put in the date and time, and it says, hey, here's the sun. Here's the latitude, or sorry, uh, longitude and latitude of the sun. So this information is known. You don't have to calculate it. You have tables or websites that give you that information. But once you have that information, once you know the position of the sun, and once you know the angle the sun is from the horizon where you are, then you know you're on this circle here. Right? Okay. But a circle is not really going to help me. Right? Because it's like, well, dude, uh, I can be anywhere in the circle. Yeah, you can be anywhere in the circle. But, but, let's think about this. You know you know where you kind of are, don't you? You took off from Monrovia, you flew at a certain speed for a certain amount of time in a certain heading, so you know you are about here. And I say about here, like, well, okay, I could be here, I could be here, but I'm definitely not over Sierra Leone, right? So, by using dead reckoning, meaning your estimation of where you are, you couple that with this measurement that we did of the sun and you can come up with an estimated with an assumed position that's how that works exactly ori mm 
Mm -hmm. So the app, yes, Martel, the app, without revealing these things to you, because it would obviously defeat the purpose, the app knows your latitude and longitude. It's talking to the sim. It doesn't show you that, but it knows your latitude and longitude. And it knows where all the stars and the sun are because of tables. And so it can spit out. It's not actually measuring it visually in the sim. It's just looking up tables. But the sim is so accurate that it works. Does that make sense? Wow, Luxionica, you fly all over the place, buddy. I love it. All right, so now we need to do our calculations for the second shot. Pretty impressive database, yes. Cargo Rio, what's up? But I'm going to go get a refill, hit the bathroom, then I'll be back. All right, I'm going to put some tunes in while I'm gone. Or better yet, no, better yet. How about some in-flight entertainment? Shall we do that? Absolutely, Mr. Jess. I love to explain it as you know. As you know, right? Oh, well, we have some good ones for this flight because it's a long flight. So I got some stuff saved. But just for the break. No, t not today. Not today, Cargo. Because there's a lot of people flying and, you know, I didn't think I was going to get any ATC anyways. So... Oh, Luxionica, that's amazing. Let's talk to Celestial Navigator. Uh, the, does not use tables, uh, but the math formulas. Right, okay. Got it, Celestial. Even better, even better. Hey, Celestial, do you know if anybody's working on a sextant that you can actually move around and hold in the sim and measure angles? We tried that, Matt, and nobody seemed able to do that. All right, guys, I'm going to go on a quick break here. I'm going to leave you with a video, and I'll see you when I come back. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to another weekly dose of aviation. This plane landed at an air show, but while slowing down, the plane tipped over. Luckily, no one was injured. This jet turned into a flamethrower while starting up. This plane landing really hard at Bristol Airport. This is how flying above fireworks looks. This eagle trying to land on the wing of a glider. This plane flying just a few feet above the ground. This helicopter landing on a trailer. These jets flying in formation. This plane passing by low. This helicopter lifting another helicopter.
that's it for this week. I hope you guys enjoyed. Other sources will be linked in the description as usual. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new. And also, feel free to follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Links down below. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Hey what's up guys, welcome back to another weekly dose of aviation. This plane was going to touch down in the water and then take off again, but instead the plane hit an object and spun around. Luckily no one was injured. This plane landed in heavy winds, but while slowing down, it tipped over. This emergency slide deployed the wrong way. This plane trying to land on water. This plane flying low to drop fire retardant. This plane landing in bad conditions touched down hard. This plane has nine engines and can take off really fast. This is a bus that looks like a plane. This fighter jet taking off from a highway. These planes flying next to each other. Oh, that one's going a little bit faster, looks like. And that's it for this week. I hope right. you guys enjoyed. Other sources will be linked in the description as usual. Don't. All right. So now we need to figure out that second star shot, right? Did it work? I mean, it worked, but where are we? Okay, let's get some sim sounds back. There we go. Oh, I know, it's too loud. I got it. Back to here, and then this one. One second, Nico. This one goes back to here. Okay, you got that? All right. Hey, Inverteris, how's it going, buddy? How's it going? We're having a grand old time doing some celestial navigation here. What's up? Oh, weird. Oh, hours. Hours. Ouch. Ouch. That hurts. Ha 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 ha.
Alright, so, let's do it. Same drill. We gotta delete some of this stuff, though. Okay. And this, and this, and this, and this, and this, and this. Okay. I could have left the dome personal, couldn't I? Oh my god, I I with 10 subs. Jeez, I I. What's up, man? Some many of your faces in the stream. That's true. Thanks, I I. Guys, if you don't know, I I is. I I, is it okay if I call you a benefactor of the stream? Because I think you are. Um, you're just an awesome person who supports the community in incredible ways. Oh, time a shot. Yeah, thank you. 14. Oh, so there's 12. No, it's 13.50. 13.50 shot. Remember? The first one was actually 12.50. I had that wrong. All right. And this is going to change too. So for our second one... How are you today, Ai Ai? How is uh, San Francisco doing today? All right, so I'm looking at this, right? And my estimated position uh, in whole degrees is going to be 3 north and 18 west, okay? So 3 north and 18 west. Thank you, Ai Ai. That's super generous, man. 18 west? Okay, got it. Now, let's go find, start with the sun, and we're going to use that almanac, right, just to save some time. Makes it easy. 13, no. Sorry, yeah, 1350 this time. There we go. I love the FOF, and we love you, I. I. Thank you, man. All right, GAJ, got to round this, so 029 degrees in zero minutes. Nice, that's easy. So, 29 degrees. Whoops, wrong one. There we go. Zero minutes, love it. Love it, no correction, okay. Uh... So the GAJ ends up being 29-0, right? And zero minutes. Hours is going to be 3 north. Oh, sorry, longitude. It's 18 west. Actually, hold on a second. Yeah, all right. All right, never mind. West, 18 degrees. Okay, got it. Because this is east. I should have put east in here. How do I know it's east? Because on the website, it's positive. If it was negative... Correct? Wait. Celestial Navigator, is that right? The GAJ, when it's south... Or sorry, when it's... when it's No, no, no. Does it go to 360 or is it 180 minus 180? I guess I don't know. Yeah, yeah, Ross, I know. I, that I know. Martel! Thank you very much for that tier 1 sub, Martel. Let's go, man. Thank you. I think Celestial Navigator might have stepped away. Okay. So, LHA is going to be GAJ minus that. Is that right? I forget some of these things, man. Yes, okay, and then in 360 degrees. Okay, that makes sense. So 29 minus 18 is going to be 11. And it's 11... Yes, Welsh. <laughs> hey, Two-Tone is back. What's up? What's up, Two-Tone? Yeah, I think Celestial Navigator is gone. Oh, boy. Okay, now I'm confused. So, LAJ is 11 degrees. I got that part. 
but does that, that make sense? Hold on a second. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. Okay, declination for the sun is going to be zero one degrees and thirty nine minutes north. Okay. All right. Cool. Got it. It's slightly an <laughs> <and> apocalypse. <laughs> Land in Buenos Aires. Where are we supposed to be in Natal? Crumb. Mine, and I don't know if this was a setting or not. Mine remembers all, like, all these drawings that I'm doing here. If I turn Little Nav Map off and then back on, all of this stuff comes back. So it looks like it does it by default. Alright, now we're going to go over here. Because now we need to figure out the ZN for the sun. That's right. Latitude is going to be... What was it again? Three. Latitude three. And we're on the same side as the sun, so same. And our LAJ is 11. All right, 11 right there. Got it. Put a box around it. There we go. And let's zoom in. And I'll do this. Much better. Okay. Uh, let's see here. <clears throat> Alright, so the declination of the sun. Uh, we had as 139. Okay, cool. So it's still between 1 and 2. It's still 140 as far as I'm concerned. Right? So I'm going to go two-thirds of the way between one and two. I got to interpolate. So my HC between one and two, but two-thirds of the way there, uh, eight. So it's going to be six that way, so 56. 78, 56. My D is going to be, that's five, so make that two. So it's going to be five. So five. And my Z is going to be, there's 5, make it 6, 297. All right. All right. So now back here, remember ZN? And if you don't remember how to calculate this stuff, guys, just go back to the tutorial, right? Just go back to the tutorial. Um, oh, sorry, it's before this, isn't it? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Here. There we go. Right, so. It indicates that a north latitude if LAJ is greater than 180, then ZN equals Z. Right. And that's also up here. For an LAJ less than 180, ZN is 360 minus Z. Oh, sorry, you can't see it because I'm zoomed out. Hold on. Watch. And that also doesn't work. Because I'm apparently cropping some stuff. Let me uncrop. Because I want to show you that part. Right here. Look. Right here. I'm going to just blow this up. Alright, right there. Look at that. See that? LAJ greater than 180, ZN equals Z. But our LAJ is not. Our LAJ is 11, so it's less than 180. So our ZN is 360 minus Z. 360 minus 11, 349. So our ZN is 349. All right. Now let's get this guy back in here. Man, that's a monster table, isn't it? All right, cool. Cool, 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 cool. Very accurate, Maddie. Very accurate. Right. So, Maddie, what's going on? I'm I'm gonna make a guess here. I don't know this for sure, but I'm I'm guessing. The hot fix that happened yesterday caused some issues. And the plane is not performing like it did before the hotfix. So our speeds are not going to be accurate. 
there's something going on with clouds and vertical speed and drag. There's something weird. <laughs> Dalmatian, come on, man. We got this. We got this. Okay, we don't even need that chart anymore. Forget that chart. Because we already got our HCRD and our Z. So now, what do we do? Well, now we go back here, right? Our ZN, remember? 349. Okay, got that. Degrees. All right. Let's move through this, right? ZN minus TR. I don't think I actually need that. Anyways, then we just need the corrections from the bottom. So, let's go back here. And now we're going to get... There we go, our Coriolis correction. Again, close to the equator, that's going to be zero. So we don't have to worry about that. So all we worry about... Is our dome personal. So, refraction is going to be zero. So the total correction here is going to be minus 5. Oh, hold on. That's not it. It's got to be in here. Minutes. Let's put that in there. Okay. Got it. So that total correction is going to come into here, right? But first we need to put then the calculated HA over here. That's our HC. And that's going to be 78.56. So, 78 degrees. 56 minutes. Oh, no way, Rock. Really? Oh, so, Iceberg, I think that was you yesterday that said, like, all the files were gone, right? What do you mean you can't reinstall it? What happens when you try to reinstall? Like, if you just... I, first of all, hold on, hold on. Let's back up. Steam or Microsoft Store? Steam or Microsoft Store. Okay. Right. So I'm going to put the total adjustments here. Minus five minutes. Which means an HC of 78 degrees. 51 minutes. And then the HO is what we got, 77.50. Is that right? Yep. 77 degrees, 50 minutes. Yeah? All right, so 77 minus that. So it's going to be a negative, so it's away, right? And it's going to be uh, one degree and one minute. So 61 miles. So we are flying faster than we thought. Well, no, actually, no. Ah, hold on. One degree, zero one minutes. 61 miles on a ZN of 349. Okay, so now let's go into little nav map and draw that up. So, I have to create a position, first of all, uh, at three degrees north and 18 west. Because we didn't have that. 3 north and 18 west. Okay, so let's create one. And this is the assumed position, 1350, right? 3 degrees north. 18 degrees west. And I'm going to make this. Yeah, okay. And there it is. Okay. And now, from it, I need to go on a 349 for 61 miles. Oh, boy. Okay. Three forty nine. Oh, no, it's a way, so it's the opposite. So it's the opposite. It's the opposite. Okay, this is looking better now. Because the opposite of 349 is 169. 169, there we go. For 61 miles. One sixty nine true. 61 miles. Okay, there it is. And now... We do a, a perpendicular to this. 
So, line here, perpendicular, right? 169 uh, is going to be minus 90, 79. 79, okay. And now I'm going to draw right here, I'm going to draw that ring, the range ring, there we go. And 90 degrees to this circle over here and to that. Boom, that's my position right there. So this right here is the estimated position at 1350. There it is. All right. So now I can make a, a, a change, right? It does sound like I'm getting south of the route. It makes sense compared to the previous, the previous uh, position. And so I, I think this is correct. So now I'm going to make a correction. Let me see here. From this, I'm going to do 247 more. Uh, so 249, 247, 57, 47. 747 is about there. Let me see where that is. 747. There we go. So about here. There we go. 244. Yeah, that's good enough. All right. So that's what I want to make a correction for. So I'm going to make a correction from there to here so 269 magnetic okay 269 is gonna be my new heading here from 255 to 269 let's do that igloo thank you very much for that dude that's awesome that is awesome this is why airliners had dedicated navigators yes okay 260 we're gonna stop at 269 Almost there. There. So, we're south of the route. We're making a small right correction. But we're not that far from the route at all. So, I'm actually okay with this. Ori, I cheated. All I did, instead of doing the math, all I did is I said, look, this right here is my estimated position. This is where I think I am, right? It's where I think I am. Okay. If I am there to go to the next waypoint, what heading do I need? So I just did one of these. I did this and I said, okay, 269. 269. Actually, it starts as 266 and becomes 269 later. That's normal. <clears throat> Excuse me. I am going to stick with 269 to exaggerate the variation, the, the, the correction, but that's how I did that. Gorlo. Buddy, I have the livery that we agreed to use on this effort. It's not the livery you want. But it is the livery of the real aircraft that we're trying to fly back to the United States. Victor 5, November Charlie Golf. The last DC-6 ever built. Misco! Look at you flying formation over there. That's awesome, buddy. Look at all you guys. V-Rabbit, uh, Fourth is there. Fierce Wolf, Call Me Joe, Denton, Druid, Maddie, Wacko, Subsonic, See You Later, <laughs> Cambersill. And then over there we got uh, Shield Cork, Colonel Jake, yeah, Colonel Jake, Kieran Blade, JM Knight, Stefan, BMF, Tyler. Welsh fighting and then there's somebody behind fighting I can't see and Captain Jack Lyle assassin in front of me nice guys nice 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 I wonder if you guys are using GPS so I'm looking at you guys and going why are you left you should be to my right because I'm south of the route as far as my cell last year navigation is going which reminds me how are we gonna know for sure when we get like when we get close to the coast right when we get close to the coast how are we gonna do this well it's easy And I'll show you. When we get close enough, we're just gonna dial up the VOR, right? So 1143 is the VOR for Natal. 
and hopefully when we're within a, like 150 miles or so we're going to be able to pick this up so 1143 is what we need to dial up not for now but for later but let's just do it 1143 and that's going to help us narrow down our arrival into natal just like the pros <laughs> Stefan. hey dc good morning sir how you doing man I figured vinyl. I figured it would be V Rabbit. Why does that sound familiar, V Rabbit? It's like it's like a character in something. Okay, Celestial. So, better use the point on the line of position that is closest to the DR circle. Oh, I didn't do that. I thought I did a 90 and I didn't. And plot next like from that. So look at this. So I did that, right? I got the circle. Oh no, I did the 90, but the 90 to the line of position would be right there, wouldn't it? Yeah, it was a little bit forward, but I think it's not gonna make that much difference here, Celestial. Look, the 90 to the circle I think is right here. And on the line of position, that would make almost the same heading to correct for the next one. Is that what you were talking about? Yes, Black Iron. It's a it's a community effort. We're doing a real time three day relay stream where one streamer ends, the next streamer picks up the aircraft. I picked it up from Porter, learn to fly. I'm gonna deliver it to B Mint in Brazil, and she's gonna keep on going. And by Sunday, Monday, we're gonna be in San Antonio, Texas. Oh, on the red line, not, a, but, but don't I have to be on the line of position though? Cause Celestial, if I do that, then I would not be on the line of position. And I always thought that I had to be on the line of position. I would be here. Thanks Black Iron. I appreciate it, buddy. We're bringing the DC six back home. Man, that's a lot of water, isn't it, guys? It is a lot of water. A lot of water. Which menu screen is that, Luxionica? <clears throat> Look, I don't know why, but speed is back up. I... I don't know, man. Yeah, so you can take a position on the LOP closest to red line. Depends on which you trust better. Right, right. So I thought I did. I mean, I know this is a little bit further, right? Because I didn't do the 90 properly. The 90 would have been here. Like this. Like this. But again, very close, I thought. Right? Very close. No, maybe here. Yeah, something's going on, Ninja. Something's definitely going on. The one that shows you the stats of the flight. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Ugh, I hate that, Luxionic. I hate that they force that. Like, have that as an option. That's all. Right? Nova Wing! What's going on, Nova Wing? Good to see you, buddy. Good to see you. Guys, we're getting ready for another shot. We only have 14 minutes before the next shot. Do you see how busy? Do you see how busy people got? When they were doing navigation like this? Let's start filling out the form for the next one, yeah? Because then we can do the correction quicker. I know, Luxionic, it's crazy. It's crazy. All right, so let's start filling out the form for the next one. Actually, refraction is going to be zero. The closer I get to the equator, the more that's going to be zero. So I don't have to worry about that. So let's do minus five minutes here. Okay. Which will be minus five minutes there. Got it. This we trash and we're going to trash all of these. Fourteen fifty. 
shot, right? Everything else looks to be the same, except latitude and longitude. So for that, we're going to use 1 north and 22 west. 1 north, 22 west. Okay. I am on my phone, so I can't see well. When you draw the line 2 away at a 90, that is the LOP, right? Isn't your waypoint on the 2 away line and not the LOP? No, you have to be on the LOP. You have to be on the LOP, Captain Seppi. Right? So, the two away are from the assumed position, not from the LOP. The LOP starts from the two and away. So, the two and away determine which way... Sorry, no. The two and away determine which way from the assumed position you go. Then, from there, you draw the LOP. Right? Demands attention. Yeah, yeah, she does. She does, and I'm patting her, too. Cannot get good. Wait, Asobo has assumed... Has, they admitted that Cloud Drag is a thing? They did? Really? All right, guys, we start with the Sun, GAJ, as usual, right? So, 1450 on the shot... Calculate. Boom. There it is. Okay, obviously the sun is no longer above us. Right? Remember, the sun was like straight up above us. 89 degrees or so. 87 is what we got on the first on the first one. So now it's 43. It's much lower on the horizon. All right. So 43, 59, 54. We round this up to 44, 0. And then the declination is going to be 138. North zero one thirty eight. Got it. And the body is the sun. I don't know why I deleted that. <laughs> and the body GHA is going to be zero forty four degrees. Zero zero minutes. Nice. No correction. Okay, GHA then is. 0, 044 degrees, zero, 00 minutes. Our longitude is going to be minus 0, 022 degrees, zero, 00 minutes. Therefore, our LHA is 22. 0, 022 degrees, zero, 00 minutes. Okay. Yeah, Ninja, that may be a thing, too. Maybe the DC-6 gets more affected than others. I signed up to the Boston VAR TCC so I could do that WINGS program. Golly, I'm... S oh. I honestly, like, I get moved. I get moved when I hear people say that. Hey, Guybrush. Très bien, merci. Et toi? That's amazing, Kelly. That is amazing. That is amazing. All right. We're coming up on the shot. Eight and a half minutes to go. Let's keep going here. We need to figure this out now, right? So now we're going to go to this table. We're going to go to... Oh, hold on. A latitude of one. Oh, there it is. Same name as latitude because we're still on the north. Once we go to south, then we got to use the contrary. But not right now. We're still sames. Samesies. Um... And our LAJ is uh, 22. All right, so 22, I'll draw a box around that. And how about that? And how about that? All right, there it is. Zoom in. We are, um, so if I zoom out, hold on. I think I have to zoom out all the way for you guys to see. Yeah, so at the top, right? So the declination at the top has to be the sun. The sun is currently 138, so again, 140 is what I'm going to use. 
And at 140, we're between 1 and 2, two-thirds of the way towards 2. So let's write these down. There's 1 and 2. Okay. 68, 67, 59. Yeah, that's going to be 67, 59. Okay. Uh, minus 0, 1, minus 0, 4. So we've got 3, so we've got 2, so minus 0, 3. Okay. And the other one, we got 3, so 2, so 88. All right. Okay, so... Um, HC is going to be HA over here, right? 67, 59, so 67 degrees, 59 minutes. Okay. Uh, total adjustment is going to be minus 5 minutes. Whoops. Minutes. Okay. Uh, ZN... So ZN, uh, once again, I have to look at the chart. LAJ, smaller than 180 it is. Uh, ZN is 360 minus Z. Okay. Okay. 360 minus 88. It's like 360 minus 90 is 270. But it's only minus 88, so it's 272. Okay. So 272 degrees on the ZN, right? Okay, uh, total correction here. Hi, kitty. There's going to be minus 5. Total adjustment, minus 5. Okay. All right, I think that's all correct. Now we need an HO, which we're going we're gonna to measure, right? Oh, by the way, the total adjustment here is minus 5. So HC is going to be 67 degrees, 54 minutes. Oh, and look, somebody's passing right in front of me. <laughs> Check your shot time. Yep, it's 10.50. Pardon me, 14.50. What do you mean, Ori? Yeah, the cat. She she really wants some loving. Right, kitty? What time is it now? So it's 14.45. And we got to do the shot at 1450. <laughs> well, guys, this is the first time I kicked in a heading correction. So I'm really curious to see if we're going to get close to where we think we are going to be. <laughs> yeah, Pete. Animals like me, Pete. I've always been like that my whole life. You know, I'm the guy that like I walk into some situation where there's an animal. Oh my god, Nova Wing raided me or hosted me and I didn't even see it? What? Nova, are you still here? What? And all the animals come to me. I love animals and animals love me. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. All right. Um, is there anything else to do here? And no, I think I've done everything, guys. Wow, I think I actually am ahead. I am ahead of the shot. What? Ah, Mr. Pilot. Yeah, Joe, exactly. I'll be I'll be calling two cats, right? The guy that organized the tripping being like, hey, uh, uh, two cats, I uh, I have some good news and bad news. And he's going to say, okay, give me the bad news. Okay, the bad news is uh, I had some problems with my celestial navigation and I did not find Natal. I did not find my destination. Okay, well, that sucks. Well, so I guess there's good news. Yeah, good news is I ended up in San Antonio, Texas. So... The trip is over. Oh, I could totally see that. I could totally see that. Yes, she's trained her human really well, Kaharia. <laughs> Ori, of course you could. Of course you could. I'll get the Sambucas. <laughs> All right, guys. Whoa. Kitty has been playing with my Trek IR uh, Pro clip here. All right, so at 50, we're going to do the shot. But remember, we start at 49. We start at 49. Chernokrill. Thank you very much for the follow, man. I appreciate that. Yeah. 
Can you imagine, Captain Apocalypse? Can you imagine? Oh, is this Brazil? Wait, why don't people speak Portuguese here? <laughs> I, guess, I guess in some places in Africa they would. But you know what I mean. <laughs> Rock frog. Yes, yes, I got it. I got it. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Hey, kitty kitty. Just added a 30 second video of the escort convoy. Oh, nice. On Twitter, it tagged Fabio. Okay, Sasson. Uh, I don't really use Twitter, but let me see. I'm assuming it's hashtag the flying Fabio on Twitter. Is that right? I don't even know how to search for like mentions because I don't use Twitter. So let me know, please. Okay, guys, we're coming up. 50 seconds to go now. Okay, let's get uh, let's get this ready. We got sun. Yes, we just have to hit take short now. Okay. The only thing I found you on. Yeah, I'm not on on. I don't really do social media, man. I'm on Discord, um, and I have a website. You know. Power failure, but oh, this. Hold on. It's just a light, it's not a button. It just lights up to tell you if you had a power failure. And it's not that, it's... Look, hold on. It's flight instruments power failure. Okay? Alright, here we go. Ten seconds. Three. Two. One. Shot. On the little bell icon, yes, yes, maybe, Sassen, hold on. Joe, let me go see, hold on, now now I'm curious, now I'm curious. Oh yeah, Sassen, I see it. Oh, I can't do full screen, but... There we go. Damn, look at all those people, man. By the way, what does Sassenach mean? Yes. It fragments the world. Just a tiny little community, right? That's right, Garlo. I love it. Oh, great football Saturday today. My team is winning by five goals. Julian, who is your team? Five. Holy crap. That's a pouncing. Or a trouncing. Come on, baby. Spit out. Spit out those numbers. I want to see where we are. Goalkeeper on vacation. John, in the real world, in the real world, you use a sextant. It's a tool. It's a it's a mechanism that lets you measure the altitude of the sun in relation to the horizon. It's Gaelic for Englishman outsider. If anyone watches Outlander. Uh, that's what he calls English wife. Okay, I don't watch Outlander. Sassenach. So, Sassenach. I thought it was German. Because of the CH. Sounds like it's not. It's Sassenach Hunter. Okay. Wait, Luxionica. As we're doing a historical DC 6 flight, today there's a bit of history on another flight. It's a DC 4. What, what's the history there, Luxionica? Reading is in. It's just a rude Scots word for the English. In the same way the English call Scots sweaties. Scottish, yeah. Got my grandfather sexted. No, Tyler, are you kidding me? Tyler, please tell me you're kidding me, because I would I want a sextant more than anything. I would love to own a sextant. Dude, are you Tyler? Can you post a picture on Discord? 
Can you post a picture on Discord? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Here's our Discord. I would love to see that. But I actually really good program. Really? Sassanach. Okay. Outlander. What is it about? Should we watch a trailer, maybe? Tyler be flexing. Thank you, Tyler. Really appreciate that. Captain Rash. Hello, sir. Okay, guys, let's do this. Let's do this. We were expecting 40-something. No, 60-something. What do we get? 60-something. 66. 59. All right, let's plug it in. 66, 59 degrees, 59 minutes. All right, this minus that, it's going to be away. Hi. And it's going to be away by this minus that. 55 minutes. You guys with me? Zero degrees, 55 minutes, which means 55 miles. Okay. Captain Oresh, uh, I'll tell you the ETA. Hold on. Eighteen fifty-three. Eighteen fifty-three Zulu. Captain Oresh. All right. So fifty-five miles away. So opposite of two seven two. That's going to be zero nine two fifty-five miles. Zero nine two fifty-five miles from this waypoint here. Right. Twenty-two and one. Yep. So let's create it. is one degree and 22 there it is and we're going to go to 092 for 55 miles 55 Zero nine two. Okay, now I need a line of position. All right, so my line of position is going to be. Oh, and I also need the range here. There we go. And now, oh no, zero nine two fifty five. And I'm gonna go one eight two. And now my estimated position is right here right here so right about there i'm gonna make a waypoint there that's gonna be the estimated position at 1450. not bad my correction actually worked my correction actually worked a treat so from here i'm now oh wait i need a waypoint next so what's this one at Okay, so nine, 990, I think is going to be my next one. Okay. 990. It's going to be about there. 990. Shh, sure. We'll do it about here. There we go. 244 again. So that's good. So now I just need a correction from here to here. And it looks like that's going to be 264 magnetic. 264. Okay. And as far as that goes, uh, okay. I think my ground speed is actually doing okay. All right. 264 is my correction. And we are on 264. I thought it was on a 269. That's why I'm a little off. That's why I'm off to the south and not here. I should have been on the route. I was four degrees off. I'm going to continue this and it's going to get me back. To okay, got it. Got it. Did you guys see what happened? You see what happened, right? 
Natalia. I do and I don't. I've said that in stream before, on stream before. I think Brazil is an amazing place to visit, but a shitty place to live in. You know, when you live in a place, look, when you go, when you go on vacation to some place, you don't have to deal with a lot of stuff that people that live there deal with, right? You don't have to deal with the politics, with the rules, with a bunch of stuff. Living in Brazil, man, you have to deal with a lot of stuff that tourists that just don't see. They don't have to deal with. And all in all, uh, it's too much, Natalia. I rather live here than in Brazil. I miss Brazil a lot. But I rather live here because of that. You know? Yes, Mr. Pilot, of course we are. Yes. That's right, Rossford. Correct. You're you're thinking very correctly. That's awesome. My calculations were off, I know. What do you mean? Or do you mean like, oh, you're off track? I was definitely off track. I was definitely off to the south. But that's simply because I don't have a wind correction, right? And there's probably a little bit of wind from the north here, not too much. But we're definitely getting back on track, so I'm happy where we are right now. I'm very happy. If... Oh, no. I fly planes. Hey, thanks for the follow. And... Robemac? Flighty Pro. Thanks very much for the follows, guys. Appreciate that. <laughs> I fly planes, right? Oh, Cold Nebo. So, yeah. We... Look. Cold. We, um... We think we, we veered south, this blue route here. I think that's pretty much kind of the route I was flying. Maybe a little bit further south, right? But I eventually found myself around here. And so I'm doing a correction, you know, to get back to here. And now I found myself here. The triangle is me. Um, so I'm getting closer to the route. So I'm, I'm pretty confident that I'm doing okay. Hey, Kill Switch is here. Hello, Kill Switch. Oh my God, Crafty Tigers and 757 Spy just raided me with 55 people. Hello, 757 Spy. How are you? Hi, 757 Spy viewers. Welcome to my channel. I'm the Flying Fabio. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. You join us. You join us. Well, I'll show you. You join us as we are about halfway through the Atlantic flying from Liberia to Brazil on an amazing relay that we're doing with the DC-6, which, by the way, 757 Spy is going to be a part of. As a matter of fact, 757, let me look over here. I want to see when you are up, and I think I have that here. Oh, yes, I do. So, 757 Spy, look at this. He's picking it up in Mexico uh, tomorrow at 12.24 Zulu. 12.24 Zulu uh, for a two-hour flight to Mexico and dropping it off to B-Mint. Funny thing is, I am dropping it off to B-Mint today. So B-Mint's going to be flying today and tomorrow. That's awesome. Yeah, 757. I can't wait. Guys, wait a second. Hold on. What? No. This can't be. Guys, 750... 757 spy just resubscribed for three months. Slarty underscore bar gifted a tier one sub. Slarty. Slarty. I was just gonna say, wait a second. 757 spy doesn't have a subscription? What? And I was literally going to gift him a subscription when that happened, Slarty. Holy moly. Great. Hey, Slarty, you know what? Great minds think alike. That's what it is. Anctus, thank you for the follow. Crafty Tigers. Thanks for the follow, too. Slarty, that's awesome, dude. That is awesome. Guys, look at the group of people that I have flying with me. Oh, they're diverging. Uh-oh, that's not good. They might be using GPS, and I might be very off. I thought I was doing well on navigation. Why are you guys so far from me? All right, Crafty. That's great, dude. Hey, I appreciate you being here, man. Thank you. I know, right, Cold? Uh, it doesn't feel good. Well, Inverterrence, I mean, isn't that what I'm doing? 
When you say editable, hold on a second. In Verteris, this form right here, this form is scanned. So these are just images. That's not text. Is that what you're talking about? <laughs> you old. Just pop out the VOR fuse. <laughs> Did you figure out uh, what type sexton you have there? Wait, did he post a picture? Ah, use the freeware. Do okay, I got you. I got it, Inverteris. Okay. So, does the PDF file have to be different for you then? Is that what you're saying? Maybe the GPS is jammed. Yes. And the others are off. Martel, I love how you. I love where your head's at, buddy. I love your confidence. I love where your head's at. To Lisbon. <laughs> Boarding lounge. Boarding Lounge. Cheers, by the way. Right, let me get my coffee. Hold on. Cheers, Boarding Lounge. Oh, so Celestial Navigator. You're here, right? So look at this. Inver Terrace, who, by the way, is part of the PMDG team. So he's one of the guys that made the plane that we're flying right now. He's saying if you use Acrobat Reader, like the, the free version of Acrobat, um... This form is not editable, so it sounds like you have to mark text boxes. Uh, Celestial, does that make any sense? Oh, it doesn't let you add text at all? He'll switch? Like at all? Hey, two cats! You know what, buddy? Look. We were diverging from the route, now I think we're converging, so... Things are good, buddy. Things are good, we're about halfway there. About halfway there. Yeah, it's just a reader. I get it. Yeah, no, Rock Frog. The name makes sense. The name makes sense. So, how do we do this without using reader and without having to pay Adobe? Make Google Sheet. Let it do some math for you. Maybe. I Fox it? I don't know. Nitride? Yeah, I mean, there's a bunch of apps, I'm sure. I think if your Terrence is just looking for a recommendation of what's a good app, to, to add text to PDFs for free. Hey, Chris! Arnsperger, is that how you pronounce it, Chris? No, yeah, yeah. Okay, love you. Okay, okay. So yeah, guys, we've been doing Celestial Navigation since we left Liberia, right? And so far, so good. I mean, and initially, what we think happened is we think we flew this blue line. The, the yellow line is where I want to be. That's the route. The blue line is what I think I flew, right? We did our first uh, Celestial Navigation check here, but it took us a long time to get the fix. So we think we basically were over here... And then eventually over here, or over here, the triangle here. So between the blue line and the triangle, that's probably where I was. Two hours in. We're now three hours in. And three hours in, look, the triangle here is what I think I am. So I converged onto the route. And so hopefully, hopefully for the next go, for the next waypoint, I'm going to be dead on the route. Dead on the route. This is going to be at 1550 Zulu. That's when we're going to take the check for this um so yeah we're almost there well we're halfway there <laughs> libreoffice draw can edit pdfs and it's open source and free oh good to know good to know thank you q switch oh okay mr pilot is saying something that i thought was right but you guys were saying otherwise so i was like uh, okay i guess not Guys, I used to fill forms in an Adobe Reader, the free Adobe Reader, uh, all the time at work. All the time. So I don't know why you're saying that Adobe Reader can't fill a form. Captain Oresh, I don't think it is. Celestial Navigator. Take a look at Captain Oresh's uh, message. He is proposing to make a PDF that's a little bit cleaner out of the scan PDF for the form that we have. Any problems with that? 
Oh, Q switch, that's the problem. I think the PDF currently does not have text boxes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. We need to add text boxes, save it as the PDF with the text boxes, and then reader can do it. Got it. Got it. Yeah. But I thought that was only for last night, that's why. It doesn't matter, you don't have to explain it, I just please for keys. Okay. <laughs> I haven't forgotten yet, nights, because I have a timer going on it and I have 17 minutes to go. That's not right, says Mr. Pilot. Okay, Mr. Pilot. Right, the document needs text boxes set up, Mr. Pilot. Really? Nice, nice! Let's go, buddy! That's amazing! That's amazing. Coffee's done. We'll brew some more in a little bit. Ori, which documents do you mean? This, for example, this is a PDF that comes with the Celestial Navigation app, which you get at flightsim.to right there. Right? So that and some other PDFs. Bye, baby. They come with the app. Okay? Now. This. Right? This is publication 249 from the US government, from the military. This you find online, but there's links that the app, the CellNav app, will give you to go download this. Or you can Google it. It's easy. Oh my god, Knights, yes. You better find your charger, buddy. <gasps> Mr. Pilot is right. Let's go. If you have a PDF open at Acrobat Reader and select fill and sign, it creates a text box anywhere in the document. That's amazing. I do it every day when I'm previewing and sending invoices. Mr. Pilot, you just solved a bunch of people's problems. That's amazing, buddy. Thank you. But you cannot edit a form without Acrobat, right. But the form kill switch is not a form. If you look at this, it's actually a JPEG. It's a scanned image. It's not really a form. That's why we're having this conversation. Wow, Mr. Pilot, way to go, buddy. See, all that time spent at work doing those things, Mr. Pilot, paid off. You thought it was all like, ah, oh, what a grind. No, it actually helped people. Oh, I fly planes. What were you flying? Ooh, Kuwait City to Tel Aviv. That's an interesting flight because of what it flies over, right? Yeah, save as. I don't know what you're laughing at, Mr. Pilot. Maybe you're laughing at what I said. Maybe something else. I don't know. Ah, Seattle. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, man. <laughs> Kitty. Yeah, exactly. I fly planes. That's why I was saying, like, that's an interesting flight to do. Right? That's an interesting flight to do. Wow. Mr. Pilot solving all kinds of Adobe problems on stream today. That's amazing. Hey, look at that. Camber still very close to me with his King Air. Guys. I, I want to ask you something. Because it is the case for me. But I want to ask you this. Right? I want to ask you guys this. When I look at a map of the Earth. Right? You look at the ocean and you go, wow, that's really big. Sure. Really big. But honestly... It doesn't compute to me how big it is until I do a flight like this. Until I fly seven hours at 250 knots and all you see is water. That's when he clicks. They're like, holy crap, dude. We have a lot of water on the Earth. Yeah, Kieran, right? Like, it's astounding to me that you can fly for seven hours and all you see is water. Okay, you guys think the same way. Nice. Some of you do. Nice. Yeah, Russ, for sure. 
Imagine being on a ship doing 20 knots. <laughs> ah, and you don't see the depth. That's the other thing. Yep. I know breeders. It's amazing, right? By the way, bagel parking. Thanks for the follow. And yet, we have a lot of desert areas too. That's right, gamer. There's several deserts on the Earth that you can go fly over and everywhere you look is desert. It's amazing. Age of Sail, 10 to 18 knots, yes, Vino, same thing, right? Can you quickly pull up little nav map and scroll back to the two previous shots? Yes, of course. So here's the first shot. Celestial. I'll give you a few seconds. Hey, adventure, what's going on? All right, I'll go to the second shot. Second shot. <laughs> Mr. 90. Hey, sandcastles, baby. Sandcastles. That's what we'd be doing. <laughs> wow, Inverterras, 15 days to Brazil from Holland. And Inverterras knows it. Guess how? Guys, hey, Inverterras, I hope you don't... Yeah, you're welcome. I hope you don't mind me talking about this. Guys, how do you think Inverterras knows how long it takes to go from Holland to Brazil on a boat? Oh, thanks, Adventure. Appreciate that, buddy. Appreciate that, man. Not Navy. Not Navy. Not so enthusiast. And he's not the captain. His dad. His dad was the captain on a freighter. Freighter, right, over Terrence? And he sailed with his dad from Holland to Brazil. That's why he said up there, Rotterdam, that's where they left, to Rio, nonstop. Then Paranaguá, then Rio Grande. Correct. Yeah, on a freighter. Hey, Inverteris, did you do other trips with your dad too? Like, how many times did you go out with your dad? And, and by the way, how cool, man, that you got to go out with your dad. You know, like most kids don't get to see what their mom or dad do for a job. Many. Oh, that's awesome, dude. Oh, that's awesome. He really wanted to go to Carnival. <laughs> About water. Even the human bodies. Yeah, Goblin. I know, right? And not only that, dude. Like, that's all over the universe. Water is the universal... What? Solvent. That's right. That's right. The amount of things that dissolve in water are insane. Water is one of the key, key elements. Well, it's not an element, is it? It's a combination of hydrogen and oxygen. Combination of two elements, right? One of the key, key things in the universe, isn't it? Yeah, cold, for sure. The Pacific is wild. What do you mean by that, Ever Terrence? He never allowed me to cross the Pacific, though. So what do you mean? Like, storms? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, Apocalypse is right. Talking of sailing, when I was a young boy, I got food poisoning on a ship. Whoa. Since then, I've suffered by seasickness. All psychologic. Yeah, of course, but can't overcome it. Oh, my God. Braiders, that's amazing. So, it's amazing to me the power that the brain has over our body. You know what I'm talking about. You know that we can, we can generate disease, right? Y you know this. I think everybody knows this. The brain can actually generate diseases, which is insane. Which is insane. But it can also do mental things like that. Like it can make you feel a certain way when there's nothing there to make you feel that way. Like you're not poisoned by food anymore. You don't have to feel sick. But you remember that and so you feel sick. Ah, Anctus can't sleep on a boat. Yeah, I know that. Right. Yeah, rough seas in returns. Okay. Wow. Luxionica, uh, did you do it for, for pleasure or were you guys competitors? Aren't there a lot of rogue waves? No, not a lot. No, it's they. Rogue waves exist, for sure. For sure. 
but there's not a lot of them and they don't seem i was just actually watching a video about them the other day they don't seem to be linked to anything that we can use to predict basically it's not like oh when the temperature is this way and the wind is this way and the waves are this way right we've linked those to to look every time there's a rogue wave those temperatures no we haven't been able to find a pattern so they seem completely random so it does not happen just where the oceans meet and by the way guys there are no different oceans right it's all one big ocean it's all one big connected water body we gave it different names and of course they feel different because of the geographic uh, uh you know influences that they have but there's no different ocean right i did it with a charity then was offered a volunteer instructor role whoa they liked you it was a week sailing with races we entered into occasionally that's awesome dude that sounds really great that's why they're called rogue exactly but i mean sion they could have been called rogue until we figured out you know until we figured out you know what caused them and then they're no longer rogue but no they're still rogue we're using the sexton for fun in the years past it was the the one only two in the middle of winter in north pacific to steer you they prayed for a little opening in the sky to shoot a star can you imagine in the winter where it's like overcast most of the time and you can't shoot a position for days and days you don't really know where you are and you're like what are you talking about you had a position before you have your heading and you know how long it's been yeah have you heard of ocean currents you know haha <laughs> cold you got it exactly exactly day it's amazing the number of things that like if we just thought about it if we really got serious about it sat down and thought about it we'd come up with but we don't and then it happens we're like wow what was that and then you know we we like investigate you're like oh yeah that makes sense it's this and this and then and, and, and it led to that subsonic it's going amazing dude it is going amazing gamer pet thank you very much for the sub dude appreciate that guys good time to say this excuse me good time to say this this is my full-time job i'm a full-time streamer so i do man sorry i do appreciate you considering subscribing to the channel what i want what i really want is your presence right money is uh, i don't like money i'll be honest i don't like money but we all need it what i want is for people to be here for people to interact for us to have great conversations if you donate to the channel man that's a cherry on top that's a cherry on top and of course i live off of these uh, uh donations so it's an important thing but i don't want i never want people to feel bad because they didn't donate or they can't donate right that's not how this works how this works is you're here i'm here and we have an interaction that's how this works if you donate to the channel fantastic i love you even more for it but please 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 don't feel bad if you can't donate if you haven't donated now if you want to donate september is a great time to do it because there's 20 percent off for subscriptions gifted in september but other than that i just love you guys being here so thank you yeah exactly i five planes don't worry about it dude don't worry about it at all all right guys 29 minutes before the next shot engagement is key exactly steve exactly and honestly that's why i come back because i love talking to you guys don't get me wrong i love flying but i don't have to do it on stream i could do it by myself right but i love interacting with you guys i really do man so you know one thing it, it's a win-win really duracell conet thanks for the follow man appreciate that and same for ollie two-tone and well bagel parking already thanked you guess what second thanks i'm thanking you again <laughs> somehow my aircraft crashed oh subsonic not sure what happened as i was away from keyboard okay subsonic you know that you can load up again in flight did you know that oh tyler posted pics thanks kieran did you know that you don't have to load at an airport if you're friends with somebody in flight sim you see them as a green little aircraft in the 
in the map, on the map, and you can click on them and uh, spawn where they are. So if you're friends with any of us, you can still do this. Oh my god, Hive Train is closed because Rodopsin just donated 100 bits. So I'm just saying, if anybody else wants to donate, a Hive Train would be kicked off with the next donation. So it's a good time to think about it. Ori, is that a link, buddy? If it is a link, you gotta drop that in stream links. Otherwise, we can't see it. Um, where is the sextant? Is it in uh, real world, in real life pics and vids? <gasps> it is Tyler, my buddy. My, oh my god. Then we had Sanju with 100 bits. Then Steel Rain. Give, hey, Steel Rain. I haven't seen you in a bit, man. Maybe you've been lurking. It's good to see you. Gave out a tier 1 sub to complete freedom, and then Joe works with your 100 bits. Let's go, Cold Nebo with 100 bits. And just like that, a level 1 hype train has been slayed. And we're, all, we're working a level 2 hype train. Thank you, guys. That's amazing. That is amazing. And John TBM, resubscribe for four months. Thanks for the great content. Thanks for the great watching. Let's be honest. It takes two to tango, Zeta. It takes two to tango, buddy. Or oh, sorry, John. And Zeta with 100 bits. That's why I said Zeta. All right. Wow, Tyler. That is a beautiful instrument. Very simple, yet classic. Look, this is Tyler's... So, Tyler, uh, explain this a little bit to me, buddy. Oh, oh, look, you can still read the numbers. Is this... You said it's your uh, grandfather's? And, and why did he have a sextant? All right, Luxionica, we'll do some extra stuff in there, I guess. Whoa. How cool is this? How cool is this? So, yeah, look. This right here. See this hand? This is the hand that points that you move, right? Up and... Or, sorry, forward and back. To determine the altitude in degrees of the star that you're shooting. Hey, Savannah, what's going on? Martel! Thank you very much, Martel. Martel moving that level 2 peg up to 61%. Let's go. Thank you very much. Chaco, enjoy this sub you just got from Martel. Good to see you too, says Steel Rain. Thanks, buddy. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, timer's going off. You know what that means? It's time to check our fuel, because our ox tanks are almost empty. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Look how empty those outside ones are. Look, that's 200 pounds. So we're at pretty much like 30 or so pounds, right? So for engines one and four, I'm definitely switching to main right now. Cold in Minnesota giving out five tier one subs. Holy moly, dude. One and four are on main now. I'm gonna burn these guys. Look, that's 100 pounds. That's like 10 minutes. I'm gonna run five minutes. I'm gonna run a five minute timer. Five minute timer. And then I'm gonna turn the other uh, tanks. Oh my God. Cold in Minnesota. Thank you very much for that, dude. Dude, you took us to a level 3 hype train and mad birds 100 bits took us to 90% of a level 3 alright guys hey come on let's at least close out the level 3 I don't need a level 5 I don't need a level 5 I love a level 5 but I don't need one let's at least close out the level 3 90% we can do this that's easy that's easy whew alright oh nice hi camber I find it a bit odd that all you guys are to the left when I think that I'm to the left of the course. But who knows? Who knows? BT Monster! 300 bits got us done on the level 3. Got us into the level 4. Thank you very much. Ventox, thanks for the follow. And of course, Ben from Germany with a tier 1 sub giving out to Dennis. Right? Let's see. Got us to a... Oh! 26% 20, of the level 4. Awesome. Ben, thank you very much, man. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. I think with 314 people watching, I think there might be a mad lad out there that's going to complete this level 4. There might be one. I'm not really sure. 
cold. The hype is building indeed. Is building indeed. All right, quick check. Little hot, little hot, little too hot. Eh, number two. And number three. Number two and three, I'm going to open up the cow one click because they're a bit too hot. Other than that, pretty good oil temperatures, pretty good oil pressures, fuel pressures. Whoa, engines three and four are a little bit high. They should be at 142. Let's bring them back. There we go, 142 and 142 here too. There we go. Otherwise, we're going to end up using too much fuel. So that's nice. So that's nice. Hey, Zerg. All fabites. <laughs> Transatlantic high train. Guys, 3 minutes, 20 seconds. 26% of level 4. Are we not moving this level 4? Is that it? Really? Okay. Hey, Sleepless. How's it going, buddy? I'm doing great. I hope you're doing great. What's the weather like in Brazil? I fly planes. Good question. Good question. Let's find out. Oh, look at that. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. Hold on. Hold on, all you crazy people. I'll go back to you. The weather in Brazil is great, right? Winds 140 at 21 knots. Hard wind, but look at the runway. The runway is like 14, so that's why the runway is like that, is because the wind normally blows that way, so we're good. We're good. 14021. Oh my god, it's almost a level 5 hype train! Okay, hold on. 14021. Visibility greater than 10 kilometers. Scattered 3300. And temperature 30. Dew point 21. QNH 1013. Very good temperature. Ve or sorry, very good weather, right? Very good weather in Brazil. Alright, now let's see what you crazy people have done here. What what just happened? Alright, so user 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 6, 5, no. I'm gonna try that again. User 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 6, 6, 5, 6. Phew, almost didn't get that. Hey, buddy, thanks for the follow. Dan, it's they gifted a subscription to Cyborg. Thank you very much. Right, tier 1 sub. Tier 1 sub, Rodobson gifted one to Chox. Then Sanjay came in. Five tier 1 subs, just like that. Thanks, Sanjay. That's awesome. Zeta subscribed at tier 1. Thank you, Zeta. I feel like I earned that. Then. Martel with 100 bits, Rebel with 200 bits, Rebel Bassett with 200 bits, Cold Nebo with 200 bits, and Madbird with 100 bits, and we are at 97% of a level 5 hype train. Okay. Sorry. Did, oh. MBT Monster. I was gonna say, come on. Come on. We're literally 100 bits away. Boom. Level 5. Oh, what a community you guys are. What a community. Thank you, BT Monster. Thank you, everyone else who donated. You guys are amazing. Amazing. Just amazing. <laughs> Look, Sionica. Uh, all right, guys. 20 minutes away from our next shot. Mm. I do have a video I want to watch with you guys. And, uh, okay, timer's going. Okay. I could have used a little bit more, but it, this one is getting pretty low. It's using more than that. Let's just switch and not be not be greedy, right? Whoa, 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 whoa. Well, that was weird. Paul flies with the under bits. Oh my God! Thank you so much, Paul flies. Thank you so much, buddy. Here we go. Main. Whoops. No, 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 no. You go back and you go forward. There we go. Paul, thank you very much, man. I appreciate that. Oh my god, apocalypse. No, that's not... I can't do it. I can't do that. I can't not do that. All right, engine's all working okay, so let's turn the pumps off. You know what? I probably shouldn't have left those pumps on, huh? On the main tanks. Whoops. Guys, I need a bathroom break. I'm gonna go do that. Ah, 110% of a level 5 hype train. Let's go! You guys are amazing. Amazing. All right. Uh, when I get back, I'm gonna put a little video here for the uh, for our entertainment. But when I get back... No. 
There's a video I want to watch, but it's a long one. And it's a serious one. But I do want to watch it. So for now... Oh, this is a good one. I wonder how many people have heard of this plane. I'll be right back. slug it out in the open, while still others use the skies above the water as their battlefield. This is the story of the United States Navy's Sea Dart, the world's first supersonic water-based interceptor, designed and built to fly and fight beyond the speed of sound designed to operate on its own special runway, four-fifths of the world. The story begins in the summer of 1946, a time of importance in aviation history. During this year, a jet plane flew from Long Beach to New York in four hours and a new world's record. Also in 1946, the first jet fighter in naval history landed on a carrier's deck at sea. And at San Diego, California, engineers took the first step toward the development of a jet aircraft that could land and take off on water. From their drawing boards came the initial plan. But like all new ideas, acceptance did not come easily. Steel Rain, you can send me a friend invite. I'll accept and then you can spawn on me, buddy. <laughs> Those who said jet aircraft could not operate nice. on water. Landing speeds would be too great. Too much drag on takeoff. Too much shock on landing. Always Spray abnormal. Spray would drown jet engines. These men took all these problems in stride and came up with a plausible design. But it was all on paper. Seriously, a, a waterborne fighter jet. What? What? <laughs> Mr. 90. We hit 127%. Some... <gasps> cannot get good. Oh my god, cannot get good subscribed. Dude, thank you so much, cannot get good. That's amazing. Ben, November. Thanks for the follow. Same for Calm Horizons. Guys, we are 110 followers away from 7,000 followers. Balsa wood instead of aluminum spars. Cloth skin, not stainless steel. I fly planes, that's amazing. If you want to be a real a pilot, that's going to make this all model, the difference, buddy. This model, true scale and weight, length and span, was called the Skate. Its performances under simulated flight conditions would furnish the information needed to do the impossible. Opening up new fields in hydrodynamics and jet aircraft construction. I mean, think about it. Our waterborne fighter. The testing phase was routine, but intense. To an outsider, the program might look like men at play. And in a way, the outsider would be right, because the excitement was there. Two solid years of it. The excitement was but there. But this was no game. Each launching was preceded by hundreds of pages of calculations and hmm. estimates. And each launching meant revisions hmm. and corrections. Ooh, that was not a good one. Oops. Hayden! Let's go, Hayden! Thank you very much, dude. Look at that, I feel like planes. Look at that. 
Look at all the testing, guys. Isn't that cool? Look, that's a camera. Yeah, recording the aircraft being towed along, right? The model Your being towed along. Hydrodynamics, spray studies, and stall characteristics were evaluated, reduced, and added to the growing story. Two solid years of changes, each change in design bringing the aircraft closer to perfection. All of the airplanes represented by yeah, these Dobson. one tenth scale models would work. Look at all the, the different model shapes that was they tried. Would have to be perfect, and these men couldn't draw straws. Look, me, I'm dead. <laughs> You're not dead yet. Hello, sir. Engines were added for flight evaluation, taxi performance. So they went from Small models with no engines to models with models engines. To give the engineers remote control. Right. And structural changes were made to keep the models true scale and weight. What's that? And the testing went on. I Each run so. made no. under different no, trim, attitude, and speed. Sorry, guys. Finally, there's a little bit of background noise. Years, as Abby worked. And dishes in the kitchen. Work, a model was selected that met all the you requirements. Went. Tests were conducted on a proposed method of carrying and launching this aircraft. <laughs> yeah, Cold Nebo, for sure. Yes, I have, Jacob. But yes, I have. I on, have it for the sim. It's amazing. In Muroc, California, that foretold the doom of the skate. A land-based fighter made its first flight. This airplane, a supersonic interceptor, had several radical improvements in airplane the design. The skate, foremost of which was the triangular or delta wing. Supersonic flight was routine. Thanks, Austin. The engineers I think it's still nice to apologize. You know. The swept wing of the skate not designed for supersonic flight sorry interrupting this scheduled program to give you an update so jay weasel just asked baby if you passed your real estate test and i'm gonna tell him that no the test actually was uh postponed um maintenance issues the building yeah yeah so apparently the building, uh, the things that happen in life, the building that she was going to take the test in had some maintenance issues. They didn't say what they were. They just had maintenance issues. So they postponed the test. It was going to be the day before yesterday. It was going to be Friday. It was going to be yesterday. Um, so she couldn't take it. So now they're they're scheduling. It. Has it been rescheduled? They didn't reschedule it for me. They just of course. Yeah, that's how it was. Awesome. So, of course, they don't reschedule for you. They just cancel for you. Of course. Because they can't reschedule everyone. Yeah. That time. Yeah, they don't want to take the time. So the ones that... Yeah. Right. So, she's going to reschedule it. Um, is it going to be in a different building, then? I have to go and get the schedule. Oh, I got you. The one that got canceled was the closest one to us, geographically. So, now she's going to have to reschedule. She might have to go somewhere else. Thanks, Weasel. Thanks for asking, man. I appreciate you asking. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if you guys can hear her, but she said she said she's going to let you guys know when she's done it. All right. So thanks for asking. Back to the sea dart. The vast or the scale. store of information proved valuable. In the development of the super... Sorry, I was taking a drink. I just realized, look, he finishes closing up the files on the sea dart and he grabs a pipe. I just we think that's escaped. hilarious. Not designed for supersonic flight. Mr. Pilot, whoa. Again, I feel like I own that. I, I earned that. You've been here for a while. The development of the supersonic Thank you. Sea dart. Yeah, you saw that, Didrick? <laughs> whoa, look at that. Hydro skis developed by the National Advisory Committee Whoa, on Aeronautics. That was pretty cool. Coupled with a Delta wing. Nice cash the combination was compatible from the start. Guys, we have seven minutes before the next shot. It looks a little bit like the Mirage, Here right? With the Delta wing. Of the first tests at NACA. Oh, Zerg, what is it? It was launched under carefully controlled conditions, and the hydro ski Delta wing concept was found to be practical. Ah, the amount of testing, you know, that goes into something like this. Look at that, hitting a wave. Right? 
you got to think about waves if you're going to Again, operate in water. the engineers were called upon to come up with the answers. They had help this time. The old skate had cleared away a lot of timber, and the men were moving down a well-beaten path. Good idea, There were a few pitfalls, and they had to be bridged. The Flying Dorito. And here in a model small enough to be picked up in a man's hands lay the answers. Stay in the pattern. The response is touch and go. To oh, you got to file that zerg. Look at that. How can a pilot control the powerful thrust of jet engines on a liquid runway? Liquid How would it respond runway. in flight? And what about spray damaging jet engines? Oh, that's awesome, These Apocalypse. These questions had to be answered, and the model was the sounding board. That's awesome, man. Glad to hear that. So this, this, by the way, this, what's happening right now, is what I love about humankind, is our ability to be like, hey, we want to do something. Like what? I want to fly a fighter jet off the water. What? Why? Oh, here's the reasons. Oh, okay. Well, well then let's do it. Okay. Then we, we start figuring out how to do it because we've never done it before, right? And so I love this whole phase of like testing and ingenuity and innovation, right? And mistakes, that comes up when you're testing a new idea like this. I think it's fascinating. Thing went on, years of it. Emphasis Look at shifted that. to hydrodynamics as new ski designs were tried. Look at that. That's just to test the ski design. That whole contraption. Just to test the ski design. Ah, oh, that's fascinating. Testing was rigorous. Different types of skis were mounted on a skeletal frame called a pantograph. Delicate and sensitive, each shock absorbed by the ski was pulsed back on electric fingers to be recorded for future reference. Carried by a powerful speedboat crammed with electronic gear, the engineers recorded ski penetration, planing angles, friction, and the many other unknown factors related to this problem in hydrodynamics. We know skis work. We've been water skiing. But they're measuring stuff because one of the things they have to... To design is how strong the skis in the rear aircraft have to be right well that depends on how big the bumps are going to be depends on how much force is going to be passed through it that's why they're testing this was followed by the full-scale mock-up phase and finally production was started on the prototype More paperwork, more planning. And the Delta configuration began ah, to take Duane, shape. 58. And so they're aluminum spars now, not balsa wood. I'm Stainless sorry, lost steel it. instead of fabric. No more scale model engines, but the real thing. Oh, here Chain we go. Now... Power plants capable. So now we feel confident enough to move to full scale. Full, when you move to full scale in testing, it's a huge deal. Huge deal. Of 8,000 pounds thrust. A complex electronic nervous system, not a small one tube radio. Almost time for the shot, and I'm gonna do the shot myself, and you guys keep watching the video. Thanks, Dwayne. <laughs> Shots of the sun, baby. Transforming a dream on paper into reality. He walks by, she goes, oh, you guys are doing shots? Okay. This is where know-how <laughs> pays <laughs> dividends. An airplane skillfully assembled in a hurry-up program quietly... North Europe, Diedrich. ...more than 20 years' experience... And you can always... ...in the always construction of water-based aircraft. Do this in chat. The bot will tell you. Yeah, it is Saturday day. You're right about that. Here we go. Under the cover of darkness, the research airplane was moved from its restricted area to a hangar. Oh, that looks that looks San promising Diego already. Bay. The shape the looks giant promising. Was about to awaken. <laughs> Dwayne sounds good. Thanks, Hayden. I appreciate it. 
Navy. Yank those wires out of there, those cables out of there. There are yeah. new experiences on Earth which can equal the things crowding in on a test flight staff or the designers of a new airplane at a moment such as this. I agree. I've seen a few first flights. I've been lucky enough to see a few first flights of aircraft that were designed, right? And yeah, it's like, look, it's a bet, right? You're betting on your own ability to understand nature. That's what it is. At the end of the day, that's what you're doing. You're saying, hey, I feel like I understand nature enough to design a, a machine that can do this, right? And that's not going to kill its pilot. So it's a very special moment when you fly an aircraft for the first time. The lump is there yeah, the exactly, Grand the Theft. That's exactly right. But one you designed, one that didn't just happen, nothing more that people right? Sure can do. No more time for another check. No more time for one last adjustment. This is the exactly, payoff. Julian. Here, look at the spray the first from the jet history, engine. That's just the above the water. Seaplane met the water runway from which it was designed to operate. I fly planes. Oh my God, and you're so lucky. Moved away from shore, A B-29. The hopes and the dreams oh. of the engineers and craftsmen who made this moment possible. I know, Dwayne. That's so crazy. Man, the test pilot. Whose mission it was look at look at how beautiful that looks. Give it how majestic that looks. Use. Take it to the breaking point. Ring it out. Early testing was confined to San Diego Bay, the proving ground for other radical seaplanes. This Damn it! Thank you! Oh. <laughs> okay, ten seconds late again. 10 seconds late again. I think we're gonna be okay. Ah. Thank you. Thank you for reminding me. <laughs> no, no, Mr. Pilot, it's taxiing. Have you seen a boat moving around at slow speed, how it sits on its back like this, right? Then when it starts going fast, it goes on the step, is what we call the step. It sits up like this, and then it's like bouncing over the water on the step. Same thing here. Zeta, this noise that's happening right now, we're taking a shot of the sun. We're measuring how high the sun is above the horizon, and that's how we're doing the celestial navigation that's telling us how to find our destination. This plane was completely new. Her performance could not be predicted by comparing her with earlier designs. Except for one tenth scale model, she was the first. And it was the pilot's job to ring her out. <laughs> That's right, so There were many <laughs> items to be considered. Taxi performance, vibration. Guys, stability, this is a fighter, a jet the use of the water fighter rudder, taxiing on water. Spray rail, breaker strip, skeg. New names for new equipment. Only the pilot could tell if the instruments and switches were within easy reach. Only the pilot could tell if the ship would feel right to the Navy pilots who would be oh, flying. Oh, oh, little oscillation there. And on Very the high runs, angle of attack. The ship seemed to strain to rise into the air. But the pilot had to complete the checkout list before the go-ahead to take her up. Ah, got it. Oh, you got it. Yeah, yeah, got it, Mr. Pilot. Okay, got it. Look at this. Look how beautiful this is. Shots done. Yeah, I know, Inver Terrence. Isn't that insane? Like the insane. April, 1953, they didn't the care. Moved into position they did off. not care. Synchronize our watches here. <laughs> Natalia. I know, Julian. I know. Here we go. Look. It's gathering speed. Oh, it's planing nice. Look, it's now level. It's level on its skis. It's looking good. It's looking good. Still kind of slow, though. Oh, look over there. <laughs> I heard that. 
Oh, it's airborne. It is airborne. I know, right? I fly planes. It's crazy to think that. Did you see the skis retracting? Look at that. Retraction right now. Boom. Skis are in. Now it's a plane. It was a boat. Now it's a plane. Yay, Verteris. We I missed that time. We lost our way. Engineering-wise, we kind of lost our way, didn't we? He's climbing. That's good news. Hey, I was just going to say, I was just going to say, he looks a little underpowered. That's why I said it's good news that he's climbing, right? <laughs> Julian. <laughs> a pretty sight to the people below, but there was more work to do. Coming in for a landing. The flight test program was moved to the open sea, five miles off the Southern California coast. Ooh, waves. The that, that what that means is many waves. design improvements were made until one major problem remained. Pilot reports indicated the twin ski undercarriage could be improved. Okay. The engineers then decided Guys, I'm gonna to mute it for a minute because it's gonna be noisy over here. Arrangement on the research airplane. of this design were obvious. The single and ski provided back. improved takeoff performance. Oh, single ski. airplane weight, less vibration. The pilots liked her. Her new engines kicking out 10,000 pounds of thrust, riding the water like a bobsled. New Clean, engine, probably more powerful. Deadly, fast, right? fast enough to leave her and behind her. single and ski. built to take it. That's right, Dwayne. Yep. Oh, look at that big ski, man. And it has suspension on it, too. You know, it has a spring on it. And a damper. Yeah, Dieter. Um, you know, it was one of those ideas where, like, hey, wouldn't it be great if we had a fighter that could just operate out of the water? Then you don't need airports. You know? Oh, he jumped in the air. Did you see that? It actually jumped. Look, right there. Boom. And it jumps. Nice. Ground effect. Needs more power. More power. And it's slowly climbing. But man, that's slow. Man, that's slow. Oof. Saves money on carriers, yeah. Well, Nebo, I don't think I've ever watched that. The United States Navy's yeah, Skylane, you're right about that. To be carried unfortunate. New it's unfortunate weapon. that it's only down to, to a few people. To be launched with surprise against any aggressor from any ocean on Earth. To be launched from an unseen base without fear of retaliation. Oh, they made it work, yes. It never really worked. Like it wasn't efficient and at what it did, so it never got deployed. The but they got it to work. Scramble in all directions from lakes, rivers, reservoirs, or bays. Full squadrons can be airborne. With yeah, exactly, people. Respond as a unit in an answer to a red alert. Yeah, Hayden. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. No, sorry, sorry. Who can name her designer? He is legion. He is an organization of 1,000 Oh, yeah. In the U.S., for and sure. 15,000 yeah. craftsmen. Who alone can tell the story of the struggle, the disappointments, and the final triumph when the impossible took to the water 
and lift it off into the pages of aeronautical history. Honey, I'm going to be a little late tonight, but hold dinner for me, please. When John Poindexter... <laughs> so, there you go. The sea dart. And I think a lot of you guys probably didn't know the sea dart, right? Oh. That's not... Nope. That's not what we're listening to. Never mind. Never, never you mind. Never you mind. <laughs> All right. So I'm cleaning up the form so we can do the next shot here. Oh, Hayden, thank you. Hayden, uh, is your not is your name different on uh, Twitch? Hmm. Really? It hasn't come through yet then. Hold on. Send it on Discord because I found you on Twitch and... Hold on a second, hold on a second, hold on, hold on, hold on. I got it, I got it, I got it. It's the conveyor, right? The sea dart like the Wikipedia page? Is that what it is? Yes, yes, okay. Weird. So, it didn't have, a, uh, you know, the little red, you know, circle with like the unread bubble. It didn't have that by your name. As a matter of fact, your name wasn't on the list. I had to search for Hidden UK, and then I found you. No red, like, little warning. And then, but I clicked on your name, and then it had the two links. Weird. Well, sleepless, we have to do some calculations right now to figure out where we are, and we need some corrections, so. I'm gonna get busy doing that. Alright, so. 1550 was the next one, right? There we go. Swing this up. So the GHA is gonna be, well, 59. There we go. Declination, 0, 1, 36, 37. We're going to round up to 37. So 0, 1, 37. Okay, so declination is going to be north. 0, 0, 1. Oh, no. Just 0, 1. 37. Right? Okay. Got it. And our latitude and longitude. We need to, to find out what the whoops what the assumed one was and for this waypoint it was right here so it was one south 25 west one south 25 west so south one degree west 25 degrees right Yep, that's it. All right. <clears throat> Hayden. You're not joking. They are amazing. They are amazing. 59. Whoops. Zero degrees. There we go. Uh, which means our longitude is going to be west 25 degrees. Which is then going to make this 
LHA is this minus this, right? So 25, 29, 60, 84 degrees. So AJ or LHA is 84 degrees. Okay. Hang on one second, guys. All right, guys. Uh, no, it's fine. Uh, Abby was asking me because we've gone plant-based for most of our diets. Uh, we're not vegan. We're not vegetarian. We still eat meat. But most of what we eat is plant-based. And so she was asking me if I wanted plant-based for lunch or not. And because it's the weekend, I said, yes, we're going to have some sausage. Oh, yes, sauce. Or sassin. Absolutely. Guys, I'm sorry if you're flying um, formation with me. I'm going to pause for a second so I can accept some invites. Here we go. CNN, TJ, Sassen, and Steel Rain. Got all of you guys. Yeah, Steel Rain, right? Steel Rain, Abby likes your, uh, Abby likes your name. She thinks it's pretty cool. Okay, let's finish this up then. Uh, we gotta go to tables now. Oh, wrong one. There we go. Nope, wrong one. There we go. Alright, so, forget this guy, right? Forget this guy. We are currently... Uh, it's gonna be one south, right? So it's latitude one. But it can't be the same. It has to be contrary. Because we are on the south and the sun is on the north. Okay. Now we look at our um, LAJ84... So, 84. Not here, but it's going to be on the right side, maybe? Oh, here we go. 84. All right. Let's make a little square around it or a rectangle around it. 84. There we go. And the sun's declination is still between 1 and 2, but it's closer to 130 now. It's still 140, but it's closer to 130. So we're still going to go two-thirds of the way between 1 and Oh, what? I used the wrong page. I used the wrong page. This is declination. Hold on. Let me zoom out. Declination 15 to 29. I don't need that. I don't need that. I need 0 to 1, 4. Yeah, there we go. Contrary, okay. 84. Here we go. Contrary, 84. Okay. Now, now we got it. There we go. That's way better. All right. So we're still between one and two. We're still closer to two. Two thirds, right? <laughs> Zerg. That's good. All right. So let's write down H, C, D, and Z. And we got an H, C of 559, 558. Okay. It's 558 because it's closer to the 558. Man, that's really, really close to zero. Minus 1, minus 2, it's minus 0, 2. And 91, 92, it's 92. All right, so Z is 92. And if you remember, up here, it's going to say right there. Right? If LAJ is less than 180, and our LAJ is 84, ZN is 360 minus Z. Okay, so we got Z 92. Okay, so 268. 268 is our ZN. 
268 degrees. Got it. Well, it shouldn't be that low, right? I thought it was kind of weird. Wait a second. Wait a second. I fully agree. LAJ 84. Hmm. So we had a GAJ of 59. Right? But I mean, that's only on the declination of the sun. And the declination of the sun is 137 right now. And so 137, we got latitude 1, because that's where we are. Wait, Celestial, okay, hold on. 59 minus 25. Is that what happened? Minus 25 is 84. Right. Wait. Wait. Did I do the minus, 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 so I added it? So it's minus 25, so it's really 34. Is that what it is? That would make sense, because look, at an LAJ, contrary of 34, the sun would be 54. Yeah, that makes way more sense. That makes way more sense. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So this is 34. And then this here... Forget this. It's going to be 34 on contrary, right? 34. Yeah, that makes way more sense. Celestial, thank you so, so much, buddy. That was amazing. 34. Okay. All right, between one and two. Now, now we've got some numbers that we can work with. Celestial, thank you so, so much, dude. That was an amazing catch, amazing catch. All right, 55, 57, 55, 52, that's five. I'm gonna go with six, so two, so 54. 55, 54. Okay, minus five, minus five, so minus five. And 93 to 95. I'm going to go with 94. Okay. Okay. So. ZN. Oh. And remember, it's 360 minus that Z of 94. Right? So, 266. 266. We got that right. Yeah. AJ then is going to be 55 degrees, 54 minutes. Okay. Which means an HC of 55, 49, 55 degrees, 49 minutes. And what did we measure? 55, 47. Okay, so 55, 47, this minus that is going to be away, but it's going to be away by uh, two minutes, two miles. Wow, that's crazy. Zero degrees, zero, oops, two minutes, which is going to be two miles, and it's away, so it's going to be... 266086. 086, two miles. 086, two miles. From that assumed position of one south, 25 west. Yes. So let's create that position here. Whoops. One south. 25 west, right?
There. Okay. So, 0, 8, 6, 2 miles. Zero eight six two miles. All right, and now I'm going to do a line of position. So it's going to be three five six. There we go. And over here on waypoint three, I'm going to do the, the ring. Okay, and now. Measure distance, 90 degrees. Okay, look at this. Guys, I think I'm here. Oh, hold on. Maybe here. Wow, I'm so close. I'm so close to the route. We're going to add our user waypoint. It's the estimated at 1550. Whoa. Whoa. Okay. So, now... Nine, uh, 90... Do 12 30 okay 12 to 30 is about there okay so I'm gonna go over here user points uh, it create a waypoint there 243 that works okay so that's my next waypoint so now I just need to do this measure distance from here to here 260 265 okay 265 then is what I need to fly to get there we're flying 262 let's go to 265 Woo, man Mountain Man had a 22 day hour day yesterday. Oh my god, dude. Are you okay? Are you okay? 260. Oh, am I turning the wrong way? No, I'm not. Wait. Why was it doing that? Okay, now it's working. Weird. 265 is what I'm looking for. Hey, Augie. How's it going, man? Augie, I'm doing great, buddy. Thank you. How are you? 265. We're going to hit the uh, the little metal arc here. And there. Oh, man. I think I am doing pretty well on this navigation. So, Mountain Man, how was your training? Do you like it? Do you love it? I'm so oh oh you're right here's what I forgot this is where I looked up my numbers right but then remember I went to north latitude yeah I'm at south latitude so LAJ less than 180 and we are ZN is 180 plus Z 180 plus Z okay So ZN is 180 plus Z. Our Z was 94. So 180, um, 274. Is that right? 274 for the ZN. Hey, slow. What's going on? Yeah. 274 okay that works so once we've done this this stuff works too so i guess it's only on the on here that i have to make a change right so 274 uh is gonna be 094 Wait, how many miles? Was that only two miles? One, two, 
Why? Oh, from the assumed position. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Zero nine four, so four degrees. True. There. That's ninety, right? And then we get this guy, and we make the ninety with the circle. Okay, so I guess my waypoint would be there. Check image and screen links to understand uncertainty in these observations. Okay. All right. All right, so talk us through this. Talk us through this. The 1450, the 1550, got it. Yeah. 250 knots, which makes sense, right? So the wind isn't changing that much. But here... Hmm. Right. That's, yes. That's how I feel, too. That's how I feel, too. All right. 30 minutes before the next shot. Hey, B-Mint. How's it going? Well, B-Mint, uh, it's going pretty well. I hope... There we go. Oh, okay. I guess I'm just going to go with this. Okay. So, B-Mint, um, I think it's going well. I'm going to say it's going well. I'm going to pump you up with positive vibes. I'm going to say it's going really well. I am right on course and I'm going to find Natal no problem. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Biment, how are you doing today? What, what are you doing on this Saturday in Germany? Because you're living Germany, right? And I know that uh, you're waiting for this flight, but we still have whatever, you know, two hours to go. Um, what are you doing today, B-Mint? The England update. Augie, I kind of did. It's not very in-depth. That's why I'm saying like, kind of, yeah. I'm adulting. Tomorrow stores are closed. No way to get groceries. Oh, why are they closed tomorrow? Is it a holiday? What's going on? <laughs> Sendero. No, they'll be charged. Sendero, they'll be charged by the time I get there. Cold in Minnesota, giving me Mint a subscription. Thank you very, very much. Underscore in underscore Minnesota Wait, Sunday always in closed in. here. Like, they have given twenty-one like, gift subs. Is that a German channel. thing? What? I know, right? Do you guys close all the stores on Sunday? What? That's when people can go shopping. It's all over the EU. What? Sunday, all stores close. It's a Christian land, it says Asutex. Yes, in Norway too. It's a Christian thing. Yeah, Chick-fil-A closes here, yeah? Wait a second. Are you guys telling me that in most of Europe, stores are closed on Sundays? So if I want to go grocery shopping, I cannot go grocery shopping on Sunday? What? Celestia is saying, hey, here in Netherlands, we don't subscribe to that. We open the stores. What? Yep, we crazy, says Ben. <laughs> oh my, right. That's what I'm saying, Sanja. Like way back in the day, I remember that used to be the thing. But like nowadays? Sunday's closed. Nope, you can't. What? That is insane. That is insane. Guys, don't get me wrong. I also think you should rest on a Sunday. But I also think that people that have to do laundry, people that want to buy potatoes, whatever. Right? Those people should be able to do that too. Yeah. 
Interesting. That is so interesting, guys. In Ireland, stores are open, yeah? It's day. That's why I say that, right? It's because people work through the week. So they normally do their grocery shopping on Saturday and Sunday. Now, the Germans that came up with the Sunday clothes, they're going to say, well, then do your, you know, Saturday is open all day, buddy. Do your shopping on Saturday. Wow. I think it's unfair on the staff to make them work on their Sunday pers uh, personally. Hayden, look, buddy. I get it. I know that that's one of the discussions, right? I also think that, yeah, Sunday is a family chill day. I also think that it's like this. Listen. At the end of the day is, is what do we want, right? If we want the conveniences, then things need to be open. And so if we as a society are okay with people working on a Sunday, then we should keep things open. And that's how it is in the US in most places. Some places do close on Sunday, Sundays in the US, but it's rare, right? Most places are open on Sundays in the US. But I, I think that what trumps most of these things is the fact that we, as a society, we have kept people so busy with their jobs, not their family lives, with their jobs, that often the only time people have to go shopping is on the weekends. And then, you know, if that's the case, I think narrowing it down to just one of the two days of the weekend, I think that's not, not okay. You know, I think... Hey, man, you should have the flexibility to do what you want to do on the two days off that you have. Basically, it's like this, right? People, most people only have two days off, Saturday and Sunday. If we kill one of those days off by not having shops open on Sunday and you can only do part of the stuff you do on Saturday, you're limiting people. So, <laughs> be mint. I know what you mean. I don't mind it. I would work on a Sunday. No problem. No problem. Because I know I'm providing a service to people that need it. You know what I mean? There is online ordering. Yeah. People don't need to physically attend a store. Right, Hayden. But that's only to certain places. Right? By the way, that's for grocery stores. What about, what about an art store? If I have an art store in Germany, can I open on a, on a Sunday if I want to? Coffee. Sassen, it's coffee. Really? Wow. So even if I don't I don't care, like I'm okay opening on a Sunday. I'm not allowed to open on a Sunday. Now you see what I'm talking about. Like if a woman's feminine product, what do you do? That's a good question. So what about an emergency? A woman needs feminine products. Because Nothing was happening, and then all of a sudden it hit, and now I need products. Where do I go? Okay, so gas station. Gas station stays open. Okay, so gas station is open. Restaurants and gas stations stay open. Well, Germans, I think... Abby said Germans have to be good planners. I think Germans are good planners naturally. I think it's in your jeans. Yeah, that's fascinating. Oh my god, under 100 square meters can be open on Sunday. That is a... yeah, Welsh, that's blowing my mind. In England, it's four hours. It's all over the place, guys. It's all over the place. <laughs> Looks, Yonica. <laughs> in Verteris, I don't know. I haven't been... I, I haven't lived in Brazil for a long time. For over two decades. So I don't know what's going on now. Yeah, you grew up with this. When I was a little kid, even on Saturday, shops would be open until 1 p.m. on Saturdays too. Yeah. What'd you say? I don't think they're watching. I don't think they're watching. Nav is great so far, Mephiston. We seem to be pretty, pretty close to the route. So I think we're okay. I think we're gonna, I think we're gonna find our destination. Right, Welsh, that's my question. How can a fuel station be open, but not a store? How do you determine what stays open and what, what gets closed? That's weird to me. 
And by the way, I don't think any of these things should be set by regulation, right? I think if you own a business, you should be able to open your business whenever you feel like. Hey man, if you can't sleep and it's two in the morning and you want to open your shop because you can't sleep, even though nobody's going to come up, who cares? Open your shop, right? We should be able to do those things. Exactly, Pibau. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. People are allowed to do gardening. That's what I'm saying, Boo. The government is deciding what can happen on a Sunday and what cannot happen on a Sunday. I don't think that's okay. I don't think that's okay at all. Slashing. What country is that in? Yeah, Ben. Bureaucracy. Oh, man. I'm not a fan. Not a fan. Big stores can afford extra stuff to operate seven days. Small stores cannot. They will lose clientele and close. I mean, I, that's logical. The government rules ends at the front door. So wait. So if I want to, I can open my shop. Is that what you're saying, Sasan? Yeah, Everterrans. Exactly. Private business should be able to be open. Right. It's my store. My. Doesn't belong to anyone else. Mine. Who cares if I open the door or not? You know what I mean? Don't get me wrong. I get it. It's like competition with the other stores that are not, not open. Well, that's their problem, isn't it? Mmm. You know what? What? Okay. Yes. This is, by the way, chat is going crazy. This is like a feisty subject. There's people on both sides of this. There's two different Wait, you made... What? I made, I made French, French for the kids. Guys, oh my it's, god. It literally took 15 minutes. It's it's biscuits from the store. Like it's Abby not. made breakfast. So there's two different types of biscuits that we could try different ones out. Two different types of biscuits. It's She's like, listen, it's a very simple breakfast. Two different yeah, types of biscuits. Stop. Um... So sometimes it's it's even if it's your business, it depends if you own the property or not. Because you can have a restriction in the deed when you go to buy a property that like if you can have this land, but if you um, break these these restrictions, then the land reverts back to whoever it owned it before. So like they literally have restrictions and they're saying you can own this property, but you cannot operate on Sundays, and then it legally it's binding. Wow. I mean, she's studying real estate, so obviously she's up. She's up on those regs, right? <laughs> Storm. She's got a point, though. Yeah, too old. I, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Well, Fornax, listen, I'm not saying don't have regulations. That's not what I'm saying. That's not okay, right? What I'm saying, and, and understand this from the perspective of a small shop owner. Let's say that I rely on my shop making money to be able to eat. And I would like to open on a Sunday because guess what? Me and my family were prepped to work on a Sunday. And you're not Christian. Yeah, and I'm not Christian. Thank you. Right? I think it's a little not okay for the government of any country to be able to tell me you cannot work on Sunday. And again, too old. I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. And I'm not saying this is simple. This is a... Thank you, baby. This is a tough conversation. But from a baseline sort of freedom perspective, I think it's screwed up that you tell somebody you own a business and today you can't open. You know? Yes, Hayden. I understand that too. I understand that too. But again... But again, that to me works itself out, right? If you start forcing your staff to work at 4 a.m., only the people that are okay with working at 4 a.m. are going to work for you. You know? The demand for your product remains the same, so you sell more the rest of the week. Maybe, but you don't know that. <laughs> Mr. Pilot. 
Right, so Zestran says, then the business that stays open outcompetes the one that doesn't, and then everyone works on is working on Sunday. Right. Zestran, that's called a free market. If you have a business and you don't want to open on Sunday, you don't open on Sunday. If you feel like you have to compete with the people that open on Sunday, that's because there's demand for Sunday business. Do you see what I'm saying? I don't want to work Sunday either, buddy. I'm with you. But if there's demand, there's business to be made. So who am I to say to somebody that's willing to work on a Sunday, you can't work on Sunday? You see what I'm saying? Oh, this is a tough subject. This is a tough subject. Mm-hmm. No, so I'm the opposite, Friday. Or fur day. Not allowed by the state because of that, right? No, I think you should allow people. If there's people willing to work on Sunday, let them. What about the people that don't want to work on Sunday? Well, they don't want to work on Sunday. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly, Anctus. That's what I'm trying to say. You can have Sunday jobs and still have worker rights. It's not one way or another. Exactly, Luxionica, exactly. So that's the thing, Everterris, right? It has to do with the state intervening to protect as it seems fit, right? That's the thing. The bottom, the bottom line of this conversation is, what is the reach of the state? Can the state tell me, a private business owner, that I can't run my business on a certain day or not? That's the discussion. Ooh, Zasran, that's odd. Hmm, I seem to be connected still. Maybe I'm just too far from you. <laughs> ah, right, so, too old for this. So this is where, to me, to me, this works itself out. Like, for example, your wife doesn't want to work on a Sunday. Or maybe she does, but there's no special comp compensation. Okay. Leave Sundays for the people that want to work on Sundays without additional compensation. Because those people are out there. When you have enough people... Look, the only reason I think you need these laws is because you work in a, in a town that only has 800 people. Because if you have 2 million people in a town, there is definitely going to be people that are willing to work at any time that you're open. Right? And those people are willing to work, so why I don't need to protect them. They want to do the job. I just need to open the door. You see what I'm saying? No, I'm not hating. I'm not going to stop people being forced to work on Sunday. Then, don't get a job that works on Sundays. You see what I'm saying? I think that that's how the market should be worked out. If you don't want to work on Sunday, go look for a job that doesn't work on Sundays. If you don't mind working on Sundays, get any job because some jobs are going to work on Sundays. Right. Exactly, Winnaker. That's what I'm trying to get at. Right, V2. I think I look at it differently because I am a pilot. Because I don't look at weekends differently than the week. It's just a day. It's like the sun came up, dude. Let's go work. You know what I mean? Man, chat's going nuts. I can't... I can barely read it. Oh, yeah, Braiders. I love talking about this stuff, man. It's hard to be it's hard to read everything. You guys are writing so much. That's not true, B Mint. That is not true. I know it seems that way, but it's not true. I know several businesses here in Columbus that make enough money during the week that they choose not to be open on Sundays and Saturdays. A lot of them are not open on the weekend at all. 
Could they be making more money? Yes. Do their owners care? No, they're already making enough money. So of course you're going to have the owners that are greedy and are going to work as much as possible every single minute of the day that's allowed by regulation. I'm going to work more works and I'm going to make the money. Great. Don't work for that person. Right? Go get a different job. Oh, there's lots of jobs here, B-Mint, where people choose happiness over money. Twelve minutes before the shot, by the way. I don't know, Zasran. I don't know if that's true. I don't know if that's true. Again, back to the people that are not out there to make the, uh, you know, the most amount of money you can with your business. With I understand most people do that, but some people don't. You know? And so now we're looking job opportunity. Not very easy in some small places. Yeah, Inverterrans. I agree. What I'm talking about is way easier to do in a big place than a small place. For sure. just is the share price. I agree. I agree. Man, this is a tough one, isn't it? By the way, that's why we're not politicians. Because a lot of these issues... Correct me if I'm wrong. Please, correct me if I'm wrong. I feel like a lot of these issues do not have great, clear, straightforward answers. It's all pros and cons. It's all a compromise. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for next. It's all compromise, right? And so, yeah, there's no side that you're like, oh, this is actually the best answer. By far the best. No, no. There's pros and cons. Hmm. They wanted the gem. Did you make this? That out of a can or? They're both just from cans. Okay. I didn't make any. I'm not into any of them. Blue is obsessed with both of them. Meaning, really? Are they different brands or different one's styles? One is flaky. One is jumbo butter. Ah, got it. Which one do you like better? I haven't tried the other one. Let me see. Hmm. That one. Wait, they're good together. Put one jelly with one. Mm. Oh, sorry, Luxionica. What? What? Is that real? And I have a mystery for you guys too. I have another mystery besides this one. Oh, wow. Oh, interesting. Thanks, Luxionica. I'm gonna read through that. What clear answers are there about any subject once you start looking into it? Well, Hayden, it depends. Some subjects definitely have easier answers than other subjects, right? Folktale, but great read. Thanks, Luxionica. So, guys, by the way, thanks for getting through that conversation in a civil manner. Because I know it's not easy, right? So, thank you. I really do appreciate that. Yeah, by the way, um, GamerTubeHD, I come from Brazil where guns are pretty much illegal also, and I live in the US where guns are legal, and I'm here to tell you, I think life's a lot better when guns are illegal. I don't think people should have guns. Guys, we're not, stuck. We're not starting the conversation. We're not. I'm, a, I'm about to show a video, okay? But I think guns, like the giving people the ability to buy a tool that allows them to take a life with one finger is too much power for the average person. I think it's too much. I think most people don't have the demeanor to own a gun, but that's me. 
Yeah, boo. Of course. But it's... It, yeah. But it's harder with a car. Way harder. All right. Moving on. I'm not going to talk about guns. Because that's not going to lead anywhere. But I want to show you guys a video I watched that really made me think. Really made me think. <laughs> For next. Exactly, buddy. Exactly. All right. Okay, here we go, guys. So, I have a shot in six minutes. So why don't we do the shot, and then I'll show you this mystery, because this mystery uh, is gonna end. I mean, the video is gonna end before the next shot. So I think it's probably a good idea if we pair them up. Oh yeah, Mr. Pilot. I understand that. I just don't think they should be as easy to get as they are. Again, to be fair, I'm not saying we shouldn't have guns and people shouldn't be able to buy guns. That's not at all what I'm saying. What I'm saying is there's a huge gulf between how we obtain guns today and how I think guns should be obtained. That's all. <laughs> you guys are all switching subjects. I love getting into the tough subjects. I really do. Yes, that's Ren. We don't have that. Right? You walk into Walmart and you buy a gun. That's how it works in the US. And that's all I'm saying, Mr. Pilot. That's all I'm saying. I, I am never going to be one that says people shouldn't have guns. That's not it. Ever. Because I'm one for freedom. Right? It's just that... We've seen it over and over and over in the US. It's way too easy to get a gun. That's all... That's all... I am saying. Four minutes, guys. <laughs> we can... We can buy guns on Sundays. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hayden, next we're going to talk about pineapples and pizzas. <laughs> well, Howie, whatever it is, whatever it is that happens, we end up with too much crazy people, too many crazy people with too many guns. That's the problem. Be meant, me too. I love pineapple and pizza. I love pineapple and pizza. Let's switch to that. Pineapple on pizza. As a matter of fact. As a matter of fact. All right, you got one minute. I just started a poll. Hit up the poll in chat. Pineapple on pizza, yes or no? Let's see it. Let's see it. And also, I got some kiwi. Look at this. Mmm. Denton, I think I've succeeded at that so far. I hope that's still happening. <laughs> Favorite terrace, I know. I know. And by the way, I love making pizza at home. I make my own dough. Then I make the pizza. And I love putting pineapple on pizza. Well, two-tone, I think anything should go on pizza. I don't have restrictions. It's like a it's like a it's like a burrito, right? A pizza to me is like a burrito. It's a food delivery system. What do you put inside? Whatever you're hungry for. I don't care. Chocolate, sure. Why not? Yeah. I've had chocolate pizza. I've had uh, Dulce de Leche pizza. I've had Goyabada pizza. I've had chocolate pizza. It's all awesome. 
Look at that, 54%. Oh my God, the world is divided. The world is divided. Not on Sundays. <laughs> That's awesome. That is awesome. Two minutes to the shot, guys. <laughs> Zerg. 54% of people are wrong, says Raiders. You know what I find really interesting is the fact that other people care about what other people eat. You know what I mean? It's like, who cares if that person is eating pineapple on their pizza? Obviously, they like it. That's why they're eating it. And there's this person to be going, oh, you shouldn't do that. Dude, who are you to tell that person what they can eat? You know? <laughs> I find it so funny. I find it so funny that people behave that way. Oh, I love anchovies, Rock. I love anchovies. Love anchovies. You know what, B-Mint? I have actually eaten cheese with maggots. And it was good. <laughs> Capers, too. Capers are amazing. Yeah. All right, time for the shot. Let's do this. 40 seconds to go. Nika Boss, I like medium rare. And I don't mind ketchup, but I don't need it. My pizza pine boss. But there are rules. This is not Nam. <laughs> Says Danton. All right, guys. Let's get ready for our next shot here. At 49, we're going to start it. We're 15 seconds away. Four, four next. We're about halfway. Sorry, man. Lots of burps. We're halfway there. Two. One. Shot. Yeah, it's more than halfway, actually. It's not halfway. It's more than halfway. It's about three quarters, I think. Nah, Mr. 90, it's not. <laughs> Zerg. Touche. Touche. Oh, Johnny Two Speeds is here. So, Johnny, we're doing Celestial Navigation, buddy, because we're flying over the ocean. So, we've got no VORs, no NDBs, no GPS, nothing. So, we're measuring the altitude of the sun. And then... <laughs> We're using some pretty awesome tables, like this one here, to figure out where we are. Natalia. Well, Nebo, that's the, um, that's the, uh, sextant doing its thing. Well, be mint I'm trying. I'm trying. I got that wrong early on. I'll be honest. <laughs> I honestly, I started today thinking I was going to a different airport. Then, then I was like, oh, wait, we're going to Natal. Yeah, okay, you were here. Perfect. <laughs> I'm going to try and get there. All right, got it, be mint. I'll try my best. I will try my best. <laughs> That's awesome. Hmm. <laughs> Are we? Oh, measurement is in. There it is. Okay, so. Um. Joe, uh, most pilots don't have training in all first aid. And I say this because I've had training in first aid and it's way better than pilots get. Pilots usually get training in uh, defibrillators and that's pretty much it. Flight attendants, flight attendants get a lot of training in first aid. Martel, they don't really add up because you're doing a fresh shot every time. You know what I mean? Are we on time? Hmm. Slightly behind it, Welsh. Slightly behind it. Okay, guys. So, 44 
34. That's what we need to put in our sheet here. Not this one, but this one. What? Oh, yeah, this is the old one. I forgot. I didn't clean it up. I thought I had prepared it. I didn't. Oh, that can stay. This sexton thing, too old for this. Your 3D printer becomes silent. Like silence? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> Hayden. Is that what you're saying? I don't know. I don't know. All right, this is the 1550, right? No, 1650, what? Did I not change that? I guess I didn't. It's the 1650 shot. Wow. Okay. Sixteen fifty. There it is. Calculate. There it is. All right. We're rounding this. So zero seven four zero. Man, we're we're being lucky with the GHA of no minutes. Zero seven four degrees. Zero zero minutes. Okay. Uh, which repeats down here. 074 degrees, zero, 00 minutes. Okay. Let's look where are we supposed to be? Well, I didn't add it here, so I guess I have to add that point. All right, so. Oh, no, I did add it. It's over here. It was zoom I was zoomed in too much. There it is. There it is. Okay, so it's going to be 29 west, 3 south. 29 west, 3 south. 29 west, 3 south, there it is, and that means that, oh, and I have to put the declination here, declination is 013539, so we're going to round up to 0136, so 0, 0, 01, 36 minutes, okay, don't need this anymore. Yes, Johnny. Uh-huh. No, the flight... Actually, it was the work of the navigator. Work of the navigator. Some airlines, in some airlines, the flight engineer was a navigator. In some airlines, they had a separate person be the navigator, and that's all they did. Guys, I need a quick break. I'll be right back.
All right, everybody. Welcome back. How's it going? I hope you're doing well. All right. So now we need to figure out some data for the sun. Okay. <clears throat> so where are we now? Well, we're between two and three south, which is opposite to where the sun is. So we need to look at contrary but also latitude 2, right? Between 2 and 3, it's going to be 2 point something. And we need to look at contrary. And then we need to look at our LHA, which I did not calculate. Okay. Okay. Fell on their pizza. Yeah, Howie, exactly. Hey, how are you? Doing well? Do you want to say hi to people? Yes. Oh, you want to like sit here and say hi? Yes. Guys, hold on. My daughter is going to come say hi to you guys. Here. Hold on. Put this on. Have a seat. I was going to say hi because I was bored. That's cool. Hola. All right. Here we go. Chat's right there. You can talk to them. Hi, I'm Lucy. Yeah, guys, her name is Lucy, or I call her Lulu because her name is Luciana, which is a Brazilian or Italian name. That's a beautiful name. You should okay. say I'm Luciana, but go by Lucy. <laughs> yeah, you shouldn't say my name is Lucy. You should say my name is Luciana, and I go by Lucy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> look, okay. look. Hello from Scotland. Look. Sounds interesting. Whoa, what's happening with the plane? What is wrong with you? I'm confused. Okay, Lou, I gotta jump in. Okay, bye. I don't know what's happening either. Oh boy, okay. This always happens when you put your daughter in. It's always like that. I don't know. Lou, did you press the rudder at all? Up? On the bottom with your feet? No? Okay. Feet on rudder, maybe. No, I'm reading chat, Lou. I'm gonna get back to 14,000. And what's our heading? Whoops. Who said that? Who? Hold on, hold on. We still need to be on a, what was our last heading? 269 or 265? I don't recall anymore. Raider 7 UK, really? Really? <laughs> uh, really, Earhart? <laughs> 265, thanks guys. Thank you very much. Okay, so let's do, oh, this guy is on. Weird. Okay, let's turn it on. On. Getting to 14. What is this? Look at this. Oh, no. She's she's straightening out. She's straightening out. And there's 14 and altitude. That was the, uh, that was the gyro pilot reconnecting, right? Which is fine. So it's fine. Speed is really low, though. And now we can do 265 on the heading. <laughs> Thanks, Kaya. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, Steve. She's turning left. This is engaged. That's engaged. That's engaged. How is she turning left, guys? That was so odd. Oh, Fornax, come on. Oh, 265. Okay, let's go. Let's go. I think I got it back. I think I got it back. Well, the AP knob was because I needed to turn vinyl. But why? Look at this. Why is she turning? What is going on? Is the aileron trim super off or something? No, it's not. It's almost zero. What about rudder trim? Almost zero. I don't understand what's happening. Bold, I've never had one issue with this autopilot ever. Ever. All engines are running. Yeah. No, no, no. I looked at that like before anything else. I I don't know. I don't know. Let me try again. 
Look, it's turning left as I commanded to turn right. Inverteris, are you here? Yeah, mixture is all good. Are you seeing this? I just commanded a right turn and the plane turned left. I, I don't think that matters, Celestial. I really don't think that matters. Right turn. Let's try again. Let's go to 265. The aileron is flat as far as trim goes. Right? Let me get back to 265. Let me see if I can do it. And if I can, then we'll play from there. 260. Bermuda Triangle effect, right? Yeah, yeah. Good question, Sanjay. We'll look at that next. There. Mm, it does. It does. There's a left turning tendency for some reason. Look at this. There is a left turning tendency. It happened when my daughter sat down. What? What happened? What happened? Hey, Muse. No, buddy. We're having some flight control issues right now. We're trying to figure out what's going on. What could she have done? Look, I'm playing with the rudders. That's not it. That's not it. Rock, Lulu. Let's go with Lulu. And you know why? Here, guys. I know she introduced herself as Lucy, but... Uh... Her mom... Her mom calls her Lucy. I call her Lulu. Hold on. Let me think about this. Let me think about this. What could be forcing the plane to turn left? If it's not the aileron... Well, I mean, the aileron trim is zero. My stick is zero. Could be that the ailerons are off because of some malfunction. Right? We have symmetric thrust. Yeah. Symmetric thrust all the way. Right? I, I honestly can't think of anything else. Is that the default AP kicking in? I don't know. Inverteris, how do I do that? Solar race? Yeah, if you talk to... Uh, if you talk to Veritasium, he will say yes. Right, Derek? No winds. Guys, winds never do stuff like this. Ever. Nope. The power of the Lulu. Right now it's flying straight, but it's not going to the heading I want. And look, I turn right, it turns left. Look, it's banking left. Somehow heading hold and default AP kicked in. Okay. But it didn't, Inverteris. Look, because it allows me to go away from it, right? Oh, no, it's going back. No, 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 it's not. It's just maintaining bank. And what if I stop? I'm going to stop at like 280. Arva, what's going on? Arva hey, thank you very much, Arva. For four All right, Hello, 285. Everybody. Let's see what happens. Yeah, exactly, Lounge. That's what I'm trying now. Surprise bonus feature. Sorry, my mom taught me to not talk when I have food in my mouth. <clears throat> if the flight assistant is on. Is that what this is? So I guess not. Check the toilets and see if the water spins backwards. Cobra, I love you. Check fuel, gyro procession. So, mister, it's not gyro procession. Because look, 
See that? 282. Oh, 277. We got a little bit of off there. A little bit. <gasps> it's not slaved. It's in direction of gyro. I mean, not a huge deal, but could that be doing this? Let's see. And now it matches the magnetic compass, right? I guess, I guess it matters what... Yeah, I guess it matters what the autopilot looks at. Because I don't know what the autopilot looks at. If they're terrorists, do you know? Yeah, exactly, maybe. I'm like, yeah, maybe, but I'm not sure. Could that actually be it? I'm going to turn to 265 now. But I mean, here's the thing, Giver Terrace. If that was it, I should be able to be in directional gyro option for my card. Turn a certain way, right or left, doesn't matter. And the plane should always turn that way, never turn the opposite way. And that's what it did, right? Hey, Flux Trot is here. What's going on, Flux? Hey, buddy. Good to see you. Thanks for coming in, man. Thanks for hosting, by the way. Oh, it was 265, right? I passed it. No, I don't, Joe. Uh-uh. The only thing I have my Hodas is autopilot disconnect. But I don't think that applies here anyways. Because I don't think they use the, the uh, stock autopilot. So I'm going to go back to 265. No, Diggly Good, the slave was not malfunctioning. We went to directional gyro out of slave because of something else. I forgot to turn the generators on after I started the engines. So we took off. The batteries lasted for like an hour and a half, hour, 40 minutes. And then when the battery died, my card stopped working. I was like, what the hell? So I started playing with the directional gyro. That's why we were in directional gyro. Good batteries. Exactly, Derpex. That's what I said. I was like, what? Like, this should have lasted half an hour. Well, for my expectation. De nada, mano. De nada. Abraço para você. Why? I spilled some. Why are we still... <sighs> no, we're not. Never mind. I thought, look, my, my, my track IR stopped a little bit like this and I thought we were turning. We're not. I just have to recenter it. There we go. There we go. Yes, B mint. No, don't worry. Don't worry, B mint. This is a seven hour flight, so plenty of time for those batteries to recharge. They're gonna be fine when I give you the plane. They're gonna be fine. Don't worry about it. But just in case, I'm gonna leave the engines running so you can just kind of climb in, be careful with the props, and let's keep it going. <laughs> exactly, Welsh. Exactly. Yep, we'll do a hot turnaround. <laughs> Jumper cables. <laughs> Be mint. No, I love you. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? <clears throat> All right. Hey, curious. In and out all afternoon. I think you're doing a great job and you're an inspiration to watch. Oh, Jesus. Oh, curious. Thank you, man. Thanks for saying that. Exactly, Johnny. Exactly. Yeah, get the duct tape. <laughs> all right, guys. All right. So, we have uh, some calculations to do, don't we? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. All right, so I think the plane is okay now. I think she's stable. I think she's safe. Let's go back to this and figure this out, right? All right, so we were going to look at some sun tables. With an LHA off? Oh, we don't know it. That's where we were. Okay, so. Latitude is south. Three degrees. Oops. Not that one. There we go. Which gives it an LHA 
And that's 74. Yeah, okay. So to find the LHA, it's this minus this, but this is on the other side of the hemisphere. So it's actually a plus, so it's 77 degrees, the LHA, right? 77 degrees, okay. So now we go in the tables and we look for 77. <laughs> Mr. 90. <laughs> uh, no batteries on Sunday. Oh, man. Ah, Luxionica, come on, man. I'm not being that bad. Not that bad. <laughs> All right, so, guys. Declination again between 1 and 2, but this time is a little closer to 30. Still leaning towards 40, so I'm still going to do 2 thirds, right? And our latitude is south 3. Okay, so, contrary, right? Um, and it's not latitude... Two, it's latitude three. Oh, hold on. There we go. I always forget that. There we go. Latitude three. <clears throat> Not same. That was the last one. We're going to go contrary. There we go. And it's contrary with an LHA of 77. Okay. Well, 77 is right here. Okay. I don't think so either, cold. I don't think so. 77. Ah, uh, you guys can't see it, but I'm going to make you see it. I'll make you see it. That sounds horrible, doesn't it? Whoa. There we go. Between 1 and 2. All right. So 1256, 1252. And um, wait a second. 12? That doesn't sound right. That does not sound right. Yeah, Echo Charlie, I'm not that concerned. I thought I was, Crumb. I thought I was. So, contrary, declination 0 to 14, and latitude 3. Because the waypoint that we're going to now is 3 south. What am I doing wrong? What am I doing wrong, guys? Special operative. I don't think so. I don't think so. Hello, by the way. Maybe my LAJ is wrong. So the sun is in the north hemisphere. I'm in the south, so it's got to be contrary. Scroll down to what, Sanjay? Because I expected... I expected the sun now to be like 42 or so i'm assuming same no i mean contrary look contrary starts right here that's sorry hold on let me let me zoom this out
See what I mean? No, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, do you it doesn't matter. We're, we when we work these charts, we work in true. We don't use magnetic. Okay, Sanjay, cool. So JJ seventy four, and it is there. Right, the GHA comes from this website, and that makes sense, doesn't it? I think it does. Okay. What's that? Oh, I use the latitude. That's what it is, Crumb. Awesome catch, dude. This, guys, this right here is supposed to be my longitude because you're comparing it to the longitude of the sun and I put my latitude in there. It's West 29. Awesome. West 29. Which then makes this 94103. Right? think so yeah wow crumb awesome catch dude thank you oh howie you're right crumb and howie do you like it so yeah if it's west yeah right 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 right, right. so 45 Okay. Okay. Jesus. So we need 45, not this guy. But this guy. 45. And that's 44. Okay, much, much better. Much, much better. Okay. Oh, a flight instructor. Did you instruct before hitting the airlines? I never flew for the airlines, V2. But I did instruct. I worked for a company called Flight Safety. Um, and yeah, I did instruct. And I love instructing. Alright. We're still between one and two. Still two thirds. 44, 50, 44, 44. That's six. So that'd be two closest to this. So 44, 46. Minus six, minus seven. It's going to be minus seven. And 94, 96 is going to be 96. Actually... I'm going to do 95. I'm going to do 95. Because it's very close to 130. It's 136. Right? No, Cashew. Declination is between 1 and 2. My latitude is 3 degrees. Sense that you do a great job of teaching us all. Uh, one of, if not the most educational streamer out there. Whoa, V2. Wow. Thank you, man. Thanks for saying that. Jeez. Wow. <laughs> all right. So we got this data. Now, let's go over here and plug it in. All right, so HA is going to be 44 degrees, 46 minutes, minus the 5. We're going to get an HC of 44 degrees, 41 minutes, right? HO is what we observed. Let's get that. A, 44, 34. Okay. 44... 34. This minus that, it's going to be away 
but only away by seven miles. Nice. So it's basically seven minutes, right? Okay, I need a ZN here. We had a... Uh, oh, sorry, I gotta go back to the chart because... LAJ less than 180. Our LAJ is 45, less than 180. So 360 minus Z. And our Z was 90... It was... Oh, hold on. 95. Okay. So, whoops. Uh, 360 minus 95, 265. Right? So 265 is going to be our ZN. 265. There we go. All right. And we're away. So we're going to be on 0, uh, 265, 0, 085, 7 miles. All right. Let's do this. All right. The assumed waypoint was over here. Create a waypoint right there at three degrees. Zero. Zero to south. Thirty. Zero zero. Was that south thirty? No, it wasn't. Why? Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was twenty nine. Okay. Okay, hold on. Twenty nine. Okay, that's better. All right, so from here on a zero eight five for seven miles. Zero eight five seven miles. There. Now from here, we run our line of position 90 degrees. Oh man, it's gonna be a good one. 355. Look at that. Over here, at waypoint 4, we're gonna add our ring. Oh wow. Celestial Navigator, correct me if I'm wrong, but does this mean that I'm right here? That I'm this close to the route? Really? Really? This right here? Bob, you applied the ZN correction for northern latitude. Oh, you're right. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh my god, Crum. Celestial Navigator. What would I do without you guys? Seriously. Look, this right here, right, is for north latitudes. There's the same thing, whoops, over here, for south latitudes. So it's 180 plus Z for less than 180, and we are, right? Our LAJ is 45. So 45 plus 180, 225. So 225 is what we need to put in here. Yeah. Wait, is that correct? No, not, my Z is 95. Never mind, 95. Jesus. It's 95. 180 plus Z. Right, right. 275. Okay. 275. 275, which makes it 095. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Krom. I appreciate that. So 095, that's going to be a little bit off. Look, from this, right? So 095 is going to be here. 95, 7 miles. there and then this guy instead of that it's gonna be here at five yep just like that and then this guy then is gonna be here so this is my estimated position at 1650 not bad not bad and, and, so from here to here, it was 265, right? 
magnetic and that's what I've been flying. Now what I need to fly is from here to the next one. So we're going to create a next waypoint, right? It's going to be the last waypoint after this one. All right, so let's see here. After waypoint four, uh, about 247, so 480. So about there. There, okay. I'm gonna do a waypoint right here. There we go, 247, exactly what I wanted. And now for this waypoint from here, Right? What's the heading? Well, look. It's 265 still. Right? So I'm going to just keep on going like I'm going. Not bad. Not bad at all. Are we still doing 265? Yep. Whew. Man. Crumb, I've never prayed to you before. I have no tongue for it. Maybe Fabio can do it. Oh, Mati. Or Maddie, right? This is not even close, dude. This plane can fly close to 4,000 nautical miles. It can fly close to 20 hours. Seven hours on this flight is not even half of what this plane can do. Well, 7-7, seven, seven. correct? Actually, it's going to be on the left. No, on the right. But I think it's going to be too far. I think it's going to be too far. We'll look for it. But I think it's going to be too far. If we are, look. There it is, right? We're here, we're flying to here. There it is. If we are en route, we're gonna be 30 miles off. So we should be able to see it, should. But if we're not en route, you know, if we're further south, maybe not. We'll see, we'll see. But that should be coming up here, actually, pretty soon, actually. Hold on a second. Hold on. Can I see it already? No, I don't think I see anything. I don't think I see anything, guys. Yeah, we actually borrow less on time. Isn't that amazing? Especially b bent especially with this guy flying. <laughs> B-Mint is getting ready to go. Oh! I didn't even see Sneed. Hey, Sneed, how's it going, man? Thanks for following. Nico just got first place on Fortnite and he's really excited about it. On Nintendo, oh no, on the uh, on the Switch. First time on the Switch, because he plays on the PlayStation, he's gotten many, many wins on the PlayStation. He wants to make sure you guys know. He just means the Nintendo Switch, first win. First play, first win. Nice job. Muse. One hour. I'm one hour out. I think. I think I'm one hour out. Yeah, Ninja, not bad, right? Hmm, this kiwi is amazing. Yep. I did make good time. Hmm, Zas ran. I'm gonna have to check, I don't know. It's in the 200s, I think. I do not, Johnny, no, I like sour. I really like sour. And I try not to eat too much sugar, you know, so. 
Um, hold on. Let me see if there's anybody close to me. Not super close. Can't be okay. Yeah, it's some people close. Sorry, guys. I'm gonna pause just for a second so I can check my. Uh, Zesran wants me to check my ping on North US or North Europe. It's gonna be quick. All right, 95. 95. Oh no, 77. It's not cheating. I forgot they had a VOR. I forgot they had a VOR. You're right about that. Wait, do they have a VOR? They do have a VOR. So, we're here, right? We're supposed to be passing this. There's a VOR, guys. 113.04, and we should be south of it. Let's hope we are. One, one, three, four. Hey! That's why everybody is south of me. That's why everybody's south of me. Jack Zale tipped $25. I've started going back into the office on weekdays. So I'm loving the Saturday stream since I haven't been able to catch many weekday streams. Thanks for all the great content. Jack Zale, thank you very much for the 25 bucks, sir. I really appreciate that. And thank you for saying what you did. I'm glad you can catch the stream. I'm glad you can, I'm glad you can catch it. Has our celestial navigation been that bad? Well, we're going to turn towards it, that's for sure. Yeah, Braiders, it definitely is. Definitely is. Holy crap. I don't think so, Cold. I think it was just me. Welcome to St. Martin. <laughs> I can't look at the flight tracker, Chris. I can't look. Oh, Crisp, actually. I can't look at the flight tracker, man. All right, here we go. Because remember, I, I said it a couple of times, I'm like, why is everybody to my left? But my celestial navigation... Wow, okay. I guess that was really off. Hmm. <laughs> Johnny! <laughs> Yeah, Vino, that's what I'm doing, dude. That's what I'm doing. We're gonna fly right over it. DR was wrong. Yeah, Celestial. So meaning the lines of position. So what Celestial means is this, look. When we, this right here, guys, this right here, this is our line of position. That's the circle. Remember the big circle that we think we're at when we measure an angle to a star? This is a part of that circle. So we can be anywhere on this line. So we could be up here, for example. Why did I say we're down here? Well, because our our DR was down here, our dead reckoning. But like Celestial said, our dead reckoning was quite off today. So really, we are somewhere on this line, but more than likely, we're somewhere up here. Very interesting, fascinating actually. Because now we're flying to 220, 220 from here. Hey, come on. 220, uh, 040, right? Yep. All right, so here. So we're on this line right here. Flying. Oh, and we're at 110 miles, so we're here. Watch. Like here. We're right there. Wow. That's quite off. Quite off. It's also a little bit slower than I thought, so no, guys, I'm gonna get there a little bit later than I thought. So it's probably gonna be another 15 minutes past my last estimate, or more. Maybe 15 minutes. Oh, 
Oh yeah, Vino. And look, don't get me wrong, man. This is my second flight doing Celestial Navigation. Obviously, I need more practice with this, right? And with practice, you get better and better at this. But yeah, like I said, and, and look, when we started the flight, it's like, look, you're not going to miss South America, right? Even if you show up up here, dude, that's South America. It's horrible, but you're not going to die, is what I'm saying. Well, maybe up here because you'd run out of fuel, but you know what I mean. Down here, you'd still get there. Down here, you'd still get there. So, I agree. Getting within range of the Fernando de Noronha VOR, not bad. Not too bad. And look, it's not like we were that far off, right? Like here, if I continued, I would end up up here somewhere. Yeah, considerably far from Natal, but again, I'd still survive. Everybody would live, right? You know what I mean? Like, but of course, we have VORs to help us, and they, uh, no, not in 1950. They didn't have VORs back here in 1950. I columbus it. <laughs> hey, Balmer, what's going on, man? Balmer, this right here. I'm I'll be back in a little bit. Oh, okay. Bye. Oh, yeah, I will. It's Little Nav Map. Balmer, and if you want to download it, it's free. It's amazing, and there's the link. Given you're a bit off at the moment, how is the actual fuel planning? Uh, I have enough to land? Yeah, I should have more than enough. But let's see how off we are, right? So, I'd like to land. I'd like to land with a thousand pounds per engine if I could. I still have just about a thousand here, a thousand five hundred here, right? So let's say three thousand, four thousand, five thousand. So five thousand. Wait, is that right? No, sorry, two thousand, two thousand. That's four thousand. Plus 5,000, 9,000. And I want to land with 4,000, right? So I have 5,000. 5,000 at the rate that I'm burning, you know, 500 and something. Dude, yes, I got plenty of fuel. You know what I mean? It's 500 something times two. That's 2,000 pounds or say 2,500 pounds. I got two hours of flight, right? Before, and, and I, I, I think I need an hour and 15. I got two hours before I'm at my reserve. So I think I'm good. And of course, I say I have an hour and 15 and I have two hours of fuel. Well, those other 45 is to fly to the alternate. So it's not like I carried extra fuel. Hey, Lopez Family Tube. That's awesome, dude. Thanks for listening. I appreciate that. I know. It's such an awesome tube. It really is. Exactly, B meant. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, bomber. When they start doing that. Until then, then we gotta fly planes. But uh, yeah, when Elon decides to start, you know, New York to Auckland in a Falcon 9, or better yet, in a spaceship, yeah, it's gonna be amazing, isn't it? Lopez, we can help you. Let us know if you need any help. Okay, 20 minutes to fly over Fernando de Noronha. Okay, not bad, not bad. That would be great. Yeah, man, hey. Order the flight stick. Which one? Which one, Lopez? Bring on teleportation, right? I know. I know. Yeah, look, that's why everybody is to the south. I'm like, why are these people all staying to the south? Okay, let me check. Okay, sounds good. You are Kim. I know, right? Mr. Pilot, he, he, oh look, I'm sure he contributed some. But when when a when a when when a reference that you're using is off when you're doing this kind of flying, you never know. It's like heading. Let's say that I had the wrong heading, right? I calculated my heading, 
and it needed to be whatever, 265. Okay, great. But then when I set my heading, let's say that I made a mistake and I said 268 instead of 265, right? And you say, well, that's it. You got it wrong. Yeah, I did. I made a mistake. But that could be a good thing. Wait, what? Yeah, because this entire process of celestial navigation is an estimation, right? You're calculating your position to the best of your ability, but it's still going to be 5 to 10 miles off at the best of your ability. 5 to 10 miles off what it really is, okay? So when you calculate that your heading needs to be 265, okay, that's your best calculation. But it doesn't mean that's accurate. Maybe, maybe the actual best heading would be 267. So you got close with 265, very close, but you're not exact. But then you made a mistake and you put 268 in there. And guess what? 268, well, that's closer to 267 than 265, right? So what I'm saying is this, when there is an induced error, be it because you made a mistake or because there's a mistake in the calculations, whatever it is, you never know if that error is going to lead you further away from accuracy or sometimes closer to that accuracy. Does that make sense what I'm saying? So sometimes you have, uh, you know, you're off a bit, but that off is actually getting getting you in a better position than before. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah, that's right, Inver Terrence. But here's the here's the great thing about this type of crossing. When you cross from Brazil to Africa, Inver Terrence, the wind is almost always the same. And even when it's not, it's going to be very mild at this altitude, right? The wind at this altitude every single day around the equator, because it is the equator, is very, very mild. So you're not going to have huge differences. Yes, Cashew. Why? Because instead of just shooting one star, I'm shooting the sun, right? One star. Exactly. Saw you later. Or see you later. <laughs> At night, I would shoot three stars and get three different circles that all intersect. What circles am I talking about, guys? You know this. You know this. Look. I'm talking about this right here. There. Right? When you shoot the angle to a star, forget that, let's go here. When you shoot the angle to a star, look at that. Whoop. Too much. You're gonna get a circle, and you are somewhere on this circle. But then if I get another circle, that's gonna intersect this circle in two places, right? And then if I get a third circle, that's gonna tell me where out of those two intersections I'm at. And then I'm gonna have a much more precise position than just using the sun. Yeah, b -Mint, they've had it all day. It's been a windy, windy day, but luckily, b -Mint, last time I checked, it was direction 140. It was coming from 140, meaning it was pretty much aligned with the runway. Is that still the case? Mm. Lopez, yeah, the Logitech Extreme 3D, that's awesome. That's great, you're gonna like that. <clears throat> nice, nice, B. Still 140, wow. By the way, B meant, I have friends that live in the northeast of Brazil where, where Natal is. And everybody that lives there will tell you, the wind never changes. And I mean never. Like, it's always coming from the same direction. It changes speed, but the direction is virtually unchangeable. On my Series X, and I use a, a oh, a T-Flight Hotas. One just need to get the sensitivity right. Oh, Richie, thanks for sharing that, buddy. I didn't know that there were already sticks you could use with the Xbox. Wow. Hey, Joaquin, thank you very much for that tier one sub, dude. Oh, that's so nice, man. Thank you. I appreciate that. All right, how are we doing? Maybe 10 minutes to go? 16. Oh, okay. Time's going by slower than I thought. Slower than I thought. Can't see the island yet. No way, cold. Really? 
There's Joaquim's subscription. <laughs> Celesting. Hey Nico, how's it going, buddy? Of course, man. Hey, listen. This is a this is a community effort, and we have to deliver this plane in one piece to be mint. But guys. Oh my god. Was I supposed to take a shot? I think I just missed a shot. I mean I didn't miss it, miss it, but because I can adapt, right? But still. I gotta be honest. Now with the VOR, I'm not that concerned anymore. Yeah, Crumb. I know. I just thought about that. I was like, ah. All right. So what I'm going to do instead, guys, is I'm going to show you a video that I watched the other day. And I was like, what the hell? Right? Rock. Almost, buddy. Almost. We're getting close. We're getting very close. What do I mean by very close? Well, look at this. We are approaching Fernando de Noronha. This is like the Brazilian Galapagos, by the way. Only a certain number of people are allowed to go every year. And it is an insanely amazing nature reserve. But from there, look, from there, we still have to get to Natal. But we're almost there. We are almost there. As a matter of fact, let's see how far that is. 209 miles. So it's like... 50, 45 minutes after Fernando Noronha, we're going to be landing in Natal. Nice. Nice. Okay. So. Oh, nice, Welsh. All right, guys. Here we go. Listen. I'm not one. I'm not one for, like, conspiracy theories or anything like that. Okay? So let's start with that. And you'll see, based on the facts, and, and you'll see that these are facts. Except for one little bit in there. One little bit is questionable. But even with that one little bit being questioned, this is an insane, insane story. Hey, hello, Jimmy. So, no, 77, no, buddy. I just got to get to the destination. So, here we go. I want you guys to hear this. And then tell me if this impressed you as much as it did me. If I do this, will it? Oh, yeah, it does. Nice. Okay. That's very nice. All right. Hey, Flights with Joe. Yes, Flights with Joe. How's it going, buddy? It's great to see you, man. All right. Here we go. Good luck not being freaked out. When I first started my channel, I never anticipated it to ever take off. However, since it has, a growing concern of mine is keeping my personal and private information both safe with is a lot of information access access by optivp.com cadaver to get 50% off premium now on to the video Branding, thank you very much, man. I'm doing great. I hope you're doing well, too. On Christmas Eve in 1975, a small aircraft would depart from the Glenforsa airfield on the Isle of Mull in Scotland. Piloting the Cessna F-150H was Peter Gibbs, a seasoned pilot and Royal Air Force veteran with over 10 years of flying experience to his name. And Scots, do you know this story? Have you heard this story before? On this cold and snowy night of December 24th, 1975, Peter Gibbs would take off into the night sky 
and vanish without a trace. What followed would become one of aviation's greatest mysteries, and About even an hour, today, Joe. over four decades later, answers to what happened to both Peter Gibbs and his plane remain shrouded in the unknown. This is the story of the Mole Air Mystery. Guys, this is a freaky one. This is a freaky one. As the hours counted down to Christmas Day on the Isle of Mole at the Forsa Hotel, Peter Gibbs and his girlfriend Felicity Granger were enjoying the warmth and comfort of the hotel's dining area as they finished off their dinner with several glasses of wine. It was then when Felicity would recount that Peter got the sudden urge to fly. Being an experienced veteran of flying, this feeling was nothing new, but being that it was not only calling for poor weather, but the moonless night on top of that made conditions risky even for the most seasoned pilots. This didn't dissuade Peter, however, even after several of the hotel staff argued against it, saying it was far too dangerous, and while sure, the hotel did have an airstrip close by, Richie. it had no lights, and would make landing close to impossible. Peter, however, was right. quoted as telling the manager of the hotel, I am not asking for permission, I just thought it was courtesy to let you know, and I don't want to fuss. Around 9.30 p.m., Peter and Felicity made their way to the airstrip go, at the Glenforsa airfield. Peter gave Felicity a flashlight and made his way to a plane that he was borrowing at the time. It was a Cessna F-150H with a red and white paint scheme. As the engine roared to life, Felicity made her way to the edge of the airstrip and began directing Peter where to go. Within 15 minutes of this, Peter Gibbs was taking off from the runway and would soon seemingly vanish without a trace. Those who were there that night yeah. and witnessed the flight claimed it was a smooth takeoff, and even a few others commented on the skill level Peter had, even when flying at night with no moonlight. At the time, things seemed fine, and while I can't imagine that Felicity Granger watched Peter disappear over the tree line with both concern and excitement, those feelings would soon be replaced by panic <laughs> and dread. By 10 p.m., Peter had still not returned. Felicity's worry grew by the minute, especially when the weather took a turn for the worst as it began to snow. By 10.10, Felicity's panic drove her to running back to the hotel to inform the staff that Peter had failed to return. And with the worsening weather, she was fearful of his safety. What year was this? I don't know. 75. 1975. Staff at the hotel contacted the police, and once they arrived, an investigation into the airfield began. At the same time, a search team was getting ready to take flight as well to begin looking for a possible wreckage. But most at the time had assumed that Peter had simply lost his direction and couldn't find the hotel due to the snow. Tossin, By 10.45 p.m., Peter had now been missing for a full hour, and police had finished their investigation into the airfield and saw nothing that appeared to be suspicious. The search team was also called off due to the weather becoming even worse, and all anyone could do for the remainder of the night was wait until the morning nice and work. hope that either Peter had returned hey, or a full search and investigation could begin. Right, you can't search at night, right? The following day, what should have been a day of celebration, as it was Christmas Day, was instead spent with police surrounding the hotel in search of the missing pilot. All of those who were guests at the hotel were questioned. Felicity was asked to retell her story from the start and go over every single detail. It was from this that investigators learned that when Peter got into the plane, he did two things that appeared odd. The first was that he let his plane idle for what was quoted as a noticeably long time, around 10 minutes. And he also turned his lights on, then back off, keeping them off for around 5 seconds, and then turned them back on once again. Hmm. After this, with the help of Felicity guiding him, he went about a regular takeoff and seemingly vanished off the face of the earth. The search team was also simultaneously searching via plane for any sign of wreckage. They took the same flight path that Peter would have taken, yet nothing could be found. Searchers and volunteers on foot were also searching the surrounding woodlands in hope of finding the missing pilot. Over 200 people were involved in this search, and yet nothing could be found. No sign of smoke, 
or any sign of possible wreckage. Even the military got involved and used sonar equipment to look for wreckage on the seafloor, and again, nothing could be found. People who lived in the surrounding area were also questioned by police and asked if they heard anything that could have resembled a crash, and yet, even then, nobody heard anything. The status of Peter Gibbs would stay in this unknown state for an additional four months. In that span of time, there were daily searches by both those on foot and by plane. The entire area was searched, with the search radius extending up to 30 miles, and still, nothing could be found. Sonar was continually used, people were re-interviewed, and all seemed for nothing as no matter how hard anyone searched, it truly seemed Peter Gibbs had disappeared. Excuse me guys, one second. One second. Um, first of all, just to show you, here's Fernando de Noronha, that island off the coast of Brazil. There's some of you guys down there, looks like. Um, we're almost there. We're four minutes from it. And then after it, after it, then all we're going to do is we're going to fly the 253 radio off of that VOR to the Natal VOR. So we're going to tune in Natal which is 1143, and we're going to fly off the 253, okay? So 1143, we're going to put that in F1. Oh, it was already 1143, I didn't even see it. And we're not receiving it yet, which makes sense. Oh, and you know what? I got to put the, uh, if I'm going to fly that radio, I got to put that in here, 1134. On Nav 1. There it is, because then I can select the 253 from here. Okay. 253. All right. Now we just need to fly over it and then turn right a little bit. To go up on actually not even that much huh look at this we're pretty much on it i mean 235 you know it's 20 degrees but you know what i mean all right yes ross no worries buddy thanks appreciate you saying that appreciate you saying that okay let's keep going on this mystery because it's gonna get spookier and would never be found again however that was until early April, when a local shepherd named Donald McKinnon came across a fallen tree near the hotel that Peter Gibbs departed from all those months ago. As Donald got closer, he noticed something lying across the tree, and once he realized what he was staring at, he quickly fled to alert authorities. And that was because Donald McKinnon had just discovered the body of Peter Gibbs. What? Laying on a tree? Yeah. Yeah. Upon discovering the body of Peter Gibbs, police, the locals, and Felicity were in complete shock. Not so much at the fact that he was deceased. It had been four months after all, so most had assumed that he perished in a wreck at sea. They were all shocked that he was here less than a mile from the hotel that the very investigation began less all those months ago. The area that Peter was discovered was heavily wooded and hilly, yes, but it had been searched countless times by more than 200 people at some points. I'm not saying it's impossible, but 200 people searched this wooded area. And yet, nobody ever saw his body. This, in and of itself, was extremely bizarre, but what was even more shocking was that his body seemingly had no signs of trauma or injury. By this None. point, he was decomposing, yes, but just from a glance, there was no obvious cause of his demise. The next thing people wondered was, yeah. where was the plane? Right. The area was heavily searched in the days after Peter's discovery, and yet, nothing could be found. Rivers, lakes, locks, and even the sound of mole were all searched and still, no wreckage could be found. Divers were sent to search the area and still came up short. 
What also troubled police was that at the location of Peter's body, there was no sign of any damage to the ground or surrounding area. No trees, other than the one Peter was found on, were knocked over. No signs of previous fires could be found, and it was as if Peter simply walked over to the fallen tree, laid on top of it, and died. An autopsy was performed on Peter Gibbs, and while police waited for the results, they examined the photographs taken of Peter's body. He was found to be fully clothed, Buried. with no sign of damage to the clothing. Again, no sign of trauma was found on his body, and even when police went back to examine the scene, they could find no tracks even leading to the location. Granted, it had been snowing the night of his disappearance, and four months had passed, but what was also brought up was that if he had in fact been there the entire time and simply had just been missed by over 200 people searching the area, then how was it that no wildlife found him? For four months, his body seemingly laid there That's and there were the other no thing. signs of any bite or scratch marks on his clothes or his body. This began to make police wonder if he had been placed there recently to make it look like he simply did die of natural causes. And when the autopsy reports came back, that idea grew even stronger. Once the results were in, police were again shocked to learn that no traces of seawater or any marine organisms were found on his body or clothes. Even after four months of being exposed to the elements, there would still have been some trace evidence of seawater at the very least on his body. And yet, nothing was there. So the idea that he simply wrecked his plane Thanks, in the Beamish. ocean and was able to get out and swim to shore It was, was chasing dismissed. a radio that didn't work. And if that is the case, then where could the plane possibly be? Additional information came from the toxicology reports. When the results came in that yeah, no thanks, traces guys. of alcohol, drugs, or poisons were found in his body. And while I found no article mentioning what I am no about to say, alcohol. that report alone is either inaccurate or there could be a strong possibility that Peter did not die on the night of his flight. The toxicology report stated that no alcohol was found in his body. Yet, it was said that the night of his flight, when he was having dinner with Felicity, that both of them were drinking wine, and on top of that, Peter had a shot of whiskey. This could change the entire nature of this mystery. Doing some simple research, I found that alcohol can stay in the blood for 6 hours, on the breath you know this for case, 24 Beamish. hours, in urine for up to 72 hours, and on hair for up to 90 days. While this clearly means that he couldn't have been alive for 90 days due to the stages of his decomposition, it could be that he was alive for several days after his flight. The toxicology report did state that he had been dead for at least four months. There could have been a few days time where Peter was alive, but even if that were the case, then why didn't he simply go back to the hotel on foot? Clearly, there was nothing really wrong with him, he had no broken bones or serious injury, and he was less than a mile away from the hotel. Why simply lay over and die of exposure instead of making the walk back? All of Keep that in mind. As far as Felicity killed him, right V2? There's no poison. There's no injury. There's nothing. There is no cause of death. These questions made the mystery even more confusing. Many thought that with the discovery Me of Peter's too, body meant. that surely a theory could be created that could explain what happened. And seemingly as quickly as this new discovery into the case happened, it quickly diminished too. It now seemed that they would not be able to know definitively what happened unless they found the plane. <laughs> and nice. with even I more know. searches taking place by now, and yet still no sign of any wreckage could be found. The hope of this mystery ever being solved seemed to dim with each passing day. And this mystery would stay in this state for another 11 years. But there's more. This guy takes big pauses in, in September of 1986, two fishermen discovered a red and white aircraft about half a kilometer from the coast of Oban. 
Divers were sent to the location and claimed that the plane was a Cessna and had the registration of G-AVTN, the same one that the plane Peter Gibbs was flying. The report on the plane described that there was massive damage to the aircraft, appearing as if there was a tremendous impact with the water. Both of the wings and landing gear had been completely torn off and there was a massive hole in the windshield and the engine itself was missing. As the search of the plane continued, it was discovered that the doors were still locked from the inside. Thus, the only means of escape would be the human-sized hole in the windshield. But if that had been Peter's plane, then there would have been no way he would have even made it to land. The impact alone would have killed him, if not knocked him unconscious, where he would have ultimately drowned. The plane was found 100 feet below the water's surface, and when you take that into consideration, then there is simply no way Peter would have managed to be ejected from a plane's windshield that was powerful enough to rip the engine out and then survive that, swim for an unspecified distance, and then make it to land. Right. Taking into consideration that the autopsy report showed no signs of salt water on him and it leads to one of two things. Either this was the plane Peter was flying and someone else crashed it, or this was the wrong aircraft. And if that was the fact, then why did the registration match? There were attempts at recovering the wreckage, but none were successful. And the photographs taken of the craft were in such poor condition that nothing could be distinguished. I don't know, As it goes with most mysteries, the lack of any actual answers soon create countless theories to fill in the blanks. Some theories being more believable and credible, and others being more outlandish to say the least. I am not going to go over all of them due to the fact that there are so many, but some have stood out as being likely, yet most all of them have at least a few holes that can't be ignored. One yeah, of the none of them are like theories was great. that Peter Gibbs decided to make this flight his final one. Suicide. The theory goes that Peter was unhappy with his life and mm -hmm. decided that he would take his own way out by doing something that he loved doing, flying. People credit this due to him having a nice dinner and drinking the night of the flight. The fact that he refused to hear anybody's warnings that it was dangerous to fly in such poor conditions. <laughs> the fact that he wanted Felicity to help guide him out almost as a right. way of her saying goodbye right in a way only they would understand sounds and like suicide the most important is the fact that he was stated to have sat in his plane longer than usual while it was idling and the fact that he doesn't say it here but the fact that he told the hotel guy i'm not asking for permission i just thought it was courtesy to tell you like nobody's gonna stop him right sounds like suicide but how does your body show up on a tree trunk with zero injuries four months after? People theorized that he was making peace with himself and knew that this was going to be the final time he ever flew. It also goes along with why he had Felicity be the only one to use a flashlight. Some think that he knew there would be no chance of him being able to see a single light while flying in such poor conditions. Right, there's no way so, he can land. So that he couldn't right? change his mind and fly back, essentially forcing himself to go through with his plan. It goes even further with people saying that he actually decided last minute to cancel the plan and abort, leaping from the aircraft with a parachute and landing safely. But instead of going back, he decided to go back to his original plan and instead of it being a violent end, he decided to lay down in the woods and let exposure take him as he slept. Now, the obvious holes here are that if he did in fact parachute, then where was it? No parachute was ever found, and I doubt that he took the time to hide it so well that nobody could ever find it. <laughs> That's right, Mark. Keep in mind, it was dark, freezing cold, and snowing on top of that. So why even bother hiding it? The other fact that doesn't make sense here is when the plane that many think was the one Peter was flying was found 11 years later, the doors had been locked from the inside. 
so how would he have even gotten out of the plane? And I highly doubt Peter decided to just kick a hole in the windshield and then jump out with a parachute. The main reason this theory is so popular is due to Felicity's seeming lack of involvement. There wasn't much reported on her after this and some speculate that it was due to her knowing what Peter's idea was the entire time. Right. Another theory was Peter was murdered during the flight and someone was hiding in the plane when it occurred. That would explain the delayed time the plane spent idling. There was also a report that there was a second set of lights that were seen along with Felicity's flashlight and that this second light could have been used by the person responsible for the crime. Yet, there is no evidence like supporting this at hiding all. hiding in the plane, right? Granted, a theory doesn't need evidence, but I feel this is more in the realm of people trying to make something stick. For example, if someone was on the plane and attacking Peter, then true, perhaps the sound of a struggle would not be heard over the sound of the plane's engine. Sure. Yet, how would someone have known Peter was even going to fly that night? And how did they know he was going to fly alone? How did they know he wouldn't have been armed? And what would they even have done with the body once finished? On top of that, you have to remember that Peter's body showed no signs of trauma <laughs> exactly or poison. True, dude. So that seemingly rules out the murder theory completely. That's one of the hardest things, hardest things against a lot of the ideas here, right? Is no injuries on his body, guys. That's a fact. That's not an opinion like the divers that say they found the plane, they saw the registration. I don't know that that's 100% true, right? They are alleging that the, the plane didn't get pulled up from the bottom of the, the ocean, right? But the body did get found, and they did autopsy on it, and there is zero, zero injuries. No, Joaquin, here's, here's what I'm saying. How do you take a body from the air inside a plane and place it on a tree with no injuries? That's my question, right? Because if she, his girlfriend, was in it, that's fine. But the other people that were there, even hotel people, saw him take off. They saw him get in the plane. They saw him take off. Right? One final theory is that Peter was part of an illegal armed smuggling ring. And the reason for the spontaneous night flight was due to him needing to make a delivery. People argue that that was why he was so adamant about flying that night, even when the conditions were horrible. For Dobson, I understand what you're saying and I agree. But there are things that time won't fix. For example, fractures, right? Any bone fracture that happened when he died would still be there for the autopsy. There were none. Any laceration if you if you throw a body from a plane there is no way there's not going to be laceration right he had not a scratch on his body he knew that he didn't have a choice that could also explain why felicity was the only one with a flashlight since she knew what he was doing and he wouldn't have to trust a stranger and risk having them tell someone Maybe, Johnny. This theory also goes on that Peter could have been late or even missed the delivery time altogether and was then silenced for his actions. Those responsible could have waited for a while until the heat from the police died down and then dumped Peter's body and that would explain why nobody found him until months later in an area that had been heavily searched. But again, while I can see parts of this fitting, it seemingly gets rolled out simply due to the autopsy report on Peter. And on top of that, why destroy Rigel. the plane? To make it look like an accident? <laughs> if that, that was the intended goal, then why not simply leave his body in the water so it would look like a simple accident? Why hide him extremely close to the hotel that he was staying hey. at? Was the point of destroying How's the plane to low? remove any type of evidence? And as a matter of fact, was the plane that was discovered 11 years later right. even the same plane to begin with? Right. And if not, then where is it? 
Ultimately, it has been over four decades since Peter Gibbs took his final flight and would create one of the most bizarre mysteries in aviation history. It seems that no matter what possible answer you throw at this case, yeah, there is at least one thing standing yeah. in the way making it impossible. The level of frustration that surrounds this entire story is equaled only by the level of intrigue in it. How can a man manage to have an entire aircraft disappear no, Matt. and then no, be found four no months cause later of death. with no evidence to where the plane is or what happened to him? The cause of death given to Peter <laughs> Gibbs a... officially was exposure, and given the harsh conditions oh, of yeah. the night of right. his flight, it would make sense that he met with that fate. What, that's what I mean by no cause of death. It was exposure. But what I mean by that is like, that's the, like the last option you have. You know what I mean? It's like, well, if you can't find something else that killed him, well, then I guess he was just out in the elements and it was too cold or something. But even then, how could no one have found his body any sooner? Why did no wildlife disturb the body? Why was there no alcohol found in his system, yet he was confirmed to be drinking an hour before the flight? Was the plane that was discovered 11 years later even the same one Peter was piloting? Numerous investigations by police mm, and right even cool. locals have produced little answers. And even after all of these years, debates by both experts and theorists continue on. <laughs> yeah, Jack. It appears that much like the snowy night Peter Gibbs took his final flight, this case will remain blanketed in mystery. Ugh. What a story. What a story that is. I mean, seriously. Right? I mean, come on. Come on, let's let's think about this for a little bit. So wait, what if... Okay, Maddie has an idea. I think his body had to be placed there because the fact that there is no wildlife, anything, no trace of seawater on it meant he wasn't there for very long. Right? But here's the kicker. If you think that down that path, okay, somebody laid him out, right? Somebody killed him, laid him out on the tree. Okay, fine. But the decomposition agreed with the timeline, meaning he died four months earlier. So if somebody laid him out, they killed him, kept the body somewhere, let it decompose, and then four months later, move the decomposing body to the tree one mile from the hotel. Why? Why? Why would you go through that trouble? Oh, I'm getting goosebumps, man. Whew. No, 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 no. No, he wasn't, Mr. 90. The tree was fallen down. The tree was on the ground and he was laid on top of the tree. Could be. Could be that autopsy was a scam. Sure. That can always be the case, right? Take off on its own, can't be done, Flux. What kind of wildlife in that area do they say? Hey, listen, can you take off? Can you make a 152 take off on its own? Yeah, but as soon as it takes off, it's not. It, it's gonna like either climb too much or not climb enough and and nose over. Meaning, for you to get the the trim just perfect for the plane to take off and continue on a climb is virtually impossible. Right? Is it more likely that he crashed in the sea, got out through windscreen, started making his way back and through hyper hyper uh, hyperthermia, hypo, hypothermia, made irrational choices and climbed a tree? Could be braiders, but if he did that, there would be traces of seawater in his body. And there were none. Zero. Right? Maybe that's somewhere in the hotel, and the hotel did not find his body until way later and try to cover it up by placing it in the woods maybe crazed maybe but how do you explain him departing on a plane right again the departure there are some things that are hard to question right for example can you question the um the autopsy report of course you can of course you can it's one doctor right making a report who knows what's happening but when you look at multiple hotel staffs multiple people that witnessed him taking off, it's much, much harder to get all those people to lie and agree on the same lie. Hmm. 
Mr. 90, it's not, I, I didn't say it's not impossible. I just said it's highly unlikely, right? He was not flying the plane. It was someone else. Could be. So he stayed on the ground. Okay. He stayed on the ground. But how did they not find his body? Then someone else has to be involved. And why would they bring his body back? Right? Because if he made the plane take off without him being on the plane, fine. And he's going to commit suicide, fine. Why would he have somebody lay his body out four months later on a tree one mile from the hotel? That, it just doesn't add up. Yeah, and what's the motive? That's the other thing. That's the other thing, Captain Jack. Unless it's suicide, there is no other motive that anybody knows why he would be killed. Why somebody would want to kill him, right? To be technical, yeah, the people saw a plane take off, they never knew he was on it. That's true. That's true. Someone else kept his body. But, again, Mr. 90, if that's the case, how do we explain everything else and why? <laughs> Dalmatian, you just walked in halfway through this, didn't you? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. That's a body designed to be found. I think so, too, but Why? If someone else killed him, why would they want him found? And if someone else was flying, why the hole in the window? If that's the same plane, Jack. Right? Yeah, Johnny, I agree. I agree. May not be as good as today. I agree. I guess wh what I'm saying is this. I haven't seen anybody come up with a good sort of theory that explains it all in a way that makes sense. You can explain it all. You can say, oh no, he wasn't in the plane. It was someone else. When he taxied back, he jumped out. Someone jumped back in. Or there was somebody in the plane already. They took off. He stayed back. Okay, great. And then he killed himself. And then somebody else laid the body four months later. Okay. So again, you can explain the things. But in a way that makes sense, like why would you do this? No, I haven't seen that yet. Oh, be meant. We can, we can know that. We can know that right now because... Oh, we are receiving Natal, everybody. Check this out. That's our destination right there. We're 31 minutes out, B-Mint. 31 minutes out. 124 miles. And it's on the nose. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Guys, we crossed the ocean. And granted, we got lost. I'm not going to lie. We definitely were not where we thought we were. But... We did find the destination, didn't we? Only minor injuries were found. There was nothing to indicate a fall from a plane or any evidence. Okay, so there were minor injuries. Okay, Flux, that's different than I heard. I heard no scratches. You're saying minor injuries. Any evidence that he died in another place and... <sighs> was left under the tree. Okay. We went the scenic route. That's right. Two other people see him getting in the plane and decide to hijack the plane. One stays behind to dispose of the body. The other person flies the plane and crashes it. The guy that stayed on the ground hides the body until four months later. What about the person that crashed the plane? Did they survive? And why? But why, bunnies? Why would you hide the body until four months later? Just hide the body forever. I just think it's so weird. Mr. Pilot, I'm looking. Is it in stream links? No, it's not. Which channel, uh, Mr. Pilot? But no parachute? Okay, I see what you mean, DNH. I see what you mean. Do they know when the tree collapsed? No, I don't think so. Well, I, I don't know. I haven't heard. Maybe he was lying up in the tree for months, safe from wildlife, then the tree collapsed. Espen, could happen. But again, hard, right, for a body to be propped up on a tree and not fall, and then the tree fall and the body stays on the tree. Can it happen? Sure, but again, hard. And if he jumped from the plane without a parachute, I'm sorry. You would be able to tell that in the autopsy. You would not have minor injuries. You know? Yeah, exactly, okay. Yay, yeah, bunnies. No, I know, I know, I know. No, keep him coming. Keep the theories coming, guys. Because this sounds crazy, doesn't it? Sorry, b -Mint. Is, uh Is it too much? I'm sorry. Oh, pics and videos. Okay, in real life, pics and vids? Is that what it is? Maybe not. Are you flying Clasher? 
So, Black Bear or Black Beard, if she did, if she did, why would she put the body up on a tree four months later? Ooh, Howie, that's unlikely. One mile to go from the hotel. That's unlikely, right? Could be, could be. Because she's old fashioned, yeah. Flank clasher, okay. And what is that? Wait, is that your video, Flank Clasher? Is that you, buddy? Oh, sorry, guys. Was that loud? I'm sorry. I didn't know that was going to be that loud. Sorry. Two days in a row, says the boss. Oh, my God. Uh, hey. Pro stream. You know, you know it. My theory is that he launched the plane on its own and was not in the plane. Above details are for his crime partners. Hmm. A few years back, descending into uh, Midland, Texas, watching the sunrise. Are you flying the plane, Mr. Pilot? Because, man, this is beautiful. Look at this, guys. Why? What? Really? No. What? Okay, fine. Fane. Fane. I'll do it. That's fine. There we go. All right. Look at this. Hmm. Interesting. There's another theory here, guys, and it's an interesting one. Hi, kitty. And by the way, guys, when do we start descending? Well, we're at 14. We're going to like 2,000, 12,000 feet, 12 minutes out. Five miles times that, right? 50 miles, 60 miles, so 60 miles out. This looks amazing, man. Those clouds. Wah. Wah. A woman dying in a hotel in Oslo. Johnny, you got uh, you got a link for us, buddy. I love... Hey, who... Come on. Who doesn't like crime mysteries? Who doesn't like them? We are human beings, man. We're, we're weird. We're very weird. Look how many people slow down to look at a, a crash on the road when you're driving by. And it's like, dude, there could be awful things in there. And most people slow down to look, right? We're weird, man. We're very weird. 37, the Eiffel planes. Thanks, Johnny. Appreciate that. Jump. Landed in snow drift unconscious. Died of exposure in drift. Four months later, snow melts. Snow hid the body while search was on. Okay. I, I'm ready to discuss that possibility, Bear. For sure. For sure. The other, uh, the other theory up here was friend to all. Medical examiners are not required to be doctors in all jurisdictions. He attempted to appear to be killed to escape his crime partners, right? They caught him a short time later. So he took off, a, a, you know, pretended to die. He didn't. They caught him. They killed him. Placed his body after four months. How can they assess the injuries, right? There would be nothing left except bones. I don't know about four months. I don't know. Body was placed as mystery and to warn others, like person hung outside of town. Okay, could be. Send a message, right? I had a case where a guy burglarized a TV repair shop by breaking in through the roof. He got electrocuted and died in the ceiling. Fast forward a few weeks and the owner smells something. Oh my god, he was dead for a few weeks up there? Find the, finds the guy and calls us. We refer to those kinds of bodies as puffers. Oh. Wait, Dalmatian calls us. What kind of job do you do, dude, that... Somebody finds a dead body and they call you. Hey, Balmer. Take care, buddy. Take care. Ah, thanks, V2. Appreciate that. Stug, are you serious? Are you serious? 
Flock says in February 2004, mine sweepers of HMS Pen broke, HMS Penzance, and HMS Inverness were undertaking a coastal mapping operation in waters off Oban and found a plane 30, me 30 meters below the surface, or beneath the surface. Pen broke used a remote underwater camera to take pictures of the wreckage, which appeared to be of a small plane with one wing still attached, possibly Gibbs' a Cessna. But they haven't confirmed, huh? Wow. Can you see land, Maddie? I can't see it yet, buddy. I'm on my way, but I can't see it yet. 43 knots? Are you kidding me? No, you're you're not serious. Is it really? No, it's not. Come on. I have 140 at 18 right now. But that's from a few minutes back. That's from 37 minutes ago. They did describe nothing holding him together but his clothes. Makes me think four months in snow of snow in Mo unlikely. Hmm. Is 18, says B Mint, okay. Oh, 23 type, okay. B Mint. How's it going over there? Are you ready for this? Because I know you've been here most of the stream, right? And I'm like, man, she's gonna be tired. She's watched this super boring stream of this idiot flying a plane. And now she's gonna have to fly another, whatever, two and a half hours, right? B Mint, you're amazing. We love you. We really love you. And by the way, guys, if you don't know who B Mint is, I mean, seriously, first of all, what are you doing with your life? Second, go follow her. Go check her out. She has an amazing, amazing Twitch channel. And uh, she does a lot of cool flying there. Today, two hours. Tomorrow, two and a half. Are you doing tomorrow also? What? Nice. That's awesome. Ashley, are you talking about B-Mint? Right? We're talking about B-Mint. That's what you agree with. She's like, I disagree with every single thing that Fabio has said until now, but the B-Man thing? Yeah, he's right. She's great. <laughs> yeah, Ashley, I know. I know. What do I have to do to see all of you? Ah, Harry, you have to be... So you have to do two things. When you load up the flight, top right of your screen, you know when you're looking at the map? Top right of your screen is the little button or area, I guess you click to go check the weather or change the weather. In that weather page, you have to be, there's a multiplayer setting and you have to be in all players. Okay, that's number one. Number two, there's like five different servers you can be connected to. You have to be in the same server as us. And that server is North Europe. Oh my god, I fly planes. Are you serious? <laughs> oh! Okay, so less than minus 50. Less than minus 50, he's donating 20 bucks. Got it. Okay. <laughs> Both done, but nothing. Now, Harry, how do you know you're close to us? I know, Ashley. That's like, I know, right? Oh, Johnny, thanks, man. Sorry, I missed that. Oh, thanks, thanks, thanks for the mystery. Yeah, 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 yeah. Link up. Jesus, you said like three times. Link above, link above, link above. I'm sorry, dude. I'm sorry. Um, I'm not going to show that now because we're getting too close to the destination. But I, I'm definitely going to watch this because I, I love, uh, I love murder mysteries. It's a horrible thing to say, but I do. I love murder mysteries. Yes, Branding. See up ahead. Oh, okay, Harry. Um, Harry, do you know how far out you are from Natal? Cold climate also slowed down biological condition. Sure. So after four months, you should have been in relatively good condition for the coroner. That's true, V2. That's true. And again, I think the experts, like the, the people looking at this case, they know that, right? Land Ahoy? No. No. Uh, not for me. Oh! <laughs> it's the coast of South America. Oh my god, guys. I'm sorry. I just I get ah. Uh, I'm floored. I'm floored. I'm floored. 
that we flew over from Africa and we're now arriving in South America. Like, that to me is just insane. <laughs> Skip, that's, that's Argentina, all right. And look at that. Natal, right on the nose. We're gonna we're gonna switch things up. We're gonna go to gyro. Um, we're gonna put one fourteen three on nav one. There it is. We're now gonna find the radio to it, and we're gonna fly that. So localizer. There we go. Oh my god! Here we go. Destination. In oh my god, seventeen minutes. Okay, so I gotta start descending, right? Because I'm gonna do twelve minutes of descending so I'm gonna wait until about 15 minutes maybe 14 minutes and I'll start descending then thanks Martel thanks Dika Boss thanks b -Mint. thanks b -Bow. <laughs> vinyl nice nice Oh, Dalmatian says, the first time I went to... Okay, so Dalmatian, I never even saw what your job was. But the first time I went to an autopsy, that sounds to me like you work in the medical or law enforcement field? They said to put some Vicks vapor rub under your nose, yep, to mess the smell. It barely works, and I can't smell Vicks without smell... Ah, oh. 30 years in law enforcement. God. What are you doing, plane? That was a little odd. 30 years in law enforcement. Dalmatian, can I ask where? Like what country and maybe even, depending on the country, what state? Ben. Ben, we're 15 minutes out, buddy. Look, we can see the coast. Oh my god, we can see the coast of Brazil. Be mint. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm almost there. I'm almost there. I'm almost there. Oh. Oh. What an amazing flight. All the way from Africa, all the way from Africa to Brazil. I mean, seriously. All right, B Mint, let's go. She's firing up the sim, guys. Yeah, B Mint, be connected to North Europe on the ground because it would be awesome when I land. It would be awesome to see you sitting on the ground. You know what I mean? Like, do the handoff, right? Hey, there's some Sim Caesar uh, emotes there. Love those. Thanks, Thurpex. Oh my god. Gut broad. You with the German, man. Uh, meine Lieblingsberlinerin. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for butchering your language. I really am. Southern California Municipal Police Department. Whoa. Dalmatian. My impression, I could be totally off and it's just like... It's not based on any data. It's just based on my life. Is that Southern California law enforcement? You guys tend to see a lot more action than the regular law enforcement. No? Yes, Philly, wouldn't it? Seven hours in, and my MSFS crashed because I plugged my mouse into charge. <gasps> You're joking, Maddie. You are joking. Are you kidding me? Oh my god, Medi, were you flying with us and you seriously plugged in your mouse and the sim crashed? That is so frustrating, dude. That was totally okay, Fabissimo. <laughs> this is a good observation, says Dalmatian. Buddy, 30 years. That's impressive. That's impressive. Dalmatian, I have a very left field question for you. Very left field. I've been asking my law enforcement friends this question. And by the way, any other law enforcement people in chat, I'm really curious about this. Right? So Dalmatian, I don't even know what the laws are in California, but what do you think about decriminalizing marijuana? What do you think about legalizing marijuana? Um... Because I want sort of a law enforcement perspective on it. <laughs> Nasty newbies like, whoa, I'm going to chat now because we're talking about weed. Okay, so it is legal in California. Okay. Okay. 
worked out great in Canada. Legalizing is not the same as decriminalizing. Agreed, old grumpy. Agreed. I, I did confuse things. I did confuse things. Should be legalized. Working very well in Canada. A firm. Okay. Legal in Michigan, right? I think alcohol gives law enforcement bigger issues than weed. Johnny, that's what my law enforcement buddies tell me. Right? I had a friend. I had a friend. <laughs> I had a friend tell me. He's like, he's like, dude, I don't. I much rather people smoke weed. And I'm like, you know, I okay, but why? And he goes, well, because, you know. Oh, no, 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 no. That's what he said. He said I, I, okay, this is what I said. I said, how do you know when somebody's high? Because I said, you know, when somebody's drinking, you know, you have your, your, your breath analyzer, right? You have people breathe in your machine and the machine measures the alcohol and it tells you. That's easy. How do you know when somebody's high? And he goes, dude, it's easy. I'm like, how? And he goes, <laughs> he goes, there's usually like chips all over the bottom of their car. <laughs> he goes, yeah, you find potato chips everywhere. <laughs> I'm like, okay, all right. Yeah, touche. I get it. You're right. You're right. But he did say, back to, back, back to the conversation, right? He did say, he goes, I'd much rather... You know, people smoke weed than, than drink booze. Okay, so let's see what Dalmatian says. Uh, it's kind of funny for me because I was a D.A.R.E. officer for a couple of years, right? So D.A.R.E. is the U.S. program against drugs for uh, schools, for young young people, right? It's, a, it's sort of a marketing program to tell young people, hey, don't use drugs. Drugs are bad, you know. My personal thoughts are that it has actual potential... Uh, medically right for personal use it's like alcohol in that i don't care as long as you keep it uh and it affects yourself exactly dalmatian exactly right butter's not hey butter's not how are you buddy do you know when someone is drunk that's when they pass out and t-bone and isn't oh. i walked right into that one butter's not i didn't even know you're gonna do that sorry buddy Sorry, guys, Buttersnot, poor guy, Buttersnot, great viewer of the channel, got T-boned by a drunk driver, and it was a serious accident, so he's had several surgeries. He's okay, he's okay, but he's had several surgeries, and he's not going to be the same person after the surgeries that he was before. And it was all because of a drunk driver that actually fell asleep and was asleep when he hit Buttersnot. And yet, and yet... Buttersnot has the good humor. And by the way, that's how you get over these things, right? Has the good humor of say, that's when they pass out in T-Bone and Issa. <laughs> Buttersnot, we love you, buddy. We really do. I hope you're doing okay. All right. Should we start descending? Whoops. Yes. A little too late for the descent. Should have been 12 minutes. But we're going to start it now. So off with that. And down we go. And we're going to do about 1,000 feet per minute. That's what we'd like to do. Let's go a little more here. Hey, Jefferson. It's going awesome. As a matter of fact, Jefferson, are you ready for this? Hold on one second. And land, buddy, land. We have found Brazil. We have found our destination. And we're now descending for it. How about that? Hey, B-Mint, I'm sorry. You're actually going to have to fly your flight because guess what? Even though you said... I was never going to find it. I found their destination. <laughs> My biggest challenge so far is walking to the coffee machine and back without spilling. You're going to get used to that, but it's not. Right? And I'm lucky uh, enough that I don't have rudder paddles, so I can still fly. <laughs> do you do rudder paddles on the, on the stick? Do you twist for rudder paddles? Is that what you do? So yeah, sorry, we kind of got off the uh, the whole weed and, and booze conversation. Um, yeah, I twist. Nice, nice. But uh, yeah, uh, you know, at the end of the day, guys, I just don't like to be a hypocrite. I don't like to tell people like, you know, you can't do these things, but all these things, they're totally fine. I think that's a little screwed up, right? So I like to kind of make, you know, sense of it all. And so that's why I ask is because... I think it's kind of silly that some drugs like alcohol are allowed, not only allowed, they're legal, right? And the government makes money on it. 
and other drugs are like, whoa, you, you can't touch those drugs. And it's like, wait, what? You know, it's either like you can do some drugs or you can't, but don't allow some and not other. Okay, it's a tougher conversation than that. It's a more complicated conversation than that. But I think you guys understand what I'm trying to say. Couple more clicks here to get exactly a thousand. There we go. Let's see, Flux. Come on, baby. Na na, do the twist. Come on, baby. Let's do the twist. We don't want to dead and there. I want to watch it. I don't know what the lyrics are, but Espen, that's my best, or Flux Trot, that's my best go at it, man. <laughs> my best go. Even my son is looking at me like going, dude, what are you doing? And Johnny is like, hey, we need to shut up for at least a minute. All right, Johnny. <laughs> All right, Johnny. You got it. Weird. Oh, here we go. Okay. And here we go. See you in a minute. Yes! Okay, we can talk again. That's awesome. That is awesome. <laughs> Rock frog. <laughs> That's funny, dude. That is funny. All right, guys, we are approaching Natal. Look, so there's a big river. Big, 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 big river there. Big city there. And I think that's the airport right there. Let's see. Yep. Looks like we're straight ahead. About 16 miles out, still descending, right? Let's have a look at the area. Outcast survival just resubscribed for three months. Okay. So here we go. Oh, no, that's Jesus. That's Fortaleza. That's not where I'm going. <laughs> All right, there's the big river. So we're way south of the river, right? And there we go. Running is going to be 1 4 for sure. Well, I mean, if it's not 1 4, it's close. Let's see what we got here. SBNT. Ah, it's 1 6. All right. So, uh, we're going to stop on the main apron here, right? So, we're going to land on 1 6 left, okay? And we're going to try and clear by Kilo over here. If that's too, uh, too soon, then we'll clear by Echo. Okay? Trying to find the airport. Looks like it's there somewhere. Whoa, Dalmatian. Holy crap, dude. I thought he stubbed his toe. <laughs> Thanks, sorry.
One of the biggest problems with any drug, fill in your choice, is that people don't just use drugs and sit in the corner and get high. They drive, they will steal and rob to support a bad habit, and it affects all of us. Yeah, Dalmatian. I don't disagree. I don't disagree. I don't disagree. That being said, right, you've had a horrendous experience with alcohol, I can tell that. Um... I'm going to be the guy that says I don't think it should be banned, right? I think it's more about education and support systems than anything else. Okay, there's the airport. There's the airport. We're going to go past the airport. I'm going to go to the right and then turn right up here somewhere and then back over for one six left. Yeah. Yeah, 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 Dalmatian. Uh, no, I, uh, I'm sorry. I didn't I didn't think you were advocating for that. That's not what I was saying. I was just making sure that people understood how I feel. Right? Decriminalized drugs decades ago and drug usage, overdoses, age of infections, etc. All improved. Yeah, I, I don't doubt it. I don't doubt it. You know why? Because I am one of those people. No, I'm not talking about drugs. I'm talking about being human. By the way, look. There's the airport. There's one six left there. We're going to come back and turn around and land there. Right? And be meant is somewhere down there. That's awesome. Right? No. What I mean... Yeah, so I don't doubt it. You know, and I say, because I, I, you know, I experience it. Here's what I'm saying. Here's what I experience. When I go to a park and there's a sign that says, don't step on the grass. I don't know about you guys. I feel more likely to step on the grass because that sign is taunting me to not step on the grass. Than if the sign wasn't there. If the sign wasn't there, I probably would never step on the grass. But with the sign there telling me not to step on the grass, I'm like, well, what if I want to step on the grass? And that's what it is, right? All these rules against drugs are challenges towards a human being's understanding of what they are able to decide for themselves or not, right? Because at the end of the day, that's what it is. It's like, hey, I'm deciding what I'm going to put into my body. Why does the government have anything to do with this? You know, think about it, right? That's the point. But why does the government have to do with it? Because we live in a society, man. That's why. Because what you do affects other people. That's why. And so that's my whole thing. My whole thing with the drug discussion is, listen, I don't really care what you do. Do you. Do you, boo. Right? Whatever that is. But make sure that that's not affecting the person next to you. And if it is affecting the person next to you, you've gone too far right that's just how i look at this whole thing <laughs> howie oh my god i just read that message that's amazing buddy that is amazing <laughs> in my opinion i think it's important to make sure that we don't put everybody in the same basket exactly whether it is alcohol or weed in the light of the latest events i should uh i should be 100 opposed to alcohol but i am not right he just got rammed over by a drunk driver. But he's saying, listen, I'm not going to be the guy that says we can't drink alcohol, right? One moron doesn't mean everybody that consumes is a moron. Exactly, Butters. Man, I am so proud of you. So proud of you right now for having that view. Because it's so hard for somebody in your situation to have that view. I'm impressed. I am highly impressed. All right, let's start turning. We're going to go back to Gyro. And I'm going to turn now back to the airport. We're at 4,000 feet, still descending, right? That ontology is similar to Poto 7 of the American people. His patience is running out regarding vaccinations. People with resist what it will, I guess, resist whatever he proposes just on the principle of his making demands. So I'm not 100% sure I know what you mean. 340 is going to be the opposite of the runway. I'm going to actually keep on turning. And I'm going to level off at 2000. 
Yeah, what the hell? Here's the weird part. Here's the weird part. Look at the temperature outside. It's almost 20 degrees. It's 15 degrees. One thing I forgot to do was turn on pedo heat. But let me turn it on. Right? And let's see if it fixes this. Let's see if the pedo is frozen. And if it is... I don't understand that because the temperature is not enough to freeze the pedo. Right? The issue in this situation isn't the drinking, it's them drinking and driving. If you take away the drinking part, they're just gonna drive more in order to go somewhere they can. Yes, I know, Bear. I know, Bear. But I'm gonna level off first. I'm gonna level off first. I really don't know what's happening here. Is the other one off? Yeah, the other one is off too. That's pretty odd, isn't it? Pretty odd. All right, let's uh, let's fly straight for now, and see where we are in relation to that airport. I think the airport is ahead of us. Yes. No, Mephiston, I did not. I had a lot of power actually, still, right? Because I totally forgot that I was coming down and needed less power. So I'm gonna go to 26 now. Ah, so that's what it was. It wasn't stuck. It was actually, it looked like it was zero. But it was, <laughs> it was actually showing 265, guys. <laughs> Harry, exactly. Exactly. I was going a little too fast. A little too fast. Sorry, guys. It's, it's been a day where I don't just focus on the flight. The POTUS says something similar to our patient has run out. I Meaning the government is tired of waiting for people to get vaccinated. Sort of threatening to force vaccinations. Whether you agree... Hold on. I'm going to stop the... Uh, I'm going to keep the altitude for now. Whether you agree with vaccinations or not, people will fight the mandate because the government can't tell me what to do. Yeah, I know what you're talking about, Dalmatian. I know what you're talking about. And, and honestly... I have mixed feelings about that, you know? I think everybody should get the vaccine. I mean, to me, it makes, like, perfect sense, right? By the way, Outcast Survival, thank you very much for the sub, dude. I didn't even see that. Oh, my God. But at the same time, I don't think the government should be able to tell you what to do. So I'm like... For everyone's health, we should do the vaccine. But I'm not 100% sure, you know? Okay, we're turning. 1-6 here is the runway. Well, Joe, pretty much. Pretty much. So yeah, you know, the typical, the typical Fabio flight with the DC-6. Wait a second. Oh no, okay, that's the other runway. That's the other runway. I was like, wait a second. No, but we're going to go on 160. Hey, Miriam Peters is here. What's going on, Miriam? How are you? So, gut broad. I tend to agree, right? I take my kids to a, um, uh, you know, doctor. It's a um, pediatrician. And their office won't accept kids that haven't had vaccinations. Which I like. I like that very much. I like that very much. Ah, Miriam is from Belgium. I was flying in Belgium. Well, I tried to fly in Belgium last night. My sim wasn't cooperating. Miriam. But that's awesome. That's awesome. All right, guys. There it is. It's almost, almost 160 to the airport. So we're going to turn... Boa tarde, Brasil, says V2. That's awesome, V2. All right, B-Mint, I'm coming. Aha. Uh -huh. Oh, my God. Wait, isn't that the runway? How do we pass it? Okay, we did. Well, all right. We're going to go autopilot off, and hopefully, we're going to be able to land this baby, right? 
So, let's go off. Oh, no. Off and off. All right. And we're going to go flaps 20. With that speed, we're going to go gear down. Hey! Only, what's going on, Only? Good to see you. All right, hold on. Let me get my... Uh, there we go. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I see what's happening. Okay. Okay. Yeah, let's go more flaps. We're going to go flaps 50 to begin with. Oh, V2. It's one of the best. It's one of the best. Is that music too loud, guys? You guys let me know if it's too loud. Dalmatian. We'll see. 120 on the speed. There's the runway. Hey, Santiago. It is the perfect time, buddy. I'm landing. Dobson. That's awesome. That's awesome. Oh, only use. Okay, you're new here. Okay, buddy. Hold on a second, man. I gotta get this plane on the ground. Then I can say hi to you, okay? Okay, too much flaps. Let's go to flaps 30. Speed's getting too low. I just have to get this plane on the ground safely, guys. Then I can do... Then I can talk to you. Then I can do all kinds of different things. I'm definitely gonna need more power. Okay, let's go. Oh my god, 100 knots? Really? How am I getting so slow? I shouldn't need this much power for landing. 105, okay. One ten, one ten. I'm going back now. Little bit of wind from the right, it looks like. 110, perfect speed. Oh, here we go, guys. And I don't have sim sounds. I, I'm sorry, I don't have sim sounds. Up. Oh my god, the runway is ending. Okay. We're down. Nose down. There's the other runway. We're going to have to turn around on the runway here. Or... Ah, here we go. Here we go. Off on this runway. There we go. There's the sound. And we can open this guy too. Flaps all the way up. Let's see. Let's see what kind of uh, what kind of uh, I, I'm gonna look in Volanta to see what kind of uh, landing rate I got. What do you guys think? I think it was decent, but I don't think it was under 20. Was it under 20 that I needed to get? Was that the challenge? Wow! On the ground, on the ground. All right, hold on, guys. One second. Hey, baby. Hey, I just landed. Can I call you in five minutes? Okay. All right. Love you. Bye. All right. You know what? That looks like a good spot to park. Can I make it through this building and that? Yeah. Yeah, I can. 10 bucks if it's minus 50. Okay, Joe, I don't think it was, dude. I don't think it was. I'm gonna try, but I don't think it was. Oh, man, there's a road here. I shouldn't park there, but too late. I'm definitely going there. Eat, eat a bean if it's over 100. 
<laughs> Watch that antenna there. Watch that wing there. I think we got this. I'm gonna be right on the road though. Oh my god. Right on the road. Oh, Nika Boss, let's go, buddy. Thank you very much, man. All right, parking brake is on. Okay, parking brake is on, and you can just literally kill the engines after because you don't have a lot of electrical stuff, right? So, oh man, I never went auto rich. Oh, I can't believe those engines stayed on. Whoo! Okay, wait for those RPMs to drop. They're all stopped. Nika Boss with five tier one subscriptions. Thank you very much, Nika. That's awesome, dude. That is awesome. We're in Brazil, B Mint. The aircraft is yours. I cannot believe it. We made it. Look, I didn't even hit the wingtip. That was pretty close, but I didn't even hit it. <laughs> Let's go, Zude. Thank you very much for the subscription, buddy. Appreciate that. I know, right, Jack? Dude, Africa to Brazil. And we did it. We're starting to learn that, like, these flights were no problem. Right? Where's B-Mint? B-Mint, where are you? I'm looking for you. Maybe she's that way? Hmm. Man, look at all you guys! Oh my god, I can't believe you guys flew with me. Thank you so, so much. Ah, yeah, b -Mint, I'm not seeing you. It's North Europe for the server, guys. North Europe. Hey, hold on. Before, before we go over to b -Mint, I have to give away a scenery. That's right. The scenery for Monrovia that we took off from today. I'm giving one of those out today right now. That's right. I'm doing a giveaway right now. All right, guys. All you're going to need, you're going to need to enter something in chat, right? As always, as always. So stand by. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Users. Keyword. Okay. This was pretty amazing. Ah, thanks, Bates. I appreciate that. I appreciate that, man. All right, guys. Hey, in the spirit, in the spirit of spreading, spreading joy, this one, listen, you're going to have to pay attention to lowercase, uppercase, lowercase, uppercase, okay? I want you to pay attention. I want you to pay attention because the keyword for today, and you can use it starting right now, is exclamation mark B mint. But if you know how to spell B mint, it's B E in lowercase, M in uppercase, I N T in lowercase. Like that, like that, knights. Yes. Yes. B mint. Let's do this, right? There you go, guys. Yes, 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 yes. Hold on, let me make sure that the bot is capturing all this. Is it capturing all this? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Good do good going, good going. Oh my god, exponent! Exponent! With 20 tier 1 subscriptions! Holy moly, exponent! Oh my god! Thank you, buddy. Thank you, guys. Oh my god. What an am- <laughs> That's amazing. Thank you, Exponent. Come on, guys. Exclamation mark, be meant. We have 400 people here. We definitely have people that get... Okay. Come on. Come on. Come on. Exclamation mark, be meant with the M being the only uppercase letter in that word. Only uppercase letter in that word. Oh my god, Nika Boss, Nika Boss with a thousand bits, blowing, blowing, 323% of the level 5 hype train, holy moly. 
Okay. I think it's time to roll it, guys. I think it's time to roll it. Here we go. Hey, by the way, when you win, I need you to get in touch with me on our Discord. So, chat, please hit up Discord. Give out the invitation. Because I'm going to need your contact to be able to gift you this airport. Thank you very much, Dalmatian. Appreciate that. Okay, here we go, guys. Here we go. We're going to stop this music. Just resubscribed for three months. Exponent Mage 40 gifted a tier one sub to chill 4054. Oh my god. Fluxtrot. Thank you very much, sir. Nikabos with a thousand bits, of course. And then Fluxtrot giving out a tier one sub. Thank you very much. Okay, guys. Here we go. I hope you win. Drum roll, please. Uh oh, where's my nightbot? Respawn Sark has won the giveaway! Respawn Sark, let's go, buddy, let's go! Oh, congratulations, sir. Congratulations, Respawn Sark has won a copy of uh, Monrovia, Liberia. Respawn Sark, are you here, buddy? I need to make sure you're here so I can give you that. Let's make sure, let's make sure. I haven't seen Response Arc reply just yet. Hold on, hold on. Response Arc, let me know you're here, buddy. Let me know you're here. Lassen, just resubscribed for two months. Exponent Mage mm, 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 mm. No Response Arc. No Response Arc. I think... I think we're gonna have to roll this one again. Oh, he's here! Hey! Whoop! That was close, Response Arc. That was close, buddy. <laughs> there he is. Response Arc, you just want a scenery, buddy. You want a scenery for, Li uh, for Monrovia, Liberia. So, please get in touch with me via Discord or Twitch. Uh, and I am here. Okay, perfect. And I will gift you from there. Okay? He was excited that he won, yes, exactly. Exactly, Ares. Alright, guys, well, I'm gonna allow this uh, relay to continue to go on. You guys are freaking legends, man. I can't believe... Hold on a second, guys. My son is my hero. Because he said, hey, people promised you some money for landing rates. You should probably look at that. So, yes, I should look at that. Oh, my God, Nika Boss. Oh, that's a thousand bits. That's the one you did. Let's go. Okay, so, so. Come on, in chat. Let's see. Let's see what you guys think my landing rate was. Landing rate in chat, minus 65. Okay, let's see. I prefer minus 91. All right. And by the way, I haven't seen it yet. Minus 67, minus 70, minus 75. Some of you guys offered some money. I'm going to ask again, what are those challenges? <laughs> minus 80, minus 115. Okay, okay. All right. Nico is the accountant. Yes, Auntie. Exactly. He's awesome. Oh, minus 50 and it's 10 bucks. Okay. Ooh, Joe, minus 50. That's very little. <laughs> oh, my God. Exponent. Thank you, buddy. Thank you. Okay, here we go. Volanta is not going to lie. Is not going to lie. Look at our flight, by the way. By the way, look at this small correction that we were off here by a little bit. We are going to look at Little Nav Map. But... Get ready. Here we go. Landing rate in three, two, one, and oh, oh minus ninety-two. That's not too bad. You said minus ninety-one. Someone. Someone did. Someone said minus ninety-one. Who said minus ninety-one? Someone did. Pretty impressive, says Paid. Thanks, Paid. J Knights, no way. Did you say? Oh my God, Knights. You're on it, buddy. 
you are on it look at that minus 92 feet per minute let's go let's go that's awesome all right and and remember i want to look at this and let's turn on wait what why oh no sorry it's over here <gasps> it's not showing the trail what did i do <gasps> i deleted the trail on uh, by mistake i deleted the trail by mistake oh my god oh my god i pressed the wrong button i pressed the wrong button ah God, I deleted the little nef map trail. Sorry. Sorry. Can you undo? Can you undo? No undo? I don't know. There's no added menu. Undo. Undo. No, it's like undoing waypoints in the flight plan. Cap! Ah. Oh. I know, b man I know! How did I delete the trail? That's what I wanted to look. Wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. Orange arrow, top left. Right, no, I've been doing that. It's just deleting. It's going back on these guys. Look, it's going back on my... It's not showing at all the track. Hold on. Celestial Navigator, are you here? Because I think the app also logs in a csv that shows you positions every hour or so right okay redo yeah i'm here okay celestial navigator how do i open up a c does the app record my waypoints and can i open it up in little nav map that's my question okay in the install folder yeah yeah Actual route, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Now, how do I open that in little nav map? Can I just go file, open, fly plan, and... Joe Wurtz tipped $10. Like, how do I do that? A great stream, even though landing was over 50. Joe Wurtz, he still tipped $10, even though the landing was over 50. Joe Wurtz, thank you very much, sir. I much appreciate it. Okay, menu, and then user waypoint. Where's the menu? User points, okay. Ah, import CSV. Got it, got it. All right, hang on. Hang on. Local disk utils, okay. I see where it is. Got it. Um, there's only four locations. Yeah, look at this. So, okay. Yes. Yes. This is so right. So look, the white, or sorry, the yellow dots are our positions, right? So look, we were always, always to the north of the route. Here, here, not there, or sorry, not there. Here, not there, but we're getting closer to the position, right? We're getting closer to the position. Here, still the same distance. Here, pretty far, actually. But then we picked up... Look, we picked up the VOR. And then we flew it in. Wow! Wow! Okay, it, it sounds like B-Mint really wants me to stop my stream and she can get going. Jesus, B-Mint, okay! Go! <laughs> All right, guys, this was very long stream, very long stream, very long flights, and B Mint needs to get going. So, thank you all. I really do appreciate you guys being here. This is uh, incredible, incredible flight. Thank you very much for allowing me to participate on this. And B Mint, good luck with your flight. I think you're gonna do amazing, right? Yes, thank you all. And guys, thanks for being here. That was really remarkable. I can't believe that you guys were here like the whole time that was incredible incredible yes 
Yes, Martel. Thank you, buddy. So now, what am I gonna do? Well, I'm gonna go raid B-Mint. That's how this works, guys. That's how this works. Alright. Let's raid B-Mint. There we go. Okay. Hey, B-Mint. I love you. I hope you have a great flight. Uh, and thank you very much for taking the aircraft from here on out. Guys, viewers, I love you guys. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for your generosity. It's been amazing. It's been amazing. And I learned a bunch about Celestial Navigation today that I didn't know, that I thought I knew, and I didn't know. So I'm pretty happy about that. Pretty happy about that. All right, guys. Hold on a second. Before we do this, before we do this, I want to go to B Mint's channel so I can see the transition. Right? Let's see. Oh, yeah. She's live. Perfect. All right. Wait, did the raid go away? No, the raid didn't go away. What? Hold on a second. Hold on a second. You canceled it. Okay, sorry. Let's do the raid again. Love you guys. I'll see you Monday. Take care. <laughs> Alright, let's go. Love you guys. Take care.